I thought you had it already. All right, we can record. But yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah, can talk yeah, about the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that 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 was one of the. That was the reason I like working with you was that show. Oh, thanks. dude, I there's I could sit here and compliment you forever. I've done it to so many people, and you know, you know, yeah. Well, you're, 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 you always tell me you like my stuff, yeah. Dude, yeah. And everyone at that show, guys. So if you don't know, let me real quick tell you who we're sitting with. Shane Torres, I met on the Doug Loves Movies debacle. No, no, we had we met, met way once, before but that. once before, before that. we were at a, a Parlor Live. In, in Bellevue, yeah, but it was like one of those weird weekends where you like, I think you didn't do a Thursday, so it was like two Friday, two Saturday, and out. So like, w- there was no like preliminary hang night or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then like, I-, I was like staying way out of town, so I couldn't drink. So there was like, oh. so w- like, and then the next night, uh, the next time I saw you was uh, in St. Louis at the. Yeah, yeah, and then we worked together for my special, and uh, I've talked about this special probably ad nauseum, but. The first show was if we're gonna say I, I, if we're gonna I, if we're gonna say on a scale of one to ten I would say a five my first show but we had we had technical are you talking, you're not ta- you're not including Thursday like you're just are you just oh, no, 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 I'm just talking about the two, two tapings yeah five seven it was it was fine but it was there was a lot of like but well, there was like those like that tune up thing you need yeah. like you know, like you you really like like Thursday is like your like warm up technically I guess yeah but like. Then, 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 like cameras are on. It's always a little different because the room is different, and there was, there's less there was, seats, and there's more people. Yeah. There was, and there was like I had a heckler. Like it was a weird first show for a taping. Yeah. So I get off. I see Shane. Shane's like, "It was good, buddy." Like, yeah. And you're like, uh, "It was good." You, you know, you could pick up some stuff in the next show. And I was like, "Yeah." Everyone was like that, but that's fine. The getting off on the next show. After I had that second show, and it was one of the best shows I've ever had in my life, and I saw you, you're like, that was fucking it. Yeah. And the thing I love about you is you don't lie. I try not to. But, but no, but like, like so many people lie in our business yeah. that when well, you said it was good, I knew it was good. Yeah, but like it's, and I mean this in a, in a like a, you, you, you try to very hard to be inclusive with people. Like, like even when like we just had that short weekend in Bellevue at Parlor Live or whatever it was, you try hard to like feel welcome. Cause you know, like you've been, you know, when you work with a headliner who's kind of a, like they're not yeah. a dick, but they're yeah. like not warm, you know, like, yeah. So it's like easy. It's like, you know, like some people, I, I, I try to be honest, but some people you don't feel like you can say shit to without them. Like flying off the fucking hand. Like there's some, people- a guy, I worked with a guy six months ago. Uh, that's longer than that. That's probably like a year ago. And I was just like, this guy is nice, but he sucks. I'll tell you off mic who it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But I was like, he's just kind of like shitty. Like his ego was just like, and it's like, there weren't, they weren't sellouts. Yeah, like you, yeah. it wasn't like this. I was like, you need to you dial it back just a little bit. You could be a tad bit nicer. Yeah. And you, you could be a little bit more like, the the thing I th- I see with people is like they're not honest with where their material is. That's the fucking cra- that's like I think that's the thing that's happened a lot in the past three to five years. Like when Louis started putting up the w- one hour every year, you know, like and whatever about him, but like he is a wildly talented person, you know, like yeah. and not whatever that's fucked. Uh, uh, <laughs> but like, but every, you know, like I can't, you know, I got yeah, yeah, yeah. I end up on a blog. I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but people started holding themselves to that standard. It's fucking insane. You know, like so, some of us are not that good. You know, like most of us are not that some good. Some of us are just uh, trying so hard. <laughs> mediocre at best. Yeah, who don't quit. You know, like, who don't quit. That's yeah, it. Yeah. I remember when I started, I was working with Dimitri Martin, who I think we could all say is, is massively talented. He's insane. And he does his own thing, too. He does his own thing. And I remember... I was with him. I think we were at the cellar and we heard that Dave Attell was getting flown out. This is insane. Now that I look at money and I look at like the, the Dave Attell was getting flown out by Ray Rodriguez to Ray, not Ray Rodriguez, Ray Romano to punch up scripts for $25,000. We heard that. That and, to me is like, God, the guy who listens to your podcast and works in a warehouse. So like, like I was fucking think the most obscene things. About I was my, making about, no, I was yeah, making yeah. no money. And I remember Dimitri saying, "See, if you stay in this long enough, people around you get successful and they help you out. You, you that's suc- a true thing. You I think. succeed if you just stay in this." And yeah. I went, "Oh, I can just stay in this. <laughs> I can definitely just, just stay, stay in, in this." In this. 
<laughs> I heard Fitzsimmons say something like that on a podcast. He was just like, you know, if you work hard and you're kind yeah. and you're funny, things will happen. They just don't happen on your, your timeline. Dude, I think that's my career. I really think that's my career. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't... But you're in a real good pop right now. Do you yeah. feel... Yeah. Yeah, but but I think for the most part, I don't think I'm a guy that I, I don't get into a lot of beefs. I've had two, only two notable beefs in my life that anyone could acknowledge. And they were both with people that, well, I, with, I think, questionable beefs with other people. Like, people yeah. like, oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Is, the this guys. Like a public, is this a public thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. My only two beefs really were with... Uh, with Jay Moore, which I think I think is that pot's kind of simmered down. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. 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 I, I heard him talk about me on a radio show recently, and I have no bad blood with the guy. I have no, I I have no, I don't want anything bad for him. I, yeah. I hope him happiness. I, I'm actually really in a weird way. I I look at like I look at like his uh, Twitter or Twitter. I think so every now and then, and I get happy for him. He's out catching bass on a fucking paddleboard every morning in malibu like i think he's gone through some divorce and stuff like that yeah but i look at that and i go he's like finding kinda, himself in a healthy finding way himself, he's yeah. finding himself it looks like he is yeah. i mean you know we're very 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 different men now it'd be hard to be the way we were when we were younger but because it, were you guys like running buddies and shit oh dude we were like we were really fucking close yeah but then, yeah. then Paul F. Tompkins was the other one, and Paul F. Tompkins and I squashed it. So that's good. That speaks. That's good for everybody. Yeah, but yeah. I think, but I think that speaks to the reason I'm successful is that, I, or the reason I'm having success right now is I think a lot of people want me to. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, no, like yeah. I think more like people, people want who are. Me. <laughs> yeah, I think they want me to. They're like, oh, yeah, like. No, but you're also very funny. It's not just Amy's that. having success despite her detractors. Like people <laughs> want her to fail. You know that's fucking they, crazy. They want her to fail. Uh, yeah, I feel pretty. They want. They <laughs> want to hate it. I can't imagine having a career where people want to see you fall. That's what that. It's their fucking. First it's want. like, and there's people I know that like I'm friends with. I'm like, a lot of people do not fucking like you. Like, <laughs> it, and they're like, "What do you mean?" I'm like, "I heard you did this." They're like, "Yeah," and I'm like. Doesn't that seem kind of shitty that you did that? <laughs> yeah. Like, and they're like, I guess I never thought of it. Like they get, because sometimes people get that success so quickly, they shoot up, you yeah. know, and you're like, and then they kind of re like lose their like sense of like what makes them. Uh, they're doing construction on the roof of the man cave, by the way, if you heard that. so great. <laughs> <laughs> they um, do, they blow up and they forget you know, how to they, act a little I'll bit. I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you what it is. I, I, uh, I have seen this so much happen in this business. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, some people believe it is, um, manifest destiny. Some people, cause there's like, a, they won't be stopped. Just they, because go, they go, they go, this is how it was supposed to happen. I'm famous now. I'm successful. Yeah, I'm better than those losers. I separated from the pack because this is what was destined yeah, to happen. Yeah, I hit my stride. Me. My stride finally came and like yeah. I separated. Dude, I've seen people hit their stride, right? And for whatever reason, I I've, I've seen it most with like I've seen it most with like industry heat where you go like I, I was, That's the thing I don't like yeah, yeah. And you watch them at a, at like Montreal say fucked up shit and as a journeyman <laughs> comic someone who's been doing it my whole life my whole adult life yeah. and always made okay Wait, 25 money. years in 20 i'm 20 yeah. really i started 26 i was you know i spent seven years yeah. in college but uh but like <laughs> i spent five in high school so we're fun <laughs> i really did Are you <laughs> yeah yeah i never went and then they were like you can't leave <laughs> it was kind of how they told Are me they, they were like yeah they're, they're, they're like my my second senior year, I had like two classes a day, so I would like wake up at ten thirty, go to second period, and be done by one. I was like, "Come on!" I like, <laughs> you spent five years in high school. Yeah, yeah. yeah what yeah. were you planning on? Did you have like you clearly didn't have plans? After no, high school? no. I barely have one now. This is a big break for me, Bert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh. I didn't, but like. We were one of those families that was like, it was like school was important, but it was like up to us because my mom worked all the time. And, yeah. you know, I think like most kids, they don't like get like the whip crack to just be like, you're going to do all your fucking homework and then you can go out and do it. You know, like if you're yeah. left to your own time, it's very much idle hands, devil's playground thing. Wait, where, you grew up in Texas? Yeah. Fort Worth. So South side of Fort Worth. And mom and dad both Mexican? No. Uh, my mom was from Southern Ireland. 
and Southern Ireland. Yeah, that she's explains from your Cork eyes. Yeah, that explains your eyes. Yeah, and then my dad was uh, second generation Mexican American. What does that mean? So is that Chicano? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, we're, they're like. So my great grandparents came over uh, my, on the Mexican side. Okay. And they uh, very into the idea of maybe it was my grandparents, but very into the idea of assimilation. Like this, you were supposed to act at this time in like in the in the forties. You were supposed to act white, you, like meaning like yeah, yeah. you don't speak Spanish in public and you don't do these. So you know, like we grew up like pretty you know like proud that we were mexican but not like it was like i didn't grow up like let's go get menudo you know like it wasn't like i, I wasn't menudo i love fucking, menudo oh my there's this fucking breakfast place in you're going to san antonio this uh, yeah, weekend yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, this place is a barbacoa for and like eggs for breakfast. oh my god dude we for didn't real? Do, i didn't do shit the rest of the day it was great really yeah it put oh me you down. gotta tell me about it yeah, wait, it wait what's the name of, tell me now on the uh, I'll, I'll text the guy who told me about the guy who opened for him, okay. joey what, he's a great guy but uh remind me to mention the place in the beginning of the podcast yeah yeah it was it's fucking it was like it was insane me and my buddy sam evans went and we were just like and the beans and the it was fucking dope and it really? was filled with mexican people so that that's always like a really good <laughs> sign uh, uh, that's gonna drive me fucking nuts i wish i could tell the guy to stop but i want my internet back <laughs> yeah, blame me, dude. It's fine. a squirrel chewed through by this the way it's like more I, this, professional than just about any podcast just, i've ever done yeah. just so you guys listen just it stops real soon <laughs> so so your mom was irish irish yeah my mom like like she had a super thick accent very like yeah. Wow, where did all my mean? aunties are? Uh, so my dad was supposed to be a priest, uh, and he got kicked out uh, of the seminary, and then um, so so he couldn't. My great, it was like a big point of shame for my family, like because like I like in a Mexican family, you had like a priest. That's like a yeah, a prideful thing. Uh, Steve Bernazzi's brother's a priest. Really? Yeah, isn't that crazy? I think that might be wrong. <laughs> I love I love dropping tidbits that are like kind of that are yeah. like really and then I go I think I might have punched that up for the reveal. Yeah, yeah I have a buddy named Adam Dolls <laughs> comic of Portland. He would he does that at parties like he makes up facts and then waits for other people to repeat them and then he goes that's not true. Like he'll be like he'll be you like did you know your me? internal organs sweat and then he waits for somebody <laughs> he waits for somebody else to say he goes actually that's not true and then he just like leaves. <laughs> what did your dad get kicked out of priesthood for? I don't know. Like, I think he just, it was like a bad, like he it's just not, kept not, getting in yeah, little trouble. It's not hard to get kicked out of being a priest. Yeah, well, like, apparently it is. Apparently you got, <laughs> there's like one thing that's really awful. You're allowed to do a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking sickos. Um, <laughs> when he got kicked out and at the time, I guess in this, this was probably like the late sixties, early seventies, mm-hmm. Fort Worth was like a very booming town. So they had, they had needed like all kinds of t- different trades. People, my mom was a nurse, so they... Like hordes of Irish and English and Scottish nurses came to Fort Worth. Really? Yeah. So my mom had a flat and uh, with some other nurses. And then below them, my uncle Johnny, not my real uncle, but this guy, they lived below him. And then uh, he started dating Little Bit, who's like kind of like my god, one of my godmothers. Her name's Little Bit? Uh, Maura. But everybody calls her Little Bit because she's like five foot two and all she does is smoke and drink. It's you know great. that's what that's what Leanne calls Isla. Oh, really? A little bit. Yeah, she's, she's gonna be good people. Oh, uh, yeah. Fuck she yeah. little bit's the best, dude. All, they fuck it. It's so funny. Like when my mom passed away, like all these Irish nurses started showing up to the hospital, and they were like basically smoking in the room. It was fuck it. They were so mean to all the like these cute little nurses, like telling really? them what they weren't doing right and shit. It was like the funny. It was the only time I laughed the whole time. But so Johnny started dating a little bit, and then. Johnny and my dad grew up together. So they were like, oh, you know, a little bit has a has a friend. And then they met and then, yeah. And then uh, they were together for a while. And then they got a, they got apart real quick. Wait, what, what they they split up? Yeah, they divorced, I guess, when I was 13. But they were How many brothers and sisters do you have? Two brothers. One older, one younger. Really? So you're yeah. a middle kid? Yeah. yeah. And so you're... So when you were in high school, your parents were split up. You lived with your mom, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. And your mom was just like, "I'm working. If you want to go to well, school." Well, she was a night nurse. No, she was like, "Go to school." Like, but she just had like too much on her plate. Like yeah. she was trying because we lost a house and we went through a bankruptcy, and she was doing everything to like keep it afloat. You know, like God, she's so tough. And so like, like she just expected us 
to do our homework. <laughs> like, like yeah. she was like, you're old enough to like know what's right and wrong. And then like, apparently I wasn't, uh, I was just like, kind of, I just didn't like school. Oh, yeah. I look, I look at Isla hates school. Really? Like to the point where I like the you, social aspect of it. Oh, she doesn't even like that. Really? Yeah. But I think that's part of like what is happening with that generation is like, it's so much easier to just to sit on an iPad all day. Like that is the default it, it it stirs serotonin. So like I didn't have that serotonin growing up. Like there was no thing I could tap into. Like there was no uh what uh what the things the a pellet dispenser, like the rats do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't have that. So I had to find happiness through interaction. Yeah. But kids these days, they don't really need to interact. They can get on on uh some fucking Twitch. Do you think they're more comfortable being like isolated? Like, yeah, because I I truly believe people need other people. Isla does not. Yeah, she doesn't need a person. She's still asleep right now. It's fucking eleven thirty. Spring break or something. Spring break yeah. is the last day of spring break today. But like, she just, she, you know, uh, she's a weird kid. Georgia, I think Georgia. So like, Georgia got into this school, this school that Christina Pajinski went to. Uh, for high school, it's a really like. Oh, it's like a, like an LA magnet school or something. Uh, no, nah, it's like a high end all girls prep school. Oh, cool! And Georgia was like congratulations. That's driven awesome, right? for it. Oh yeah, yo, yeah. oh, it's it was when she got in. It was a very very happy day in our house. I texted Push immediately, and uh, that's fucking dope, dude. And then I said to Isla, "Do you think you'll want to go there?" And she was like, "Does everyone have to go to high school?" And you're like, "Yeah." <laughs> and you're like, "I go, yeah, everyone has to go to high school." She's like, I think I want to go. There's this one fucking high school where they, it's a zoo magnet. So you just learn how to become a zookeeper so you can transition. <laughs> sure, there's other things that go on there than like being uh, a zookeeper. Bullshit. Like, bullshit. There's got to be something. Else. Hey, uh, this is how you pick up rat shit and this is how you pick up bird <laughs> shit. It. No. That's all it is. No. I just swear to you. That cannot I be true. I swear to God. All you do is learn how to become a zookeeper so you can transition into zookeeping. And she's like, I think I'm going to do that. And I'm like, I can't green light you being a zookeeper in sixth grade. Like, I can't. That's a little early for that. Yeah, I can't. For go. any career choice. Yeah, you're Okay, you're going to be a zookeeper. To be fair, the money starting out is probably way steadier than being a comedian, though. Can I? Oh, I, yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's a much better career path than if yeah. she said, I think I'm going to get it in comedy, Dad. I'm going to be doing open mics at the improv lab. Oh, God. Do, when did you want to become a comedian? I always liked it when I was little. Like I know that's like the cliche answer, but I would watch it I all wish, the time. I wish that I wish that I had that. Like I liked it. Yeah, but I didn't love it. Yeah. Like I, I would watch like Bill Cosby's himself a lot. That was like one of my favorite things ever. I wish there was more comics that were like that would be honest and go like, yeah, I didn't do well with girls, and I thought this was a good way to get girls. I was pretty funny, and I think you know I'm, I'm good looking. I thought I could trans- transition to acting and move that like, kind of way. Like there's so many of those guys in this business where you're like. I remember Don Rollins one time told, told that Mo that guy Mandel, is fucking funny. Oh, Jesus. We're in a car. And Mo, by the way, in all fairness to Mo, he was very young at the time. Mo Mando. I don't know. I don't know either of these guys. I know who they are, but I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So we're in a car. It's me, Mo, Amy, um, Theo Vaughn, uh, Don Y'all taping something? No, we were doing a show for Comedy Central eons ago. And Mo is working bits on the car, like he's. But Mo's very like he's a he's a very he's a very uh, analytical comic. At this at this time, it was. Yeah. At this time, there was very little passion in Mo's writing. It was just write a ton. Isn't right. It's clever. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, and I think that Donnell is someone who's the exact opposite. Yeah, some people like those things catch up to one another. Right. But, yeah. I think I I'm more on Donnell's speed of mm-hmm. like my writing caught up to my passion for being funny. Yeah. Or like my my enthusiasm for being funny. And and Mo was like, if I work hard enough, then they'll catch up the other way. Yeah. And Donnell in the middle of the car ride, we're in a van. We're on the 101 going by the Universal Sheridan. It's at night. Donnell smoking a cigarette, sitting in the very front of the van, the passenger <laughs> side. <laughs> And he just goes, Mo, has anyone ever told you you're funny? <laughs> oh. And Mo, Mo doesn't. I, I, I've, That's so fucking me. Mo doesn't miss a beat and not trying to be ironic or fucking or trying to be funny. He goes, yeah, my mom. And <laughs> we lost our shit. 
<laughs> we were dying laughing. The hardest. It was just genuinely sincere. Goes, yeah, my mom. And, and Donnell was losing his shit. Like, and I, it was the funniest fucking moment. But I think there are those people. Like, I, like I can't imagine Jesselnick's personality translated or his act translated early on at a wedding party. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, there's like, like, you know, that dress shouldn't be white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Whatever, and you're like, it. God, you're an asshole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I you, wish I was like that likable. That's like, that's crazy how like much he gets away with that. Uh, fucking, yeah, yeah. I, it's insane that he can write those jokes. I think he has. I he's think, such a good joke writer. I think he has the. I mean, it's weird to say talk about another comic in the third about another comic's act or whatever. He has an ability to do stuff that very few comics have. Yeah, he has like a superpower that that I think sometimes I think he needs to explore that to the next level. Like I think he's great at what he does, but man, I bet he. But could, you think he has him? I, th- I think like he's the p- peak of his ability. Oh, I don't think he's hit the peak of his abilities. I think I think the greatness will happen with Jesselnick when he switches. Something happens to him, and he switches. And like uh, like theoretically speaking, I think we're going to see Louis next hour is going to show you the the strength of Louis C.K. Oh, like as a you mean an ability as a comedian? His. He the, yes, so he was doing one thing, and then this pivotal thing happened to him. Yeah, and then I think when he turns and he pivots and decides to talk about that personal experience, he's gonna have to. I don't he know. If has to. I don't know if he'll do it at, at top or at the bottom of it. It's you gonna know? be his first joke. It's yeah. gotta be his first joke. The whole hour will be about that. Because the, the, the other the other the other forty minutes will be like people being like, when's he gonna get to it? Like Ari Shafir is an example of someone who who pivoted. Like he's he. What I'm talking about with Jesselnick and with Louis, Ari decided internally to do when no one asked it of him. And he was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do two themed hours, you know, that are totally different. Shoot them on the same special. Dude, that is a monumental undertaking. It's, well, yeah, that's... I mean, for most of us, all... Well, me that's included, like most people, that's like, okay, well, then I'll do it in four years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and I just, I look at that and I go, most of us, like me, you, Segura... We're just writing a bunch of jokes that work, and then trying to string them together into yeah, a and like trying to like like make it seem seamless without like like does this fit next to this in a natural thing without me having to be like so anyways uh, yeah 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 how do I how do I string this together in a conversation yeah. where it doesn't like I'm a like, one sided conversation yeah, yeah. a one sided conversation there's no prompting like unless you build them in yourselves which is always like that can seem. Like oh he built like that seems like fundamental you know like or mechanical people can see it sometimes. How great would it be if you could bring up someone on stage on a stool to prompt you into your next bit? <laughs> you know that reminds me. And then they like they talk about the times or something, and then they just like <laughs> they flipping like, through a newspaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, ah yeah, you know president uh, whatever. And then you know like yeah, doesn't that remind you of when you were? And then yeah yeah, that'd be a fun. That's like something like. Dimitri could get probably get away with. Yeah. That's the beauty of alternative comedy. You know, I think for the longest time in my career, it's also the poison of it. I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting you say that because yeah. for the longest time in my career, I, I believed alternative comedy was poisonous. In poisonous is your word, I, or not your word, putting it on you, but I mean, I don't mean to. That's steal the word your, I use. I think. Yeah. I think I its greatest strength your... is its greatest weakness. Like it's easy to. Oh. Um. So some people are brilliant. And they can create a device or a way of doing something like Zach. Uh, yeah. Uh, Andy Daly, I think, is the funniest person alive. Like, I think, like, have you ever seen him do the thing where he says everything without saying anything? Like, it's this fucking crazy thing. He'll just be like, so what's going on here? I didn't sign up for that. And it's like it's, 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 he takes all these cliche sayings and like just strings them into a conversation. It's like the fucking funniest thing oh, in the world. No, I haven't seen it's, it. It's brilliant. Like you should, I'll, I'll text you the YouTube link or whatever. But by the, the way, you're one of the few people that you're you're really good at. Um, you're a good tastemaker. Like you, like when when you <laughs> when, when you like something, it's usually really great. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like those, but those people do those things brilliantly. And there are a few of you know, like there's some other. Bamford is one of those brilliant people. Bamford, that like, do you know who's really brilliant? Who gets underrated? Marilyn Rice Cub. Oh yeah, she's dude. I, I saw her at Bridgetown like four years ago or something like that, and I was like, "What the fuck is this person?" Do? Like, you look at somebody, and they, 
it's the funnest thing to watch people do things you don't the way you don't do them like yes because like you and i both tell stories and we tell jokes and think of themes and such but like so you can look at things mechanically and fundamentally like oh maybe he's going here or maybe they're gonna try and do this move or this kind of thing or misdirection or whatever uh but like when i watch somebody like that i'm just like this is fucking well i won't ever i (laughs) I won't ever do that like yeah yeah what would like I, I felt like when I'd watch alternative comedy, I felt like there were a lot of people when I was younger. And now the way, by the way, I think it's shifted a tad bit into traditional comedy. It's, yeah, I think, well, yeah, like I think it's like alternative is very mainstream. Like, you know, there there will probably be another change yes. yeah, of like weirder, artsier comedy or whatever, you know, like that'll come from the left or, or, or the right side of things. I don't know where that will, I think, gain momentum yeah, it's interesting you say that because i do see like uh i watch owen benjamin online yeah and he's so in a weird way he is coming at things from a perspective that no one else is taking like i guess some people are but they seem to be political pundits he's coming at things from such an angle where you're like where it's it's like even friends he's had I watch them like cringe, like go and go. Whoa! I love Owen as a man. I've known him for a really long time. Yeah, I worked with him once, and he was he was all right. But he's like, I have I don't keep up with shit online. I'm not like that person really. Yeah. But I heard like somebody's just like this guy is going fucking nuts, and like a lot of people I know are just like fuck him. Like, oh, and I I, so I don't really know anything about him, but like, he's like. It's like a, he's like a, a men's rights activist now or something. Is that like a thing he's doing? I don't he's, really know. So yeah. he's done. He's he's he just goes hard in the fucking paint. I heard Rogan one time say say about someone they talk too much, not in a bad way. Meaning like there there's too many vehicles to speak. And he said he was guilty of it too. But he was like he's, the guy's got two podcasts. He's doing doing stand up. Like he's online. He's on Instagram. And I think that. Isn't Rogan's podcast like six hours long each yeah, time? Yeah, but he was saying it about himself it was, as yeah. well. Oh, okay. And he was yeah, saying it about his friend. I think it's friend. funny that somebody was, with a six-hour yeah. podcast is like, oh, you but talk too much. As soon as he said that, I was like, yeah, I'm not that thoughtful in my presentation of things sometimes. Sometimes these days, you just shoot from the hip and go, here's my view on feminists. And you're like, uh-oh, what did I just say? Yeah. And I think Owen, I think Owen is coming at things like all I know, I don't, I can't speak for Owen, and I won't. Yeah. I, I'll always have him on my podcast. Yeah, I, but he's a friend of mine. Yeah, and I. I Did you I'm guys a, came up together? No, I just when I met him, uh, he was younger than I was. He's more like Tom's generation. I'm a, I'm a little older than Tom. Meaning, I was headlining when Tom was featuring. Okay. I was headlining when Owen was featuring, and so, but he was always. Very, you guys are yeah, because I'm probably two or three levels below Tom's level. You're just behind. Yeah, you, you're you because I just started headlining most of the like when I'm you know like in the past year and a half or so. Yeah, 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 probably the same. And so, but I, I Owen's always been solid to me. And there's been times where I've been in a down spiral where I've talked to Owen and he's taken me out and we've we've been friends. Yeah, so I'll always be his friend. So I'm he's a, a compassionate person. Yeah, like when yeah. Tom went through his drama that just went ha- happened. Yeah. I, I was like, I don't know, but it's fine. Yeah. I'm not gonna talk about it. Okay, but uh, I was there for him. I was like, oh. I don't care what happens. I'm your friend. I'll, I got your back. Yeah. I saw that happen with a fighter. Um, I think Phil Baroni went to the trial of this guy, uh, War Machine. The War Machine beat up his girlfriend. Yeah, is this the guy who went like, yeah, like one ape shit? Yeah. And yeah. everyone tried to come after Phil Baroni. I think it was Phil Baroni. If I'm sorry if it's not. And he was like, hey, man, he's my friend. Like, I don't have a ton of them. And so yeah, I, I think that's a them. valuable thing. It's like he's not saying he's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, do I watched Owen? Was, yeah. uh, apparently, he was like, oh, apparently you can't use, and he doesn't. He doesn't say the n word. He can't use the n word on Easter. <laughs> and, I, and a, Jenny was like, I apologize. He was like, I was like, I Jeez. couldn't find the tweet. I was like, what the fuck? How did you on Easter? So he morning? said that he tweeted this. Or oh, he tweeted the n word. A fair amount. <laughs> God. <laughs> and I'm like a, a fair w- amount. <laughs> like <laughs> he's tweeted it. Not only has he tweeted it, he's screen grabbed it and put it on his Instagram. <laughs> like he's very. But you know, is the, he doing it to push buttons? I think part of him is pushing buttons. I think part of him, f- part of it for him is is finding material. I think internet is how he writes. It, okay, it's how he inspires himself. You know, and he gets into conversations and debates with people. Uh, you know, 
Yeah, like so. So yeah, so there's just, there's some of both, but like, yeah, if you're pushing button, I don't like. I always find the easiest way is to like not give a shit, dude. But like, I guess someone like Owen probably has a platform and plenty of followers, He's, so it can be, you know, like some of our fans are dumber than us. Yeah. Yeah. So it's easy to see them. Uh, both of my fans are dumber than me. <laughs> I. Um, <laughs> It's easy to see how things get misconstrued on such a, you know, like cuts tone on the internet is like the hardest fucking thing to figure out half the time anyways. And I'm not trying to defend. Oh, like, I don't think you just use that word like flippantly at all or ever. Really? I don't. Yeah. yeah. Here's the, here's, I think what his point was. I didn't, I could never find his tweet, but the hypocrisy of people like, like my daughters have never said the N word. They've never actually never said it. Um, but I think there's a lot of people that go, I've never said it. And you go, have, have you really you never fucking said, have said it? Yeah, 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 like, yeah. And then I think that was his point was like, don't get mad at someone for saying it. If you've said it, like, I, I don't, I'm not going to, yeah, you can know better now to, you yeah, know, you yeah, can still yeah. get mad at people for saying that's not, I don't, I don't, I'm not comfortable with people saying it. I yeah. Don't, it, it's I, a it doesn't, gross. Yeah. 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 But you know, but I, the weird thing we were, I was talking about this, I think on my solo podcast was. There is this weird portion of age of Americans who don't, who use it like, I won't say, I can't say white kids only because I haven't seen it, but I know at my daughter's school, the Mexican kids all say it. Like they say it. Yeah. And, and I know in the, in the Bronx, all the Dominican kids say it. Yeah. And I, like there's. I've like, seen that too, for sure. And that's the weird part where I go, when I was a kid. No one said the Cuban kids didn't say it. Yeah, like we were the first generation of kids that, like, you knew that be- word was bad. I think in the South, meaning yeah, like forty five years old, born in the seventies. Yeah, that word. There was older kids that you're in, from what Tallahassee, Tampa, Tampa. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you always know it's bad, but like, I, yeah, it's been a bad word uh, since its inception. But like, yeah. I mean, um. People will just, I mean, in the South, especially people will just drop it candidly in conversation. Yeah. Like, uh, like it's not bad. Yeah. Like it's weird. And they're like the, and then if you react to it, they're like, you need to calm down. Like, you know, like, I I thought it's such an uncomfortable fucking, it is. And it's like, it's a, it's, a, it's so uncomfortable for us to be talking about it right it now. Is. Like, and it, but, but I was in the shower yesterday and I said to myself, the N word. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> I have a few bits that I'm working on that are, are, uh, I don't, I don't know if they're talking about race or whatever. And in the shower, I, our best friends are Asian oh. and I don't see, I don't see them as Asian. And one of them is like, I'm, this is a legit, like off the boat. Like she was an immigrant. Yeah, she she's one of my best friends in the world. But like broken English. She, she's she not lives, in comedy. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> she should be. Guys, she's fucking funny as yeah. shit. Oh, she's so fucking funny. But like broken English to this day. Um, and I was in the shower and I was like, I don't really see color with them. And I go, I don't think I see color with people. Like I know you're Mexican. Yeah, but like I don't. I don't, that's not one well, of the I'm things not like, yeah. that comes up in me. Yeah, you know, I think some people, it's like, it is how they identify themselves and that's fine. Like, you know, like, it's totally fine. Yeah. Like, but I just never did or do. And, you know, like, I, like, my mom raised us mostly. So, like, if anything, I would say I'm just, like, Texan or whatever. You know, like. Te- yeah. Yeah. And that's, like, a cultural thing, too. Like, you know, you, you've been there. You see, you'll probably see a thousand people this weekend with, like, Texas tattoos all over their arms and shit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, it just, you don't, yeah, it's like, it is weird, like, like some people, you, that you don't, like, you start to see them less and less as a, cult, like, a racially, I get, you know, like, it, yeah. I think it takes growth, yeah, and, I and thought, it still yeah. takes a relationship with those people, too, like, because I'll be, like, if I'll speak candidly, I'll just be like, oh, uh, like, you know, like, I'll be like, oh, who was that again? They're like, oh, the, and I'll be like, was that the, like, was that the, uh, the Chinese girl and they might not be, you know, and they'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. And yeah. then, you know, and then it just gets weird and tight just in that moment too, because people feel that. And it's not, I don't want to say it's fine, but I think it's like a genuine feeling you know, like that people I, pick up on. And I think there's a weird thing that's happened with 
making it sticky has been the power move. So like if like like you said like I said to a uh, I said to a girl on on stage I was in uh, Sacramento and I said are, are you Vietnamese I I assumed she was Vietnamese yeah. and she went oh no like got really offended and I went oh she's with a white guy and I go whoa so in my head I go I do the math I go she's offended that I thought she was Vietnamese uh, clearly that that is taught to her by her parents her parents. Don't like Vietnamese people. Oh, so what? Well, so what are like? Yeah, so so, who, and so then I so go. Who has conflict with Vietnamese people? Is no, like, and, yeah. no I, I'm going. I'm going. All right. Now I know enough, and I go. Have they met the white guy yet? Because she's dating a white guy, and she goes, "I do not want to talk about that." And so I nailed it on the head. Right? I nailed it. Like from stage, I went. If you don't like Vietnamese people, then your parents can't be comfortable. Then your parents can't be these open-minded liberals. Yeah, yeah. So clearly, they're not going to be excited that you met. You're dating a white guy. And then he got offended for her. Where was this? This is in Sacramento. And he was a fan. He was like a legit fan. Yeah. Some people are so liberal. They like, they yeah. step all over their fucking own shoes. Yeah. 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 And you're like, and you're like, cause maybe like, she is just like shut off by, you know, like yeah. maybe she's like, maybe she was adopted, you know, like, and maybe like, you know, maybe she grew up, you know, this could be a, there's oh, a million yeah. scenarios where it's just not, some people are like, it's not polite to talk about it. You know? Like, yeah. 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 That's, you know, I never even thought about Cause that. I lived in Portland for like, 10 years and a lot of people there are very open-minded but sometimes they wrap all the way back around when they're standing behind themselves trying to do the right thing you know like yeah my friend dax uh jordan had this great joke it's like he talked about he's like he was like you know like somebody walked up to him was like uh, who's your african-american friend and he goes he's from kenya like so you make the assumption already that they're african american or like you know like he could have been from toronto like we have this very narrow scope in america as to like yeah boil things down and it was just he, yeah, but like so, I think it's like we make up these cuts of our past interactions or whatever. And yeah. there is, and there is like a short. We make cut. up these scenarios to like. I yeah. saw, I saw, I had a a white a white girl and a black guy in Hartford, Connecticut, one time. I I have the. I think I released the <laughs> audio a, of this. Yeah, yeah, you can find this on my podcast. I think I released the audio of this, and I said. Which is very common in Hartford. Is interracial couples is very common in Hartford. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hartford's a Hartford's an interesting place, but it's it's a big melting pot, in my opinion. But the way the black guy was wearing his hat, it's funny because like I think most people think of Connecticut as a very like oh no no stuffy no. white place. You know, like, oh, Hartford is not that. Yeah, oh, Hartford is. Was that funny bone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And but the way the black guy was wearing his hat and his shirt, I knew he wasn't from this country. Oh really? <laughs> like, <Come on. laughs> like I just knew, but it's it's those shortcuts in your head as a comic where you go, and he was really dark, and I said, "Well, to how him, was he wearing his ball cap?" Like, he, yeah. he was his hat was a like his hat was uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was a hat that said USA on one side, right? Okay, so it wasn't like a cool hat, and it was <laughs> yeah, 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 it wasn't and, like a yeah, a throwback Astros. Cap it was or a hat like. to keep the sun out of your face. Okay, <laughs> and it was a snapback, and it was tight. And his shirt was a collared shirt, but he had buttoned uh, like a, a, a pullover collared shirt, like a Tommy Hill figure, and it didn't match his hat. His hat didn't match anything he was wearing, and it was buttoned one button up, and I couldn't see it. That's all I could see. Yeah. And he's a darker dude, and I go, uh, where in Africa are you from, sir? And he goes, he goes, huh? And she goes, why would you say that? I said, I'm just guessing. She goes, why would you say that? That's racist. And I went, well, I, I apologize. I just, I'm looking at him. I just assume he was from Africa. Why? Because he's darker? And I said, well, that's, yeah, that's part of what I'm guessing. Guess you're being honest. Yeah. yeah. And I go, yeah, it's a little bit because he's darker. Um, the way he's wearing his hat. And everyone's like, what? I go, the way he's wearing a hat, like black guys don't wear their hats like that in the United States. He had and, a different kind of style and swag. Yeah. yeah, I, go, yeah. I go, that's like, it would be, I, I go, it's, and I said, said the analogy, and this, it's the same if you see a guy wearing what looks like a race car driver shoes. You go, where in Europe are you from? Like those tight, like yeah. a, like if you see sneakers that are different. So types you're saying of sneakers. like 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 when you go abroad, say if you went to Paris, people would like by the way you're dressed, be like, oh, he's American. Yeah, yeah by the yeah. way I'm dressed. And I said, I don't know. I'm, they make I, that they, or they make that generalization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said I apologize, and she goes, he's from Hartford. I said, oh, okay. And so then I said, I said, sir, I apologize. Let me buy you a drink. I, I, I wasn't trying to hurt your feelings. And he goes, 
you did not hurt my feelings. I said, wait, where's your accent from? He goes, Kenya. So are you from Kenya? And he goes, yes. And I said, wait, you said he was from Hartford. And she looked at him and she goes, you said you were from Hartford. He goes, no, I'm from Kenya. She goes, wait, what? what? How dumb is she that she doesn't recognize this accent? It's their first date and she didn't pick up on an accent. And I go, ma'am, you're the one that needs to be ostracized. You are the problem with this country. You're the one that got offended <laughs> that when I picked up on fucking social cues, like I picked up just like any predator or animal would. You might, you were being, yeah, like, I guess, yeah, maybe not sensitive, but acknowledging. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I go, and I, and he and goes, kind of bluntly. So, and then he yeah. says, what's wrong with my hat? And I said, black guys don't wear hats like that. You haven't seen black guys in this country? He goes, no, I got this at a head shop. I, this is how they wear it, right? <laughs> and like, he was completely. Was it so funny? It was the funniest fucking moment. That, like, a, very, everyone, a very truthful moment. Very truthful. Everyone's losing their fucking minds. And then this woman, I go, you didn't. You're out on a first date with him. You didn't. Not only did you not look at his clothes and go, he's not from this country. Yeah. But you didn't even hear his fucking accent. And which she, is fine, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is totally fine. Well, yeah. But it, <laughs> like, just for people who are already like ready to get upset about shit. Yeah. Fuck them. I'm yeah, like, I know. I'm just like. I'm like, I, got, I was so worked up. I, by the way, I am almost certain I released this on a podcast, this audio of this, because I was taping it. And I was so blown away by what happened that I was like, I can't believe that. But then, then I get to the point in the shower the other day where I go, I'm a white guy. No one gives a fuck to hear my insights, my nuances on race. Like, I don't really yeah, care. Yeah, it's, it's a like I'm half white. So like uh, us discussing discussing this is really. So you have a card. You have a card. That, like just being half Mexican, you can you could theoretically. Yeah. And I, I don't think. But most people won't. You know, and I don't. But most people wouldn't even be like, I know I wasn't Mexican enough. Like w growing up in Texas, like for sure, really? I didn't hang out with Mexican kids. Like, really? no, no, yeah, but like, it's fine. I don't know if I truly, really wanted to that much. Either. You know, like I mean, I wasn't like, I'm not dark, you know, yeah. and I'm not like I don't have like, you know, these other guys. They were nice. We were friendly. You know, they weren't exclusionary, but there was. I clearly was like, uh, Miklo in Blood In Blood Out. Did you ever see that? Of course, it's a great fucking movie. Great uh, fucking movie. Yeah, uh, but you know, but my all my friends were like. Just regular, like, dirty punker kids and shit, you know? So, I mean, like, just nerds. Are either your brothers more Mexican than you? They're both much darker, and they have, like, darker features. They have, like, darker hair and darker skin. Really? Yeah, but, like, they still, like, they look Mexican, but, like, more so than me, you know, which is not to say much. Like, when you think of, like, an East L.A. kind of Mexican dude, like, yeah. they, they're closer to looking like that than me. And if they spend, like, th three days out in the yard working, like, they get real dark and, like... You know, but they like culturally, we're not like I said, we're not very like Mexican in that sense that like just because of the way we were brought up with it, my grandparents and stuff. Yeah. What, what do your brothers do? Uh, my younger brother installs safes and does quality insurance on them. <laughs> He's uh, you know like a kind of a strapping dude. I, was, I thought you were gonna go. My younger brother runs a taco truck. And <laughs> <laughs> my older brother is a dead And my, uh, my older brother is the guy who says goal at the end of every <laughs> soccer game. <laughs> uh, and my uh, my older brother, he, uh, he cuts down trees. And uh, he does like, he's just like kind of a grunt, like very yeah. regular dude. Yeah. So I'm like the, definitely like the biggest sissy in the, like, we're so different. It's fucking insane how little I have in common with my brothers. For real? Oh, yeah. We're not like, we're all, I think we love each other, but like, it's the, there are no, uh, we just don't have a lot in common. Like my little brother, he like likes comedy, but like, you know, but he doesn't like, you know, he's not like a, they're not what I would call creatives in a lot of way. Like, you know, that, that's not a thing they vibe for. They enjoy it. And they like, they like film and, you know, like in entertainment and that kind of stuff, but they're not dudes at all that would like be like i'm gonna try something new today for me you know they're not if you're gonna introduce him to comedy who would you show them first oh my little brother is a, he's a big fan of yours actually because he, <laughs> he he travels for work a lot yeah uh so he like he has like uh the serious package and all that stuff so he listens so he like he's a huge fan of mark norman really yeah oh yeah because you know mark just like is a machine and just turns out jokes it's fucking insane and then he um he, the stuff the guys i would be like these these are my favorite guys he's probably like yeah it's fine like you know i think he like he's not um 
Like Kanane is probably like my favorite guy. Uh, and I think he would like him, but it wouldn't be like his favorite thing. You know, Kanane opened his uh, Netflix with. Uh, oh, the go- oh my god, yeah. I was like, I was like, that's ballsy. Yeah, he's good. He's he's, he's got step. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. I was like, I was like, I. I you know, what's so funny is that we did uh we did, on Travel Channel we did maybe five machine gun segments, and school shootings were happening so often that. Every time we edited it and went to air it a week before we went to five. air it, five times a week before we went to air it, there's a school shooting. And they're like, we can't air it. They pulled out of the show and it's fucking the crazy. Yeah. It's bizarre. Man. I mean, it's, ta- yo, like, it's very, like, sympathetic and tasteful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, but. I mean, but just, it's fucking horrible. Like, you can't shoot guns in, like, a. In like a my brothers sure are, are, like, to the right. Like yeah. I'm, I'm very, I'm about as left as they really get a lot. Oh yeah, like I'm just like, yeah, it's not everybody. Fuck everybody. Like, yeah. you know, like it's fine. <laughs> no one's hurting anyone. It's like I don't, I don't see why we fucking need guns. I don't. I grew up in Texas. I don't care if you have them. I never want to be around them ever. I yeah. fucking hate them. But like, I get why. Like culturally, for some people, it's an important thing. But these fucking like, <laughs> there's. I, I've, I haven't heard a good defense yet of why you need to own a fucking semi-automatic one. I still haven't heard. You know, like, the government's yeah. coming. Yeah, they're coming to Ted's house to get his fucking gun. Fuck off. It's, uh, I, w- I, I was lost after I did the special with, like, what to write about or what to talk about. Yeah. And gun control. This is because it was, like, pretty personal stuff this time. Uh, yeah, it was, everything was super personal. And I felt like I didn't know, like, now what am I, like, do I just wait for my family? Like, I just talked about my family and then some stories and so then I was like, maybe I'll write a bit about gun control. And then I was like, eh, it's not really my lane. I was like, and then I was like, well, I was. Do you I'm, worry about that a lot? Like being in, like what people expect of you. Now that you have like a good amount of success and you're selling a lot of tickets, like what people expect from being on brand, which is like the fuck, maybe the best little, and worst thing that's happened. A little bit. I, I mean, I think about it. Here's the thing is I can't really dictate where i'm not the kind of guy that i'm not the machine that sits down and writes out all right gun control and then writes 10 jokes about guns yeah that's like yeah, yeah some, people, that. some guys work that way yeah. and it works really well for them but yeah i'm not either and yeah. so and so i can't i'm never going to be able to write that from that angle do you get it from a flicker like you have to think about something how it affected you and then you can like try and move out of that i write down i write down things that i think are funny or i miss a lot a lot of times i miss hear things and so I'll mishear something and it'll make me laugh. And I la- last night on the plane, this is, I mean, this is not to go back to race at all, but last night I, on the plane, I heard someone say, that's like the pot calling the kettle black. But I thought they said, that's like the pot calling, calling the, the kettle, kettle the N-word? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's not, my mind is not as funny as that. <laughs> but I, I, I don't think that was that good. <laughs> I, thought, I thought they said, that's like the pot calling the kettle half black. And I was like, and I started laughing at like, that's the, way funny that the pot is calling the kettle half black. And I started laughing. And so I just wrote it in my phone. If I can ever find a place. That's that. way funnier. And so, so a lot of times I mishear things and they make me laugh. And then I go, that's a joke. And then, and then, uh, and then other times I go, all right, it, I like to write from a personal spot. I want all my opinions to be derived on me like i want i want me to be in the story that i'm telling like but i do believe that if you're not challenge yourself to write from your own perspective and write your own jokes like not try to copy other people's jokes that's what everybody does that for a little bit i think but yeah. that's true like because everybody like does a thing where they act like a comedian like because you you know there's that's so how many, you learn there's so many people doing that like doing that to bill burr right now it's insane it's insane and i, I, and I think so many rogan people did, guys there's a lot of like guys like joe yeah uh there's a lot of people like bamper trying to do like oddity like that and i heard i was on some podcast or wasn't on i was listening to someone and they were talking about like todd berry was on there like yeah a lot of people were doing you for a bit oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean i mean a lot of people were doing Hedberg. Yeah, yeah, that's like the, the, I mean, that's the ultimate one. Yeah, right? that's the like, ultimate one. And so, yeah. <clears throat> and then Louis, like, clear, like he influenced like most everybody in my generation to some degree. A little bit of me, like a little bit of me was. Are guys doing? You find guys like? No, no, no. I don't think anyone's doing me. But like, but I, I was influenced by Louis and Dave. Oh, I see what you Patel, yeah, yeah. and a little bit of Chappelle. Like, but my goal in 
this last special was to write my own personal way. Like the, I only, I, I mean, I have a couple jokes. I think the machine's a good example of like no that's one, like a thing no one else is going to be able to do. Yeah, yeah. Do, tell a twelve minute story. Yeah, like that's that's a me thing. But I think also like like the joke I have about uh, pajamas. Like that's I go no that's one's, a you. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a me. So then I go okay, let's try to write more like that. Let's try to get into situations where the situation was funny. You were there and tell the story about the situation as opposed to here's my deal on guns. So then yeah, like you come out like just like. Like hitting them over the top with it pretty yeah. quick, yeah. And so my it personalizes you, which is one of your strengths, I think, as a stand-up. that like people yeah. respond to you as a vehicle. Oh, thank you. Yeah. But so I, so with guns, I said to myself, okay, if I'm going to write about guns, how would I write about guns? And then I've, I've shot a lot of guns. Uh, I don't know. Do you about get a rush from it when you do it? Yeah, they're fun, but there's a lot of fear in shooting a gun. Like yeah. there's a lot of like the first time I ever went to a shoot a gun range was with my buddy Lorenzo. We were in living in LA and he had said something about shooting guns and I was like I've never shot a gun. I was probably 29. He was like you've never shot a gun? I said no. And he goes we should go shoot a gun. So we went to a gun range in downtown like towards more towards East LA and I, it was it, all of it was really exciting, but there's like so many like so many things that you have to do like so they give you goggles and and head and earmuffs and your bullets and your pick a gun yeah that would create a tremendous amount of anxiety in me like all yeah. of that stuff yeah. a lot of a lot of moving parts yeah with a weapon that can kill yeah. And and it's so it's so bizarre that they just give you the and gun. Like, all of those things are not going to. Yeah. I know they're there to protect you, but they're not going to stop a bullet. You no, know, no. like so like the big, the thing they should give you is a bulletproof vest, probably more than anything. And so I walk in to the thing. I don't put my headgear on. My my got my yeah, my yeah, goggles yeah, or my earmuffs. Yeah. I walk in. My gun's in a tray. I'm holding everything in a tray. Um, I walk in and it's all. Uh, there's a group of people that all look sketchy. Like, I'm not even getting to the cholos at the end who are practicing to shoot guns for for, for whatever for occupational yeah. hazards. <laughs> but there's a, everyone in there looks sketchy. No yeah, one yeah, in there. Of course they do. Everyone's shooting guns. There's no like. There's no like. Ah, oh, this is like a country club. Yeah. It's, there's no like. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. There's not like a like a lot of. It's not like guys wearing shooting vests and stuff like going on quail hunts. It's a lot of people yeah. looking for respect. Yeah. It's, <laughs> And oh, and I—that's a fucking that's insightful. I, and I yeah. and I have don't have my head my hat, earpieces on, and a gunshot is the loudest thing you've ever heard, and it's so instantaneous. The pop happens so it's so out of nowhere. It's very jarring. It's like th it's like thunder and lightning in a bottle right on your. And it's the reason they give you headgear is it is insane fucking loud. And every time, the whole I hear time, it, I'm sure. Yeah. And but you're hearing it like pop, like no, there's no predicting for it. So as I hear it, oh I'm, yeah, it's got to be very erratic because there's like ten or twelve stalls at least. I'm sure, like, dude, I am, and they're not even really stalls. It's open, like there's like stalls, kind of. But they have but like it's two, so open. They have like it's just to make two pieces of like plywood essentially, right? Yeah, like, yeah. It's basically like a bowling alley. Yeah. And you, you but, but with like a wall from where you're shooting from the side peripherally. Yeah. Yes, but but you're all sitting in the part where you party during bowling yeah and and it's and i hear the gunshots and it's making me shake so much that i have a panic attack and i have and i start crying uncontrollably like jesus because I, I realize i realize just how fragile life is in an instant how like <laughs> i have no control of this and any one of these people can turn and kill me that's the thing that freaks me the fuck out is that like what if today's that because i have days where i lose it you know like I don't need that day at a gun range. Like you know, like like there is such a you're on such a fragile, such thin ice at a gun range. You don't know why people are there. Well, and there's like a lot of like, I guess there's probably like a lot of like fragile, like not maybe fragile is not the right word, but like a lot of like highly sensitive masculinity going on. I would assume, but maybe I don't. I've never been to a fucking gun range. I don't know. I've only but like been, I mean, like a lot of guys who go to those places. Not everybody. But a lot of guys who go to those places are like there to like prove themselves something. Yeah, yeah. And then some guys are just like, I just like shooting my gun. Some yeah. people, some people are like, I, I like shooting my gun. There are people going, I need this for self defense. Yeah, and, and there are, which which is which is a little you know like that's different than a guy that goes to jujitsu for. Self -defense. Yeah, they all go there for different reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like the same way everybody does comedy for different reasons. Yeah, you know? 
But like, I don't want to be next to the weirdo who's like. And there were a few of them. There, yeah, in that gun range, there were, and I fucking lost it. I had a panic attack, and I started crying. And my buddy Lorenzo, everyone saw me do it. Another my comic. Buddy, no, no, just uh, but he should be, but no, he's just a buddy of mine. I like your friends that aren't comedians, like the funniest fucking people you've ever met in your life. <sighs> Always, yeah. And so, and so, then that was my one experience. And then I shot, I've shot like the fucking AR-15s, the the fucking fifty That's calibers. Like intense. Those seem like way too fucking much, dude. I've shot like guns. a shotgun. Like, have you shot like a big? I've fucking... shot every t- gun there is. Almost, yeah. I've shot. All, I, I I can say that. Uh, hyper hyperbolic kinds of guns you mean i've yeah. shot almost every fucking in style type of gun meaning like biggest to smallest there's a place in la where you can or in in uh vegas where you can shoot machine guns i think it's called machine gun heaven or what something <laughs> and dude i shot the gun where your chest rattles you can feel your internal organs like your sternum you can feel your heart m- it, the gun makes your heart beat like it, Fuck, it. No fucking thanks. I don't think that's the thing for me. Oh, do you do Uzi's. you enjoy it now? No, the no, more no. You so go- I did it for all t- all for TV shows. Oh, okay, and then and then for like Birth of Conqueror or whatever for Trip Flip. Okay, we do yeah. it. I shot guns in Texas. I shot I've shot guns everywhere. I've always like I said five times we did it, and they were always like you know high end experience. So they brought in guns from everywhere, and we shoot them all. It is. Uh, it's fun. It's I got to be honest with you. It's really fun, and it's I see the appeal in it to agree. I just don't think it's a thing I would like. I get what same piece of people. I don't like roller coasters, but I get why people like them. I don't. Yeah. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, and so I'm coming at all this from this angle. This will go yeah. to go back to like how to write or how I'm writing. Yeah. And then I said, and I'm trying to figure this out as a bit. I don't think it. I don't think it'll ever get there. So I said, I don't know anything about gun control. I know about guns. I don't think we need some of the big, big, big ones, but it is a slippery slope of, well, if you do make them and we are allowed to have them, how do we not? Like, so I can start going, well, I don't know. Like, how easy is it to get a gun? It is pretty easy for some people. So I went, I went to Burbank. I went to this, I drive to go to All Things Comedy, you know, once a week. Yeah. And I'm driving and I see a gun shop. And I just pull over. I was like, I see if I can get a gun. And I just walked in and I was like, can I get a gun? And they were like, yeah. They're like, what do you need it for? And I went back to that place in the thing. I said, respect. <laughs> and they didn't, they were like, cool, what do you want? Are you fucking serious? Dead serious. And I was like, and they That's were like. That's crazy. And, and, that uh, you said respect. <laughs> I will also, I have to be fair to my, my gun dealers. <laughs> what did they, you they say knew, my wife? Like, they, what did you say? Like, respect? My, they, they knew, everyone my recognized gun, me. For, also, you said everyone, my gun. Everyone recognized uh, me. Oh, okay. Everyone okay, recognized so there's, me. There's like a case of celebrity here. The dude in, the dude. You're going to be speaking like in front of Wayne LaPierre at an NRA <laughs> convention. And they were like, they were like, what do you want? And I told them what I wanted and they were like, cool. And then I signed, I took the test, which is, su- I will say is super easy. And then I was so idiotic. What is the test? Can- it's like 21 questions. Uh, uh, when you're cleaning your gun, should you load it and point it at your face? No. So it's like a DMV test. It's, by the way, the, the, the question I think I asked is one of the questions on the fucking That's like, fucking- it's, it's basically common knowledge about a gun. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's an exact question. Is it gun a telephone? Do you put it up to your... <laughs> yeah, like, fucking idiot. Like, when you leave your gun at home the guy who your fails kids, that fucking test? I, I did not study. By the way, I tried to buy a gun a long time ago at a Big Five, and the guy told me it's not worth it. What's a Big Five? Big Five's a... Uh, it's a sporting goods store. I wanted to buy a, oh, okay. a rifle, a twenty two, And I said, can I get a twenty two? I want to teach you girls how to shoot. We were going camping. And he was like, dude, it takes forever. Don't even try. I went, what? And he goes, don't do it. He goes, the test, you got to study for the test. And are you good at tests? And I was like, no. And he was like, dude, I failed it twice. And I was oh, like. Oh, that's why. Yeah. And so I, I was so put off by that one guy at Big Five that I never looked into the gun. So I took the test at this place. It was I, so easy. I got 100%. I didn't, I didn't even. I mean, it was so fucking easy. The only question that's hard is um, long guns. You can be 18 to buy them and handguns you have to be 21 to buy them that's the only question so it's like an, that's the one like legal question yeah and then um when you're traveling with a gun do you can you keep it on, uh, on your lap on the car seat next to you or do you have to keep it in the trunk with the bullets in separate well obviously yeah. it's like comments so then i bought the guns and then 
I was like, like, whatever the most sensible thing. Yeah, See, whatever the, the most sensible thing, thing is. is, it's probably what it is. Like, what is whatever the safest thing is, I guess. Yeah, like, seeming, which is fucking cra- yeah. And so I bought the guns, and then I was like, cool. Um, do I get bullets now too? And the guy goes, no, you got to wait ten days. And I was like, ten days. He was like, yeah, we have a waiting lo- period. And I was like, oh, I don't even want them now. And by the way, did that take the? It took it took the want of my gun away immediately. Really? If you put a ten day waiting period on a gun. I, there are a lot of people I think that would just never get around to getting a gun. Like I, I bought two guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bought a Glock nine millimeter and I bought a Mossberg. I paid for What's them. What's a Mossberg? It's a shotgun. Mossberg's a brand of gun. Okay. But I bought a Mossberg twelve gauge. Okay. It, that's really for home home defense. It's only because you go and that sound. It's the scariest thing. If yeah. I heard that, I'd wet myself. And so I bought both of them, paid for both of them, found out I didn't get them for 10 days. And I was like, fuck. In my head, I was like... Aren't they expensive, too? I mean, guns eh, seem expensive. 300 bucks, 600 bucks. Not super expensive. Like, you can come up with that money. If you want one. Yeah. And so then I went home, and I was like, "Eh, this was a month ago. I still haven't picked them up. I don't care about them. They're at this place. And the guy called yesterday and was like, hey, man, if you don't pick up your guns, we're going to have to, like, you have to re-register it's gonna be another 10 days i was like uh, if i get to them i get to them really yeah and so like part of me is like <clears throat> they just refund your money or what how would I, that i don't know i don't even care like part of me goes i don't really need a fu-. like i i don't think i'd have i don't think i'd use a gun in the right way like last night i was drinking by myself watching so that's the kind movie. of thing i think like i get real boozy sometimes i don't think i'd like kill it but i could see myself doing that's i walking around the i house feel like something du- i'm Dumb. I'm kind of like like I have been very dumb. Yes. So like me, me at a gun me range too. would just be like, even if I was just like like feeling, con- I know what happened. I'd feel confident, and then I'd be like, fucking check me out, Clint Eastwood, and then you know like fucking shoot myself in the earlobe or something stupid, dude. I, like something where everybody like looks at me a little bit when they meet me. I went to I went to a hunting uh, shooting pigeon trap trap skeet shooting. Yeah. Traps when you shoot one, skeets when you shoot two. So I went trap shooting for a TV show, and this is why I shouldn't own a gun. I said, my cameraman's shooting me off to the side, like filming me, and I said, oh, let's do an intro read, and I pointed the gun at the Jesus. camera, oh. <laughs> and he, oh. goes, he goes, oh, what are you doing? I fucking, hey. oh my God. And That's the like, exact, yeah. I, but I was like, it'll be a good read. Like, you're looking down the barrel of a gun, and he was like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't, like, part of me was like, what? Like, I, I'm you an idiot. Com- you got comfortable. I got really, I'm not. But that's like how, like, all things in life work. I think, like, the more familiar you are with them, the more comfortable you get with them. Yeah. And, like, you know, you try shit on stage that you wouldn't have tried years ago. You know, like, just yeah. because you, you have, like, a sense of, of what you're able to do with it. Yeah, I think, and I think... <clears throat> That's and like last night I was like, oh, now's a good time to have a gun. Like I'd probably be walking around with it in my hand, and I was like, I don't need, I don't think I should get guns. Like I don't think, I think it just adds another way that it, something tricky in my life as opposed to solving anything. Yeah, it's like a, it just right now it presents more of a problem than a solution. Yeah, I like, or a possible problem, I guess. To be fair, yeah, a possible problem for me, and, you know. And I, I think, I don't really care. Like I have my buddy Cowhead has. You have a buddy named Cowhead? He's a radio guy. His real oh. name's Mike. Okay. <laughs> but his nickname, nickname was Cowhead, and I, I've just known him for so long, I've never wanted to call him Mike. I always call him Cowhead. But uh, he's got a lot of guns. Dude, that's Florida is a place where getting a gun in Florida, I don't. I, th- I know they've changed the laws, but that place is al- it's alarmingly uh, alarmingly easy. Like Really? Like, shivering. Indiana's like a state like that <coughs> where there's always gun shows happening and shit, and people just get like just scoop them up it's fucking crazy like my brothers like their gun they love them or they like them you know but yeah. they both have uh like what do you call them like um the thumbprint gun safes that's see yeah. like they as much as i fucking hate it and hate being around it like i'll give them credit that they're like for the most part i think they're trying to do it safely well, they make guns now that are smart guns that are yeah yeah they, they like that you read, it's like an iPhone. It reads yeah, your fucking crazy. Dude, I got to give a shout out to Dan Cummings. You know Dan Cummings? I've met him a few times, yeah. Dude, his podcast, Time Suck, is fucking amazing. It is so good. What's I've been it listening. It's, it, it's, uh, it is a legit... It should be bought by a fucking radio conglomerate and just aired. It's him <clears throat> looking into a subject 
the, oh, and he's like kind of does heavy research. And he on does it. heavy research and tells you the story of the research. And he did one on gun control, which is neither pro or anti guns, but it yeah. comes. I think it he comes to the realization of like we're never going to have gun control in this country. Like, like it, the way people want it. It's never going to happen. I think that's. By the way, I was drunk when I listened to it. But like, <laughs> he did one on he did one on the the Night Stalker where he's just like shit. Where you're like, oh, I would love to hear. So about it's just this. whatever he's kind of interested in or what's in the climate. Yeah, like I think. Trying. Yeah, but, or yeah, like something that it would ultimately suck one and a half hours out of your day where you're like, I can't stop listening to it. Yeah. It is such a good. Podcast. He's a guy who turns out a fucking act that can do like he's a guy who can turn material over and make yeah. it seem good like. I don't know how many albums he has out, but I think he has three or four, maybe. Yeah, there's, there was, you know, there were guys. But he was a guy who would like, like his, and his stuff would be good too. It wouldn't suck. Yeah, yeah. Bill, I, I'm always like, I'm always. Uh, I remember, I remember when uh, I was young. There was a comic who had like five albums, and I was like, and I was like, how do you already have five albums? He's like, man, I just write a lot. And then I was with someone that I could be listening to him. I was like, no. He's like, it's all shit that everyone's writing. It's like just hacky stuff. It's across yeah. the board. Yeah. It's nothing that somebody else couldn't tell. Right. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's like it's, switching. It's, my friend says, my friend Zach just kind of said, it's like, it's like switching menus with Applebee's and Chili's. It's the same fucking, like, yeah, no one's going to notice. It's different. Like, uh, you know, can I tell you what I'm obsessed with? Um, I got into this, like. I got into this spiral in my head of like where you figure something out and then you go, wait, did I just figure out a key ingredient to, to pop culture and comedy? So like Ace Ventura, uh, uh, Bruno, um, uh, uh, Borat, Dane Cook, right? Mm -hmm. There are things that were so big that young kids adopted their sayings as part of their personalities. It was something they did to be funny to their friends at school. Because it's referential, and then it stops being referential, and it's just in, like, the ether of, yeah. like, a group of people. Yeah, yeah. and so like, so, like, the Borat's probably the most... Ace Ventura for my generation... Oh, that I remember that... I bet if I watch it now, I'd still fucking laugh my ass It's off. hilarious, but what happened was a lot of guys... I think I'm stealing off of a... Uh, of uh, Adam Carolla quote, but he said, girls don't like f guys who are funny. Girls like guys who can do a good Ace Ventura impression. And that was the, what would happen was hacky dudes who were like big meatheads would could do that. They would he... just do an a all righty then. Yeah. That was their go to <laughs> every fucking guy that was just shy of being a sports center broadcaster but had the build and physique for sports center yeah but no person was this like when you were in like college and shit college or? when i was yeah. in college really i met a guy i met a guy in uh who came up to party with us, uh, us from in new york who was went to florida who was my one of my friend's best friends and they're like this guy's funny bert this guy could be a comedian and I was like, really? And they're like, he is the funniest guy out of fraternity. And he sucked. And he all he did was Ace Ventura impressions. All he did. All righty then. Yeah. That's what she said. <laughs> How fucking irritating and is that? And I, I was like, is that what everyone finds funny? <sighs> and he's good looking, big build. So he's like kind of like a... Oh, fuck. Like, like, no, and I don't want to say alpha, but like a kind of a guy who stands out in a crowd. Guy who stands out in a crowd. And I remember being on the rooftop of my apartment in New York. And I was earnestly looking for fun funny like i was earnestly trying to looking be, at what he was doing yeah in life in everything i was doing and then watching oh, well, he, yeah this guy destroy on this rooftop destroy with all righty then oh miss saddlebag you really did you fucking this has been sitting in there for a while i feel, Dude. Like, I feel like it's been stewing in the pot a bit bro so the, <laughs> I, <laughs> can like, i tell you like because you're like this is probably 15 years ago and you seem mad right now i was so irritated that he was killing and everyone's like you got to try stand-up he should be a stand-up right bert and i was like i was like no he, he doesn't have what the thing the thing that you need like no you he can't. lacks any <clears throat> like any sense of self any introspection any <laughs> like i was <laughs> livid, so right livid at this fucking guy <laughs> And so, so <laughs> I have seen you this upset, dude, it, this trickles down into like, I've, I've lost my shit about this on stage. Cause when people say stuff like that's what she said and the crowd laughs, I go, no, he didn't come up with that idea. That's an idea that's commonly used. Uh, yeah. what drives me nuts is when There's people, a, there was a point where it was like, 
oh, that is funny when someone's like using it in this ironic way. But then that got beat to death. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I get why that's what she said could be funny after, like, in a reference thing. But it just got, all of that shit kind of gets overdone very quickly. Sliding yeah. into Mondays, like, like yeah. that that staleness of that yeah. drives me nuts. So last night I'm on the plane. Human face is something people do a lot. And they're like, said this to my human face. It, like, yeah. is a thing, oh. shit like that. And you're like, all right, let's, it's young. Okay. Oh. Was that a joke or was it? Yeah, or was this your like three AM coffee shop rant? Like it fucking Yeah. Yeah. And then and then uh and then last night on the plane I went like I'm obsessed with why people turned on Dane. I think it's cause like or, or Do you think it was the stealing thing? No. Uh uh-uh. uh. I think what most it people was, don't know about that. Most people I don't know. I that's what gave comics it a reason to turn. I figured out last night that he was so big, he was Borat. He was Ace Ventura. To so many young boys whose personality, who didn't have defined personalities and borrowed from Dane's act, they borrowed his act to, to help them figure out who they were or to be funny. And what they, they were, like. What they liked, yeah. how they dressed, their energy, and that when they outgrew it, they outgrew Dane as well. Okay. Like when they outgrew it, they looked at that as like, oh yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I used to say that. Yeah, it's the same way. Like Adam Sandler is that guy from my generation of like, like, and not as, not as a stand up, but as like a movie star. Like, yeah. God, I, I know. Like, he's just he was so funny. Like I remember, and I, and I probably look back at Waterboy now and still laugh my fucking face off. Yeah. You know, like I had a I have a group of friends who go, how about our? Yeah. Like that's their. That was yeah, their yeah. sense of humor. Yeah. Their sense of humor was to, I'm not explaining this properly, but their sense of humor was to copy Adam Sandler. That's yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Like, you're like, yeah, this is where I get it. And then you're like, they, there's, there's a group of guys over at that side of the bar that are doing that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, and so I think that I'm, I'm like, I'm obsessed with not getting caught into that, like not getting, like not getting Being trapped. a trope, kind of, yeah. Or being the thing like, uh, like, I'll never be as big as Dane. I don't. That that's and no one's ever. It's never going to happen to anyone ever again. Ever. Yeah, it's that's, like well, that happens like once every twenty years. It's not, now it's Kevin Hart and then yeah. yeah. But like, but like I, I'm so fascinated by the rise and fall. And I, I say fall. You know, valleys. Think, uh, There's yeah, peaks and valleys. Yeah. Of like why, how he could be the biggest comic in the world ever. And then go to a place where like he's m- mocked in movies, like in Step Brothers, the uh, the guy goes uh, goes. Oh yeah, honey, we got to go see Torgasm. Oh, he's always like Dane Cook, pay per view, twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, it's how so, he can go it's from so funny, <laughs> but like yeah, like that's like they make him a douche, and that's like an example they give to like. And yeah, Adam Scott's character does that, and they're like, oh yeah, that's something a douche guy would like. Is yeah, yeah. I'm blown away by that. How deep that is interesting, yeah. Like what goes into? Because I I have friends now that are are arguably on that path that Dane was on. Um, they have like like some massive successes. In yeah, like yeah. like uh, like, and I go, how do you avoid not being? How do you avoid the valley? Yeah, like or is that just part of the fucking race? I mean, I think everyone thinks that to a degree, right? Like, there's like always hot hotter shit like you have like bigger moments but i think part of the difference now i think is like so dame was famous like at his peak was like what eight years ago maybe oh, 10 or 12 i it, would probably say at his peak probably like 10 10 okay so that was he was the the irony he's the first guy to use facebook or myspace like crazy right yeah uh now it's gotten so specified you find your group so your valley Maybe like maybe a little higher, and 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 your peak may be a little shorter because you find these groups of people more more niche nichely than you or nichely. I don't know what the fucking word is. I th- this is why I would think now that gets different because like you know you're you're fairly mainstream act, right? Like yeah. you would say that, yeah. But you also have this very specific group of hardcore fans, like so. You, I think you have like this. <clears throat> however many fans and then you have a people peripherally who know you a bit like in a more pop culture sense and then you have your people who download you every week and listen to this podcast every single fucking so i think 
part of it is like that fall has changed because like people are finding their audiences in such a like a specific way now we're not casting as wide a net you know like now it's like it used to be like get on a tv oh, show that's a now good it's point. like create your podcast like that's a good point you're his you're that's his mate this is a theory you know no, like his yeah, net yeah. was so broad insane because he got famous off of myspace which was the you know and uh, like it's interesting the parallel of myspace is fairly parallel to dane and that like they were both these huge fucking things and then have like dropped off well myspace is gone dane is still gonna play theaters for the rest of his life yeah I'm he's sure. still by the way i say I, I, all i'm I, he's I, I, not I as famous yeah. as he I, i'm not trying i'm not trying to slam dane i, I never would i don't do think that. i don't think you are but yeah. like and dane makes more money on the road than i make so he's, his valley is my peak it, but i will say that his peak i mean i guess i guess it's like look at amy her peak and then you go to her valley look at like lena dunham dude People fucking hate that woman. Yeah. How do you avoid, like, is it is it is that just natural to human nature is to find something precious and then destroy it? Yeah, well, it's fucking, yeah, everybody gets sick of shit. Uh, you know, like, there's like, I love a ton of comedians. There's like two I'll probably never get sick of watching. Yeah, like, I think people yeah. just get sick of shit and sick of people, you know, like, and I think, Part of it's like people overstep, like they get like so fucking famous and all of a sudden they have an opinion on whatever thing, you know, yeah. and then like they're like, all right, fuck off. Like, you know, you're here to tell jokes or I like your TV show. Like, don't yeah. fucking like tell like you can. It is your right. You have a platform. But I think that's the thing that like brings people down a little bit sometimes and up to it, you know, depending on who you are and how you do it. But uh yeah, I think they fuck it. Like that's like a know your audience thing too. You know, I don't fuck. I think people just get like you once you start venturing out of the thing you do that you do well, like be it stand up. Like Dame was, I'm not a huge fan of his act, but I remember liking Harmful was swallowed a lot, and like so there was a point where I was like he is a very good comic, and this was before I started comedy. But I did think he was a great comic, like no bullshit. And I probably fantastic. still listen to that album and laugh a lot. That speak and spell bit, I think of it now, and I think it's so fucking funny. Dude, I, I watched him. I will, I'll just say this very tightly. I watched him before he blew up, and I it was a, it's today today like just it's some of the hardest I've ever laughed. Yeah. And but then he made those movies, right? Yeah. You know and they weren't like I'm not trying to shit on him, but they weren't great movies, you know. And like I think you know people are like, well, maybe like you know you take a risk. And you're supposed to, but maybe you don't knock it out of the park like the thing you do really well. Yeah. So people are like, well, I guess this is the thing he does. You know, like maybe your white, your net doesn't cast even wider. And that's looked at as a failure, which making a movie is not a fucking failure. You know, like, no, yeah. People shit on things all the time, but I don't. Getting to that point is fucking insane. It's like. I couldn't imagine it. Yeah. Well, it's like you fuck. Like you've had what? Two TV shows. I've had a lot of TV shows. Yeah. Who's there, you think anybody ever think you were, like when there were people like were like you're never gonna get one I'm sure yeah oh. yeah you know and so you're a success even if they fail there's still a success that they get done in some regard you know maybe they're not yeah. a massive hit the just being I remember saying but then I think they maybe like see I told you you wouldn't like this is how far you can go you this is the thing you do well so it's like because everybody wants you to do something else after stand up yeah like, yeah there's like it's like I'm not good at that like I tell my manager that all the time like you should act and I'm like. Okay, well, let's find an acting class. Like, because I'm not yeah. just going to go out and fucking shit the bed. Oh, I'd rather just go out and shit the bed. Really? Oh, I fucking acting classes suck dick. Yeah, but I, I'm sure they do, but I'm not interested in doing things poorly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. And that, I, well, I, I've that acted, is a thing that can make you better if it's a good class. I've acted before. I don't, I don't personally enjoy acting. Like, it's not, it's not my, it's not my passion. Like, like yeah, I like, I mean, like, I love doing stand up. I love doing stand up. Yeah, I like hosting. I really like hosting. That's not so really? silly. Not uh, like not doing reads or host or like, but I like, I loved, I really I did enjoy that what I did for travel channel, like, like just being getting Bert. to be you. Yeah. yeah. I love being Bert. Like, Hey, we just want Bert to be Bert. I love that. I love that in every respect. Cause that's what I'm good at. Like <clears throat> I look at like yeah, uh, people respond to your personality. Yeah. Like I watched, I watched, I watched uh, Mark, Mark, uh, Mark Wahlberg and, um, in, uh, it's all about the money. No, it's all, all about the money. All the money in the world. It's about the kidnapping of Paul Getty, the young Paul Getty the third. Oh, I don't know it. Paul Getty the third got kidnapped 
Uh, it was Gettys were the big the mobster family. Yeah, they, they owned everything. They, yeah. Or they were the richest family in the world. Oh, so they're not they're, they're like just like a wealthy family. They're not like mobsters or something. No, no, like no. That. They they were wealthiest family in the world. He, uh, I think it was he uh, found oil in Oklahoma and then uh, I don't know. It's I've, I researched a lot of this last night because I was obsessed with. The I fall Gettys. down into rabbit hole. It was like sometimes like. I'll get into I'll find something oh. on YouTube and then I get into these weird fucking I got obsessed with a uh, not obsessed but I like started researching like like hate groups really quickly because I saw a Vice news story and I was like these people are fucking crazy and like how they're trying like it's fucking nuts what these people believe it's fucking yeah. like like almost calm like if I pitched it like if I could make it not about hate it'd be like a really funny fucking movie <laughs> But like they're fucking. Yeah, if you're a white supremacist, go fuck yourself. I uh, <laughs> like. I don't. Care. They're not a fan of yours anyway. Yeah, I know. I they're not half it. of me. They love. I love like, it. I, I love don't know. It. You know, like cause you get so much fucking hate from everywhere. Like, oh. oh, I fucking that when I did that Conan thing and the Fieri thing went crazy. Yeah, a guy messaged me. Mediocrity is my god. Which and it was the scariest fucking thing. He said, "Mediocrity, mediocrity is, is your god." Is your because I did that thing where I just say guy fieri's not such a bad guy and i did that ridiculously like and he was like mad like i felt threatened you Wait, know so don't, like don't do the bit don't do the bit you don't have to do the bit but this was what if i just pulled out a mic stand right now this was the <laughs> bit that i felt I, like one of the bits that i fell in love with you for because i was like because what is great about comedy is when you see someone who you assume is going to have a take on something one way and you realize the turn is the best that yeah i call it the turn when people have like yeah yeah well they're not what you expect they're yeah. not what you expect and there is a part of you that is this portland brooklyn uh alternative yeah, yeah for sure yeah uh softer uh kind of anti-establishment liberal all of those things yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and the bit is one of my favorite bits and you and and you don't have to do it but like it's i'll set it up and then you just but it's basically why does everyone shit on Guy Fieri? Yeah. And, and, it's, and I just list a bunch of reasons why he's a good person. And then like the, the, the trope, this goes back to the ether thing. Like you're all righty then kind of thing is like people think they're funny and this isn't how they do it in stand up. They're like, Oh, what am I Guy Fieri with spike tips? You know, like yeah. that kind of referential bullshit. And I was like, that's not the worst thing in the world. You know, yeah. like, and so then, then the bit is just me being like, enraged for four and a half minutes yeah. it's it's a great bit but there are people that they get fucking mean and sca say scary shit sometimes yeah like, and you're like it's, i'm talking about guy fieri yeah yeah like, and you like you know him right like yeah. he's it, a really sweet guy yeah and that's what but he is probably that person <clears throat> too dude he's he's a and, 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 <laughs> and a little bit a little bit of there's a man <clears throat> There's a little bit of Guy Fieri in every single person. You think if so? A hundred percent. If you allowed, if you <laughs> gave the keys to the kingdom to any man or woman in the same pacing at which he was given the keys to the kingdom, yeah, you, we'd all turn into Guy Fieri. Oh, for sure. I get like, oh. I finally have like status on my airline miles and I'm like when I don't get upgraded I'm like this is fucking bullshit gotta sit back here with all this trash like I get so like you know like and then you're yeah. like I like absolute like yeah like you get so much it stops being like a thing you know? oh yeah he I, I've worked with him a few times uh, like doing events and stuff is that I've, like, I've worked with him in the, with the, at events uh, I worked with him um, I was on guys grocery grant games as the probably the most was it fun uh no it's the reason i stopped doing television <laughs> <laughs> isn't that crazy I, I, in in that moment is me tammy pescatelli and lonnie love and when the three of us we were all competing against each other when the three of us were hanging out in the in the trailer bullshitting and gossiping we just doing like a comics kind of thing hanging yeah. out with three comics it was the greatest fucking it was awesome we're in southern we're in northern california it's raining we're hanging out it, it, things are running slow we're just bullshitting but when i got on set you know you're gonna get a check at the end of the day and all this kind of no stuff. no yeah. it was going to charity we were all going oh that's, all cool. the that's even to better yeah. <clears throat> and but when i got on set there were so many things about and i said it to this guy this guy poor guy i met him at uh 
I met him at uh, Opie and Anthony. And he was like, hey, I, I produced this segment for Guys Grocery Games. And I was like, oh. He goes, I hope you had fun. I said, well, it's the reason I don't do television anymore. He's like, what? I was like, yeah, that there was, there is this, it was, it was just a part of chasing fame. It was like, why am I doing oh, this? Oh, okay. so that I, was the straw that broke the camel's back. For me, I was like, what am I, am I trying to be famous? Like, do I care about fame or do I, um, am I a comedian? Yeah. Like, do you care about like creative or like, do I, yeah. Do I care about making something great or do I just want to be plugged into a bunch of like, uh, Whose line is it anyway? Like just hey guys, and it's comedian Bert Kreischer. Yeah. Or do I want people to go? Because and they're responding to your celebrity and maybe celebrity not and no talent per se. Yeah. And that's an interesting thing because we all need it a little bit. You know, like if you're an entertainer, you do need it to like pay bills so you have a nice like afford to take care of the people you want to take. Yeah, care of. yeah. I was having that epiphany myself. Like I was like, how much of it do I? I mean, I want all of it. Like we all yeah. want as big as it is, as it can possibly get, but like. Then you're also just like, like you want to not really care. fame is like weird. It's like it's I think that doesn't it only ex- it exists in moments, you know, like yeah. And then it's just gone, you know. Like how many people are like the biggest deal in the world, and then you can't see a fuck, can't find them doing any fucking thing, you know, like yeah. And I, they become like those kind of cultural punchlines and shit. Like when you watch, the, someone made a joke about uh, it's a scary thing. Tara Reed, yeah. Uh, at oh, the, on the beach in Hawaii two days ago, they're like, "What was that you? girl? That fucking this?" I was talking, I was saying to this, I was talking to this woman. I befriended her fucking child. Uh, I don't know how this kid's maybe like four years old, and for some reason, just saw you like hanging out and just kind of goofballing. I don't know. Me and the kid hit it off, yeah. and, <laughs> and then my daughters thought it was funny that a kid liked me and yeah. my daughter's friends and so we all started met, having fun just fucking around the beach woman comes up to me says what do you do i said i'm a comedian and she says should i know who you are and i was like nah she was like and then who's this guy my buddy produces movies she goes wow you're like a real hollywood like a-listers huh and i was like no not even close she goes the closest i ever got to famous was what's that girl she's a fucking wreck what that girl that was a drunk friends of paris hilton and i was like oh tara reed She's like, yeah, yeah. She's like, now she's like a B-list, D-list actress. And I was like, wow. There was a point that if you had met Tara Reid, you'd be like, oh my God, it's Tara Reid. You're so fucking famous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and, and she's were, probably a decent, you know, like. She's a really decent person, I would assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's it. People are so ready to shit on things. It's oh, fucking. And the world I, is filled with poison. Like, dude, and they just. And I, as much as a leftist as I am, I do think this uh, kind of thing came from my side of the coin a lot of the time which is like where it became valid to have a shitty opinion about people like your negativity like tearing something down was like like in the pop culture sense i'm i mean this like people like oh isn't he fu- oh what am i gonna go see a fucking jj abrams movie yeah, like yeah. or like oh fuck, michael bay it's like yes like michael like michael bay's movies aren't like poignant but they <laughs> they're fucking fun like i'm like i like you know, like they're poignant yeah you know, you're know, like you know like well, that's like an easy thing from the like i think that is a thing that gets shitty and that woman is doing that with the terror the, well it's the guy fietti yeah it's uh, yeah. the guy fietti and she's like she's a drunk you know what that is it's like a mental sickness yeah. at the end of the day like so you're like you know like fuck you lady yeah, yeah. and then here you're like you're raised that this sweet little four-year-old's gonna be probably turned into a little spoiled shit you know <laughs> I'm fucking oh god i fucking hate how people are ready to just throw around things without thinking about it them. but it's it's the and thing, i do it too i'm not like trying to exclude myself from it but i got into this moment on that show where i went oh i'm putting myself in the ethos of hey i i'm a guy i want to be famous and then right after that i did another show i won't because i think you can figure out who the person is but I did another show where it was comedian based I, i'll just say it it was fucking uh goddamn comedy jam it was comedian based, and then they would have people that weren't comedians do it, which kind of rubbed me wrong. Yeah, like the whole premise was it's Comedy Central comedians singing songs, and then they're doing like, a bit about like, doing what? a bit. And yeah. it's a fun show too. It was a fun. As, Josh is a yeah. He's a. We it, did New Faces the same year, and we were both like, "We're not going to make it." Like, dude, and then it was you, the greatest time. But then you would see. I did it at Outside Lands last year. It was fucking awesome. You'd see celebrities doing it. And you're like, oh, you're just chasing the ball. You're chasing the wheel. Yeah. You're do- you need to be on something. You got to be on something. You don't have a passion about about t- 
telling a good story. Fame is your passion. Yeah, fame yeah. is your passion. And I got so confused, and I got I got ass hurt because I was a part of, in in that in that treadmill too of like, and then I started going nothing. Like they'd be like, "Hey, do you want to be a guest host on dot dot dot?" I go, "Nope." And then I'd be like, "I don't want to do any of that. I want to do what's." I was like a purist. I want to do stand up. I want to do my podcast. That's it. I'm uh-huh. done with television. I'm fucking done. Now, part of me is like, I wouldn't mind a series. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't mind. <laughs> Would you a act game or show host? I'm, a th- I'm making something. I heard a really interesting quote by this guy Gary V the other day. Okay. Um, Gary V. I don't know. Gary V. I'm gonna pull it up. So yeah. you, oh, I don't. Know. Oh, I have internet. Is this that Vanderchuck guy? Or like, Gary Vanderchuck. Yeah, Gary yeah, v. yeah, yeah. I, I follow him on Instagram. Yeah, and he said something. So I always look at things as from a consumer. Like I always look at things as a fan, right? So Me like, too. I'm a fan first. Even like when I'm doing things like this, sometimes I'll like like sit back if it's like a round table and a bunch of comics are bullshitting. Yeah, I'm like, aren't these fucking people so funny? Oh, like, like I do that. Like I forget to be present sometimes when I'm like, dude, I doing on, a podcast or something. I get on text threads with guys like uh, Todd Glass, and I'm such a fan of his that I don't know how to reply to him sometimes. Yeah, I get I get fucking yeah. I'm like, like <laughs> I wish I could have someone reply to this for me. I'm gonna I gotta find. I want him to say it. Because it was such a great quote. No. It was about your parents. <laughs> but like Gary Vee is an interesting guy because... I don't know anything about it. I think he's like he's a, a, is he like a motivational guy. That's I, the only thing I know about I him. I lost the, if that's right. the flair for motivational guys uh, when Kyle sp- ceased to become a motivational speaker. He's a motivational speaker? Oh, yeah, and a successful one. Really? Yeah, and, and I then I, as soon as that happened, I went, oh, yeah, okay, this isn't... Uh, there's no real so, so, yeah like you have to you don't really know anything yeah. what's well, like it's Bargazzi has like the funniest bit ever about that is just like doing some corporate event and it's him and a motivational speaker and Nate's like the funniest person in the world he really is and his motivational speaker they hire like summit Everett uh, summited Everest and he's just like yeah, because that's relatable to people who are trying to park the closest to the building. <laughs> you, know, like, yeah. you know, like it's one of those things of like, yeah, like that guy accomplished something, so he's a motivated person. Maybe he's gonna find like, yeah. Like, how about like Susan lost fifteen pounds? Why don't we start with an attainable move? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what she the? would do it for a hundred bucks, and you wouldn't be on any goddamn money. <laughs> that is fucking. Yeah, the, I lo- the 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 shine of motivational speaker kind of fell off me because I was like. I know Kyle Cease. I've known him for a very long time. I know how broken he is. Oh, and I, is he? Really, well, I mean, I, I don't mean that in like a shitty way, but he, I know a, that he doesn't have the answer. What was answer. his big thing? He Comedy boot camp. Okay. So he did comedy. And he was a stand-up, right? And then like, was he in a movie? Was he in like 10 Things I Hate About You? He was a slow clapper in 10 Things I Hate About You. So I, I, I'll break it down. Okay. And this is why. Was he a guy who got hot early? So he did, he was in 10 Things I Hate About You, was a stand-up. One of those guys that, like what we were saying earlier, I wish there were guys that were like, what What got you into comedy? Uh, I just wanted pussy. Like, I don't really, I didn't really have a sense of self. Like, I wish there were more people There's like that. There's a little bit of that, I think, in a lot of comedy. Like, the sense of self thing, I think, I don't think we talk about it because we try so hard to find a personality yeah. and a voice. But a lot of times I wake up and I'm like, I don't even think I know who I am a lot. I, of, oh, like, I woke up that way this morning. Yeah, yeah. Like, I just like, I don't know. Like, how do I feel about this without an opinion? Being yeah. Like, being it being presented to me that way, but keep going. Sorry, I didn't mean to no, 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 no. All I've done is interrupt you this entire podcast. We've been doing it's that's how I think that's what these are, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, that's I think someone goes, uh, let your guests talk. I go, hold on, it's not like an interview, it's two people hanging out, yeah. Like, and this is how we talk, we in bullshit. The green room. yeah, 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 yeah. And so, he was in 10 Things I Hate About You, he was one of the guys. If you asked him, so what got you into comedy? Oh, it was my passion at a young age. The teacher would let me get up at the end of a, in class because I was so disruptive. And she'd give me five minutes. So I'd craft a five minute, which is kind of a, I don't know if that's Kyle's story. Uh, that's not Kyle's story per se, but that yeah. is the bullshit horseshit. Like yeah, you, could sm- you could smell it coming off of routine it. that every guy yeah. that w- wants to have a story, a backstory, that's their backstory. Yeah, yeah. And so like, but he would say he was a child prodigy in stand up. I know he said that. What? And, yeah, and so <laughs> okay. I'm oh, sorry. So, keep going, but uh, I'll I'm, come I'm back. not, I'll I'm come not back shitting on Kyle. I'm just telling you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But like, he it, would definitely yeah. sit here and go, "I was a child prodigy. I was. He definitely was. He definitely. He was doing it. He his story mirrored uh, Jim Carrey's story. Okay. So everyone, I think sometimes comics that 
lack sense of self when they tell you how you got into comedy they simply reflect guys they admired what their story was and i think that's what kyle was doing a tad bit if it was not indeed his own path then then that's what it was happening okay so did a did a half hour on comedy central and i think had panic attacks and leading up to it and then use the internet the way dane did and when they did stand up showdown one year he just simply st- i would i would argue stopped focusing on comedy at all and started focusing on internet votes and so for a solid chunk of his career he not chunk i mean like a solid 2 months he got everyone in the world to vote that he was the greatest stand up on in on comedy central and he, everybody who watched that show or what or was involved yeah yeah and he won he was he came as the number one comedian of comedy central when in fact he was not had he not rigged yeah the keep votes. people campaign for shit yeah all and, the like even in just like regular like said it like just like in alt weekly newspapers and cities and stuff you know like yeah. so guys going we did it with podcasts all of us did it hey guys rate review and subscribe leave a comment and yeah then, yeah i've and been then guilty you, of that kind of behavior yeah, for and, sure yeah and it's part and that's what kyle did and then i don't I, I don't think was i don't think he was a prolific stand-up in my opinion he was a very talented stand-up there are guys that are exactly like him that i won't say on this mic, there are guys that are exactly like him. I acts identical to him that today that are very successful. Oh, really? Yeah. Where where I go, that is what Kyle was doing. Uh, it's when you pretend that you're coming up with it all on the top of your head, and you improv. You pretend you're improv. You have like bullet points that you work loosely in, kind of. Uh, uh. Yeah. It's it's like mock improv. It's yeah. like you get up there like you're I, faking spontaneity. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't. I, I didn't. I didn't prepare anything. How am I going to do this? Oh, look at the girl right there. Yeah, and that's their thing. They do every time. Yeah, they they, they fake spontaneity. Fake spontaneity. Yeah. Yeah. Kyle was fake spontaneous. Spontaneous. Yeah, yeah. and uh, which is an incredible tool to use. Like I like I've seen people do it, and it always, almost always gets a reaction if you can. It's so- s- set it up that way. And then make people think like this guy is like flying off, yeah, yeah. And so he became number one comedian of the year, and then number one comedian of the year. It was like it's just a weird title. It was it, it was huge, but it, but what happened? I think was Comedy Central was like, all right, we watched your act. There's it's you're not better than Mitch Hedberg or Lewis Black or yeah. David Tell or Dane Cook. All those guys who were like really popular. All these guys that were really pop- popular at the time who didn't campaign but came in a close second. Yeah. And they're like, all right, this has been rigged. And then he did the show that I did with Mo and Donnell and Amy. He was on it. So I, I ha- happened to witness a little bit of his spiral. Like I happen to be, and by the way, I'm friends with Kyle. I like Kyle a lot. I don't. Yeah. I'm not, I hope I'm done, it doesn't sound like I'm shitting on him because I don't dislike Kyle, but I'm just trying to be candid about what happened to him. Yeah. And, and like I think and I think yeah. he'd be candid about this. Yeah. Is, does he not do stand-up at all anymore? No, he doesn't do some motivational speaker, which we're going to get to. Okay. By the way, this is one of my time sucks, Dan Cummings. Yeah. If you could do Dan Cummings, if you could do just a time suck on Kyle Cease. Or on I motivational would. speakers. That's a weird fucking thing. Keep going. So, so he... So he uh, He's not drawing on the road because he didn't really. He isn't really the greatest stand-up yeah. of the year. So he didn't really pop. He didn't pop. He just. It was just like you know, and and it was a fake pop. And so he does a show with us, Don Ross to this day. But this was Kyle was all about branding. So what Kyle did was he made hats for. It was a competition show. It was a reality show competition show. He made hats for every week he made 13 hats for 13 episodes we're going to shoot they're all blue and it said week one week two week three week four and he wore the first week he had a hat on that said week one and donna rollins hated him immediately and as kyle walked up to me red grant and donnell sitting on these steps of a house with a hat that said week one donnell said that's that's right son you are the week one <laughs> <laughs> And, by the way, Donnell Rollins might be the funniest human I've ever been. And, and and Donnell says, if I were you, I'd just take those numbers off and just leave a hat that says weak because you're weak, son. And Donnell goes, and Kyle goes, I think they spell it differently. 
it's not spelt the same way. And he goes, not in my neighborhood. Weak is weak. <laughs> and, and then Kyle, this is, by the way, I have to say that this is. I wish I had more of that, like that kind of quick riff stuff. I wish I did too. Yeah. Donnell, so Kyle then, uh, this is one of the most fascinating things ever. In that first episode, Theo Vaughn, won immunity but in winning immunity he got to pick someone to kick off right so chris fairbanks comes up to me and he goes he's the fucking funniest personal like he is one of the fucking most amazing guys yeah he comes up to me and he goes i'm afraid theo's i don't know theo very well i'm afraid that i'm gonna get kicked off and i can't i need this money so what we found out in that first week is once you got kicked off you weren't guaranteed the money but we were getting like 14 grand an episode and you needed to stay on the show so every episode you did you got more money so it was like game checks it was a it was a game yeah it was game yeah. checks and so i said to chris fairbanks goes what should i do and i went just go up to because it was theo vaughn was going to pick donnell rollins and chris fairbanks to vote off those were the two people and then our moms picked whoever left no one was gonna pick. and it was being chris fairbanks because his dad came it was all our moms but his dad came okay and 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 so his dad was like it was all moms and chris fairbanks dad because i think chris fairbanks mom had passed i think and so i said to chris fairbanks i said go up to theo and ask him not to vote you off i guess and he was like do you think that'll work i go well it can't hurt so if chris fairbanks went up to theo and he goes <laughs> Hey, would you would you not vote me off? And Theo was like, okay. And he was like, thank you. And then came back. He goes, he's not going to vote me off now. So now all of a sudden, it's Donnell and it's a fucking and and so Theo's like, I already told him, like, I'm not going to vote him off. It was the weirdest. <laughs> That's so fucking funny that it worked. It's so fucking funny. And they became really close after that because Theo was like, that was really cool that you said no, I would have voted you off. But yeah, okay, I won't vote you off. <laughs> what a weird. And then Kyle Cease became the person they were going to vote off. Now, Kyle's mom, I think, was going, had a sick, had a disease or something and couldn't make it. And so they had hired a stripper to play Kyle's mom as like a joke. And so none of the moms knew Kyle, what knew Kyle's on? mom. We all, they all knew Donnell and they voted Kyle off the first week. I was in the room with all of us when Kyle saw that he had 13 hats, right? Oh. Donnell Rollins had made fun of his 13 hats and he's still wearing week one and Don and they're like, Kyle, Kyle, you have to go home. And I watched it happen. Then the next day we went up to the desert to shoot promos for a show for this show. We went out like a million dollar promo shoot. Jesus. And Kyle had to go out knowing he had already been kicked off. And there was a weird spiral that happened that me and Amy witnessed of Kyle trying to it was it's just natural it wasn't it wasn't it was natural anyone would have had that spiral if you've been kicked off a show it's but a you're asked reaction. to come shoot promos it was just fucking weird and then he came up with comedy boot camp and doug stanhope because he was like I'm, i need money and so he said here's the deal comics if you give me a thousand dollars i will tell you everything i know about comedy and, and young comics would do that oh it's insane what you'll do to learn like yeah pre the, like this is a thing like i started before like podcasts were booming and stuff barely but like it was insane what like you thought you needed to know and what people could get away. Now everybody learns everything very quickly because it's yeah. all out there. But, and yeah. so and so he came up with comedy boot camp. I remember the day I first heard about it. Segura came over to my house for dinner. He was at the door and he had a, that fucking devilish smile he has. And I go what? And he goes, you don't know yet, do you? I said what? And he goes, come here. Sat at my computer, uh, clicked the you trailer. You don't know yet. What is clicked the trailer <laughs> trailer for fucking comedy boot camp. And he said, sit down. I hope you enjoy this. And I started watching it, and it was fucking ridiculous. I had never looked what, like, is he? It is. Soom, soom, Kyle Cease, number one comedian of the year. Soom, soom, top telling comedy of the year. Soom, soom. Comedy is, it's basically what he's doing now. It's it self-help. It's self-help. Comedy can be overcome. You can be the greatest comic in the world. It, the the what was the movie? That is so weird. That the that's secret. What he, the secret had just come out, and he was applying what he learned in the secret to this comedy boot camp. And and then I was like, holy shit! And, he, and then Segura once again said, "Did you enjoy that?" And I said, "Yeah." And he goes, "Wait, wait, wait, wait. Now read this. Click, click." And he clicked on Stanhope's letter to Kyle Cease, and in this letter, Stanhope basically oh 
dismantles Kyle Cease. Oh my God. Sidebar to this story, Kyle Cease on uh, the same day is in a hotel room. If you were going to pick someone to hurt somebody's feelings, <gasps> Doug Stanhope would probably be at the top of that list. Like, he's the funniest person. I've only met him once. I don't know him, but like, personality wise, just seeing him see that, like, oh. He, Kyle C, <laughs> this is a sidebar to this. Yeah. Kyle C is in a hotel room in, it doesn't matter, let's say Pittsburgh. He reads I'll be in the, Pittsburgh in two weeks. <laughs> he reads the letter Doug Stanhope's written, lays in his bed, and doesn't move for three days. For three days, he didn't eat. He didn't get out of bed. He lay in the most euphoric state. This is Kyle's words. The most euphoric state of self-realization, of, of empowerment. For three days, he laid in this bed. So that's where Kyle's, Kyle's a little out there, okay? Okay, yeah. And then he decided, I'm going to become a self-help guy. And he started, I think he started going to seminars. And by the way, I can't, like things that Kyle Cease is good at are are things self-help guys are good at. Like he's good at that shit. Like I, you can't, but however, like like watching his self-help stuff, I go, yeah, that makes sense. It, that makes sense. He's just good at, st- he's, he is good. He's a good thinker. Well, it sounds like if you're somebody who's good at like gaining internet, like, getting to win an internet voting contest without being the best comedian in the world, you probably have like practical, efficient mindset that would get like be applicable to problems. You know what I mean? Like this is how I sit down and solve a problem. Just turns out he wasn't like very funny. Like, yeah, 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 right, right, right. Yeah. Like, but like motivated, bizarre problem solver. Like he is a bizarrely great problem solver. He is, he's the inverse of what most comics problems are is that like a lot of people are very funny, but they cannot get shit done. He is the exact opposite. Yeah. He, and by the way, he was also very funny. Okay. Yeah. So like he was, I don't know his act, so I probably shouldn't have said he wasn't funny. No, 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 no. But he was, he was like funny. He was like, I don't think there was, there was no, I don't think it was stuff that you'd be like, Damn, he's writing from his heart. You Serviceable know? comic. Yeah. It was he was a Bennigan's. Yeah. I love like, Bennigan's. Yeah. yeah, I love Bennigan's. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cheeseburger. He's a he cheeseburger. worked at one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But like he is a bizarre problem solver. And in that world of of self-help gurus, that is super valuable. So like one yeah. of the things I saw him do, and this was I thought this is atypical, I think atypical Kyle C's is he does a seminar where there's a really big, successful uh, uh, motivational speaker there. And he's like the open, like the middle actor. I, I guess. I think they, I think he's like, yeah, I would imagine there's more. Yeah. There's probably like just more than one speaker. You got to have a warm up guy. And so yeah. And they and do it, that in that movie up in the air. That's like his site. Did you see that movie? Uh-uh. George Clooney movie? Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, it's fucking great. But like his side gig is he does those speaking engagements. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, yeah. So he's gonna do it. like he does one. And it's the whole fucking thing. You know, but yeah, I remember they. Yeah, he was like the the smaller build guy on one of the uh, yeah the speaking engagements. And so Kyle does this thing where he says it's about achieving a goal, and he one of the big guys is in the room when he said. He's right there. And I said to myself, uh, two years ago, I was going to get him on my podcast or get him on my show or get him in my, one of my live videos. And he p- flips a thing and he, and he, and it, it says, uh, uh, says, say the guy's name. So he says, Hey, so, and this is how you achieve a goal. Uh, Bill is, I'm Kyle Cease. And the guy's like, what? Hi, like looking around like, Oh, hi Kyle. And he flips it again and he goes, ask for your goals. And he's like, I would like you to be on my show or whatever. And the guy's like, okay. And then he goes, goal achieved. Like it's, it's a bizarre, like it's, I, I'm not doing it justice, but it's a bizarre way of getting a guy that's much bigger than him. That would probably pay him no mind. He focused his one event on getting that guy to co-sign on him to help get him to the next level. That's fucking crazy crazy and and you go that's kyle that's kyle's brain that's how his brain worked his brain is the guy that is that, fucking crazy and so so he's a very successful motivational speaker really very very his videos on facebook all go big they all go big and and i think he's wow. done a great amount of research on self-help stuff i think in you believe honesty, it's like he's being candid and fair. he's not like yeah I, well, I believe he's being candid. Trying to do the right, do this the right way. I think so, but I think there is a part of it that is the same way he approached comedy. And I, th- but my point is, 
going back to Gary Vanderchuk is I can't <laughs> oh, yeah. co-sign on everything Gary Vanderchuk says because I know Kyle Cease. So I know that I know that there's probably some guy going, "Yeah, but I grew up with Gary." Like, yeah, he was oh, a yeah, piece of sure. shit. But Gary, like, but this gets back to this. This all some people with, are the greatest guys that you grew up with. Where you're like, yeah. my, my buddy Hutch was a motivational speaker. My buddy Hutch is the guy I used to have a joke about getting a frisbee stuck in a tree and I was throwing a stick at it and Hutch goes, Var you gotta be real careful. I go, what? And he's like, stick slide but it'll go right down your throat. When you throw a stick up in the air, your mouth automatically opens. And if you're not paying attention, it'll go right down your throat. I was like, what? And he's like, happened to me twice. That's Hutch. Right? <laughs> but he's an insane salesman. He's an insane I know that guy. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, uh, by the way, once was a stick once was a bike flag. Do you know those bike flags? Yeah, yeah, when you were a thing? kid, yeah. Hutch was like, you know how when you were a kid, and once was a hammer. Once a hammer hit him on the head. So he was like, you know how you go. How many times is he throwing a frisbee? This guy needs to stop playing frisbee. Dude, I said this on stage one time, and everyone, I, and Hutch came to New York. I was with like DC Benny and Ben Bailey, and I was like, Hutch, I go just. Ben Bailey is one of the most underrated comics. So I just got to throw that out. He's so fucking, fucking funny. Great. Yeah. He's, DC Benny is one of the most underrated he's comics. He's funny, dude, too, yeah. And I, I said, don't know DC's act that well. With I you. said, yeah. I said, Hutch, how many times you get a stick caught down your throat? Because they had heard me tell the joke, and he's like, twice. Once happened with the hammer too, and I was like, and they were like, what? Are you fucking kidding me, dude? I'm not making any of this up. One time he was like, you know how you throw a bike flag in the air and watch it stick in the ground? My mouth definitely opens when I throw stuff in the air. It, all ours does. Yeah. By the way, look, everyone, right now, look up, <laughs> look up, and your mouth just goes, huh? And so, <laughs> wow, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, I threw a. Stub. That's such a funny observation, dude. It touches brain. Yeah. But that that brain, but I know Hutch, right? Yeah. So then in college, he was an insane salesman. He's an insane salesman because I think people see a guy who gets sticks caught in their throat, and they feel like he's not. He you never thought he was getting one over on you, so you trust him. You it's a likability, whatever the thing is. He's just a great. And there's something salesman. about owning it that seems candid and honest. I think like yeah yeah and Hutch. So Hutch, they'd fly him out. It is in college, and he'd give motivational speeches. And they were, I love you, Hutch. I hope you never hear this. But they were fucking. He'd give them to us when we were high, and you'd be like, "Huh, Bert? A man was walking through." This is the funniest thing I've ever heard. A like, man was walking through the. That's so potentially cemetery. funny. It's fucking insane. Oh yeah, he was walking through the cemetery, and he fell into a hole, and he struggled in that hole <laughs> for hours. Finally. He sat down and he gave up. And then he heard a voice. There's no use trying. Are you that man in the hole, Bert? And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> what the fuck? That's what he said? Yeah, that's what he said. I go, what? And, and people paid him money? And, and yeah, and pe but people. Well, I mean, the shit I say, people pay me no, money. No, but, so, like, yeah. but like, I remember one time, right when I started stand up, I came back to Tallahassee. This is the first time I came back to Tallahassee. We'd all graduated, uh, we had all left. And, but we all had, we had an apartment that one of our friends lived at in the place we all, Indian Village is where we all lived. Uh. And so there's a big uh, uh, townhouses. Our roommates, our old roommates still lived in our place. So we could crash there. And our friends still lived across the street from us. And a girlfriend, one of our girlfriends still had a place. So it was very like walking distance. It was, Everybody's it was, close. It was yeah. probably it was probably a hundred townhouses. It's a nice a little circle. town, Tallahassee. I was oh, just, great. I texted you when I was there. Oh yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And so one morning I'm, underneath the steps at Harper and Miles's place and Hutch comes over and he's like B man what's going on I was like nothing he's like How, how's comedy doing I go uh, okay he goes uh, you gonna stick with it I was like I think so he goes can I give you some advice and I said yeah and he goes and by the way I hate to say this but this is I'm literally sitting under the step going, what am I doing with comedy all my friends have jobs they all have nice I have things. same way same same fucking like forever and now I'm at that like twelve hundred dollar to fifteen hundred, like yeah, survivable but not money kind yeah. of. Yeah, yeah. Grateful Hutch, to have it, but like Hutch gave me advice that I still. It was the, a part of the advice that Dimitri gave me. He goes, "Can I give you some advice?" I go, "Of course." And he goes, "If you promise to not stop going after your goal, and you swear that you will never give up, you will achieve your goal." And I went, "I don't know about that, Hutch." I go, "Comedy's a little complicated." And he goes. Tell me something you want out of life right now. Right now, what do you want? 
Let go. This guy seems intense. He's no, he isn't, but he isn't. He's just fucking hilarious. Is he just a person who like kind of leans in to conversations Dude, and moments? Like, no, no, he just is. It's he's Hutch. He's like he sa- he doesn't I, seem bad. I don't no, mean no, when I say intense. I don't mean bad. I mean, no, he's like, not even intense. He's just, just is, like like just, if one of my friends came up to me and said, "Tell me a goal of yours." Right? I mean, why don't you just fuck off, Ian? Like, no, yeah, yeah, no. So we're sitting under the step, and he goes, "Tell me a goal of yours right now. What's something you want right now, today? Not in life, today. Today, what's something you want?" I said, "I want to get high," and he goes, "Do you promise to not give up trying to get high <laughs> until you get high?" I said, "I promise," and he goes, "Then, Bert." I promise you, you will achieve that goal. That's how easy this works. I go, really? And he goes, yeah. Reaches in his top pocket, pulls out a joint, and he goes, let's get high. And I went, wow. He goes, see how easy that works? He lights a joint. We both hit it. And he goes, give me another goal. I said, I want to get drunk. And he goes, you promise you will not stop? <laughs> and it was like the funniest little... So it's like the long st- running gag kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. So he goes, well, then let's achieve that goal. And we went over to the thing. We both got a beer, toasted. And he goes, let's say another goal. And I said, Hutch, I want to be... A working comedian and he goes then all you have to do is promise never to give up on that goal and I was like oh, I swear to God I literally it's that in a Winston Churchill quote Winston Churchill said almost the exact same fucking thing the only people who fail are those who quit and I I was like yeah if I just don't give up then I'll succeed Hutch is such There's a, a very true thing it's like yeah you do the thing they tell you you can't do yeah, yeah. but but the idea with that he was a motivational speaker and I, he got paid for it. No, I'm not shitting on Gary Vaynerchuk at all. No, yeah. yeah. I, it I, doesn't I read, seem I, negative. Yeah, yeah. I, I watch his videos. This is to get for a very long roundabout point. I watch we his, keep going back. Yeah, yeah I watch his videos. And there's a video he has, which defines the way I'm looking at the world right now. When you said, do you want to act? This is how I this, I'll see if I can play this. But this is the this is my mindset on entertainment business right now. Let's see if it'll play. Um, oh, fucking internet! The guy apparently didn't fix shit. <laughs> anyway, um, but that's my—that's the hard. That's my, the problem I have with motivational speakers is yeah. that I know Kyle, and by and so like yeah, the people can. I would argue the biggest thing you guys should be thinking about is tripling down on how you got here. Something I've been thinking about you, your bro, and other like the kind of top ten is everybody's now in a mad dash to monetize as they should. These are remarkably big numbers. I just don't think you're going away. My big thing now more than ever is how do you go way more back to the consumer? This is the moment more than ever to unmonetize and quadruple down on audience. Right. While it's underpriced. When you're the king of the hill, triple down on it. More. I, I would go back to Jake Paul 0.1 where it was just about the audience. Your whole world will be different. Audiences know they will never be tricked. Either you're doing it for them or you're doing it for yourself. Yeah. When you audit your fucking last two, three weeks and you think about how many hours you spent on what's for you, what's for them, it doesn't look pretty and it doesn't look pretty for any of the A-list right now in our world. So, cool. And I'm driven by the right thing. I get it. But I'm telling you that's where the secret is. I would argue the biggest so, thing you guys so- what he's saying is, yeah, you're gonna- is don't worry about money. Try to make right now. I believe we're in a place in this in the entertainment business where people are finding people they like and 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 signing up for them, becoming fans. Yeah, for the first time, like you said, you know, it's you're you're throwing out a smaller net. You're not yeah. just Dane cooking it where yeah. you thought a big net and you got everyone from MySpace. Yeah. and that's how he had to do it. Then, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, well, that's, yeah, yeah. But there's this that. We're making content. People appreciate. I know I appreciate free content. And so as a consumer, I heard this. Now, I'm going to use Dan Cummings as another example. Okay. But I found Time Suck. And I was like, I was like, dude, this is fucking awesome. And then I was like, I, I, th- I think I could be into a lot of what Dan does. But I couldn't find a ton of shit. Right? I could see his find a stand up. Yeah. It's like some of his podcast interviews. But I was like, I was like, oh, I, I could probably be into more shit. So in my head, I went, and this has been something I've been thinking about, is that guy Tony you met? My buddy Tony in Philly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's just making free content. So we're going to make a sitcom that's just free and make it. It's going to be like a lot of money. But tripling down on your audience and saying, 
Um, so if you like my podcast, I, I added a solo podcast. I okay. was like, here's a solo podcast. This is just all the shit I've Googled over the week. So I leave that page open with all the thumbnails. That's a fun way to yeah. do and it. So yeah. I just go through all the shit that I like that. I, it's usually just hip hop shit. Or it's going to be a lot about the Gettys this week, <laughs> but I think about yeah, you think about like people who ever search your internet history, like yeah. And so all the like I used to do it as a fun goof where I'd go, let me see your browser, I want to see the stuff you've Googled, and then you ask someone, so tell me about uh, Guy Fieri, and you're like, oh, I got into a little spiral on you know yeah, dot yeah, dot yeah, dot. Yeah. I'm researching a bit. Here's the thought. But this also keeps people on if people like see what you're doing. It may they, they may spark interest in things that are valuable. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's also it's it's a great way to write. So for what for me, I Google it. I have independent thoughts while I Google it, and then when I sit here and I look at the stuff I've Googled, I go, "Oh yeah," and I sizzle it down to the thought I had that would interest me, interested me, and so yeah, and, and so anyway, so that, I, and that, and like where you're feeling after that is like an important yeah, that's, that's an interesting way to like and approach so, it yeah, and so I started thinking, well, what if you just d- triple down on your audience? So I'm doing that. I'm doing another project that I'm. I'm paying for, but in my head I go triple down on your audience. I could definitely get this monetized. This project already people are like agents and managers are like, oh, we can get a sponsor for this immediately. And I went, mm, it's only twenty five hundred bucks to shoot an episode. I think I'm good. I'll pay for it. That for me, you I go own it and have it your way, and, and just and, and 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 just let it make sure it's free. Make sure that that you're never going to trick an audience. It'll be that's on what your he side said or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That, so the audience goes, wait, is Bert just getting a paycheck? Is that is that just a paycheck, or is he creating content he's very passionate yeah. about? Yeah. And so then that I do something's burning, which uh, is a little more complicated, but it's I think something's burning is just the purest form of me fucking hanging out with comics. What is that? It's, I, it's a cooking show that I that. Once again, triple down. I pitched it to Bill Burr. He liked it. Yeah. He greenlit it. He paid for it. It's Bill was just like, just make thing. it. Y'all think yeah. comedy. Let's just do it. Bill and Al. Let's just do it. So we did first episode with Bill and Tom. We did uh, we did one with uh, the Sklar brothers. We did one with uh, Fighter and the Kid. We did one with Michael Rappaport and uh, Whitney Cummings. We did one with Shoot. Uh, so what? What you guys are just bullshitting and like- just I make a f- it's a horrible cooking show. Okay, I make a horrible <laughs> meal. I u- and usually that's the jumping off point of mocking how bad I am. Yeah, of like it's. I think I'm. A, I have thick skin. I'm an easy target. I can, and it, for a comic, it's easier to bust balls than anything. For sure. So. It's just my friends coming in and fucking around with me. And so, but it's but it's free content. And I believe what he said, Gary Vee said, is triple down on your audience and really just say, hey, I'm going to make a bunch of shit. I hope you, f- not only, I, I hope you like some of it. I hope you like all of it. But more importantly, I, I hope that I give you so much free shit that I become someone you want to talk to your friends about. And you go, oh, do you know? Like, that's like, like the, that's like, like dude, how, ma- how many times have I reached, have I said Dan Cummings? Yeah. Th- I'm doing this because that's free. I got it for free. I liked it. I liked it so much. I'm telling everyone about it. I hope that I can do that for people. I hope I create content where they go, have you seen Burt Kreischer? Have you seen the, the TV show he did? Like, well, he's coming. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I hope. Dude, you got to watch his TV show. You got to watch Something's Burning. You got to see his podcast. His solo podcast is great. He does one thing in his man cave that it's just him. He's paying for all the episodes. He's doing a scripted project that I don't know where they're getting the money for this, but there's no branding. There's no content. There's no there's no, uh, there's no paid advertising. advertising. Yeah. He's paying it and he's making it and he's giving it out for free. God, man. I fucking... So I, DIY. I, it's a very DIY approach. Like It is yeah. exact. It is exactly yeah. that. It's very... Yeah, it's pretty... So I think, and like, and I think, I think I'm not certain. I can't tell you Rogan's path, but I, I think Rogan's doing that. Where he just it makes seems like shit. he's got his. I mean, he's like. He I think like he he's a small take, empire. He's gonna take it to the next level. I yeah. think where he's going is the next level. Joey Diaz is the fucking king of that. He's like, dog. I got a finite amount of fucking time to do a finite amount of shit. He's got I, hustle, huh? Dude, I don't know Joey at all. Like, oh, are you serious? No, I've never met him. I've like I, like I listened to him on some podcasts. And he's just like, oh, this is the guy who like you would love. I would yeah. love to ha- hear you on Joey's podcast. I probably I, like I listen to that thing and it's like the sh- the stories he tells are fucking good. Say like, would you be up for eating a thousand milligrams of marijuana? No, no, I would not. No, absolutely <laughs> fucking not. Dude, one of the best uh, podcasts he ever did was with Owen Benjamin, where Owen <laughs> loses no. loses his shit and walks out. Really? He's just. I'm afraid I would do it. Like, I... It is so great. You watch him like. Start blinking, start rubbing his head, take his hat off, take a sip of water, lean back, 
few deep breaths and then stands up and walks out. <laughs> he just goes, I, I'm going home. He just doesn't Not say Not mad. No, just, just like, I'm way too, too fucking much. high. I'm way too high. Is he crazy? Who, Joey? Yeah, like. No, Joey just has a, an insane tolerance for marijuana. Okay. And so he gives. So keeping up with him is like a problem. No one's. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, okay. One person who can keep up with him, because he seems intense. Like intense, and he's high all the time. I guess right. He's in. He's intense. Yeah, he's intense. But he's is, and he's high. I think he's high all day. But there's. A, I think there's a maintenance high. Like a like a. This oh, is this how is I like get my, the my low level. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a. Oh, dog! I'm going. I'm seeing the devil's dick. Like. <laughs> He's fucking. He's one of my favorite people in the world. Yeah. Oh, I love. He's entertaining that guy. as shit. Like <sighs> my friend, uh, this great comic, Amy Miller. She fucking. I know Amy Miller. Yeah. We just did. We just drove back from Phoenix yesterday. We're doing a festival out there. I know Amy Miller. I just has she done the podcast? No, she was supposed to. How do I know Amy Miller? Maybe just hear her name. I mean, she's a pretty okay. active comic. Wait, what were you saying? I apologize. I but uh, she said she saw Joey at the punchline. We were there. We were both there for Sketchfest or something, uh, or Outside Lands. And uh, she was like, "It was the funniest fucking thing." She's like, "My face still hurts." Her and her boyfriend were like losing their shit, and because he would just do these things, he's like, "So I'm standing in class. And it's me, Petey." And he goes, "And he goes, oh fuck, Manny Ramirez was in that class too." <laughs> like he just like has these epiphanies in conversation, <laughs> and you just saying like horrible shit a lot of the time but apparently it's the funniest fucking thing he's ever seen what she was like she was saying like i haven't laughed that hard in so fucking long i'm so bothered that i can't remember how i know amy miller what was she on viceland what did she do on viceland she, i think she did flop house she was on last comic standing uh um, i liked flop house that was a good show she did yeah and so she was like so she was originally from the bay but she spent a lot of time in Portland too, so that's how I got to know her. I follow her on Twitter, and I and I yeah. feel like, I feel like with some people they go, oh, remember that tweet I sent out, like up up her non what up her non is that how you say it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's fucking regularly funny online. Dude, she's a fucking beast. Her half hours killer. Really? Yeah, the one they just did on uh, Netflix. Oh, nice. Yeah, I gotta watch that. Yeah. Um, I didn't. Uh, I don't think I. I, I haven't seen those stand-ups yet. Yeah, they're good. Yeah? They're good. Yeah. Oh, What's I like, saw... What am I kidding? I saw fucking Canaan's. Yeah. I must have just watched Canaan's. Yeah. Because they do those... Or whoever's these, first. These people who can do a killer hours and they get to do 30 minutes and just like throw all their hammers in a sack and just start hitting everybody. It's fucking... Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I must have watched whoever went first. I didn't know that... Joe List... I think I saw Joe Liston and yeah, and yeah I'm, I'm a white male so I only watch white males yeah so. I get it you know yeah, don't like, don't broaden your scope yeah, yeah. I was like oh women who wants it's, to see that it's a very it's like a I'm a very exotic treat to have in this <laughs> man cave <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, half of me is a very exotic treat yeah uh, no yeah it, but she was saying Joey like would just like like you know there's great comics that are funny and you can watch what they do and laugh a lot but like she was just like he was like just killing harder than and she was like it was offensive and hilarious and amy's like i think she went to berkeley you know she's a very educated bright left person yeah and i love her to death but fuck me run like she was just like i like it was so offensive but i almost felt bad but i was just so funny i just kept laughing and that's where you can go like oh. a comic like him can go it's like so so hard over the top i guess that you get like sometimes it's the stuff with joey where I, what I find funny in him is when he doesn't know he's telling you a joke. Like, I'm not saying like he he's unaware of it, yeah. but he's said things where you go, oh, that would be in my act immediately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have friends like that. Like he told me one time I was, I said, cause you know, Priscilla's a big dog. Yeah. He's like, uh, he, I mean, I remember where he was sitting when he said it. I remember like, and he goes, he's like, I don't know about Christ. I don't, I don't fucking like dogs. I said, really? He goes, it was my first week in this country. My first week, I got bit by six dogs. I said, <laughs> I said, he goes, I said, really? And he goes, what? Because like statements don't often open with my first week in this country. It's my first yeah, week yeah, in yeah, this yeah. country. I got bit by six so dogs. Funny. He goes, Burke Kreischer, the last dog that bit me actually Does he walked. call you by your full name? Oh, yeah. 
Well, actually, the last dog that bit me actually walked past me, turned around, came back and bit me. <laughs> like, man, fuck it. <laughs> and I was laughing so hard. And he didn't, I don't think he was trying to be funny. He was just telling you a story yeah. that happened in his life. But, you know, the first but time, like, he's not trying to do it like a bit. Like, maybe he's telling you like something dude, fun. Yeah. The first time I ever met Joey, sat down with him. It was in when we did the Death Squad Chronicles or Ice House Chronicles. It's me, Ren Azizi, uh, Joe, uh, and Joey and Joe and I want to say Al Madrigal and Al I think is like the funniest fucking person and Joe Joey sits down I've never met him but we we both had done Joe's podcast a bunch we were running in the same circles we just had never met okay and I said Joey I've heard so much about you I'm so happy I got, and I'd been on a car I've been in a car when someone had a speaker called him one time and he was very nice and he was like I said uh, I was with Red Band I go Tell him I'm in the car. Don't like. Yeah, that's like the fucking weirdest thing when people don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And Red Band's like, oh, Joey, uh, Burt Kreischer's in the car with me. And I had never met him. And he's like, Joey goes, the machine. Oh. And I was like, <laughs> oh, thanks, Joey. And he was like, I can't wait to fucking meet you. I was like, oh, I can't wait to meet that's you. Sweet. So we, I meet him for the first time. You can find this video. This is my first time meeting Joey Diaz. His first words to me, he sits down. And he's like, oh, it's good to meet you, too. He's like, let me ask you a question, Burt Kreischer. You ever break into a chick's house on a quaalude and eat her pussy? And, I, and I'm and i like, what? those are the first words he's spoken to me. And I go, what? And he goes, Lucy Snorbush. <laughs> and on, we, f- it's the one of the hardest I've ever yeah, laughed in course, my life. But like, what the? And it, to this, <laughs> it might be one of those defining Joey Diaz lines ever. Because he says it in a room of comics and we all are laughing so fucking hard. And he, and he proceeds to very nonchalantly tell the story of when he was a kid, he ate a quaalude, climbed up a girl's ladder into her room, she was asleep, started eating her pussy, she woke up, they started fucking around, and then he walked out like a doctor, like a fucking doctor. What the It was fuck? the fucking weirdest story, and it is all of us laughing, and like there's like fucking that's nine, psycho shit too there's nine things i'm probably not telling the just story justice but there's nine things in that story nine stories that joey has where you're like like if if when one time joe asked him if he uh liked ranch or blue cheese with his hot wings you've ever heard this no and joey lost his shit it's either blue cheese or go fuck your mother that was joey's <laughs> <laughs> and like there's is he erratic or is he just like a, a reactional kind of... He gets worked up over shit. That doesn't... You don't get the, worked over? The, worked up over? But it's... And it's it makes you laugh. I don't think... Like, I, I, one time I told him I was going to therapy, and he lost it. Oh, what the fuck? The fuck you gonna give some Momo a goddamn fucking <laughs> pay a car payment to fucking listen to you? I'm your fucking friend. I'm your fucking friend. All right. Every morning we meet at coffee... Eight o'clock, right after drop off, we sit, we talk for an hour. All right, I'll see you there. That was it. And then I go to this coffee shop right around the corner. And every week, every day for a month, I sat with Joey for an hour after drop off, and we talked, and for an hour. And then he's like, "All right, you're done with it. Good going." And that was my therapy. But that's the way Joey. Seriously, brain, dead fucking serious, dead serious. It was right before my. It was the month leading up to my fortieth birthday. Wow. Yeah, it was five years ago. Well. You feel like it, and it helped. I'm sure. Yeah, it was. It helped because. Do you not worry about like objectivity? The the interesting thing that happened in that month um, was I was going through the of uh, the breakup of a friendship, and I was not trusting people. I didn't trust anyone's motives, and and that was what I think. In essence, what I got to with Joey was ultimately I sat with him every morning for a month. And ultimately, he said, "What I got out of it was you gotta you gotta let yourself have friends. You just stop being like this." And Joe said the same thing to me at that time. He was like, "I think it was very very visible in me that I wasn't trusting anybody, and I wouldn't talk to anybody, and I didn't like I was very I could be on a podcast and be friends with you, but the second that podcast is over, I kind of was like, very good to see you, and I like I gotta go, yeah, yeah, yeah. and." Uh, and both Joe and Joey were like, "You gotta let, you gotta let us be your friend. Like, don't, don't shut people out. You're a good guy." Is and that a big issue for you? So it's still. I really have a hard time with friends yeah. today. I have a really hard time. Like, uh, 
I feel like I have a lot of friends, but I don't. Like, I have a, I like don't, how many good friends do you have? Yeah, it's I a very weird have, feeling I, to think about. Like that, the um, you know, one of the best, healthiest things for me was sober October, because it got me, Joey, me, Joe, Ari, and Tom so much closer, and even Tom, who I, I think was was I've is probably my best friend, I guess. I think Tom would be like, yeah, Bert's not like. There's parts of Bert where, like, there's a distance to me. Yeah. Like, uh, but I talk to I talk to I text with I text with Joe, Ari, and Tom every day, and I talk to Tom probably every other day on the phone. I talk to Ari every other day on the phone. Um, well, you guys all came up with battle scars together too, right? A little bit, a little bit. I think they're both probably closer with to Joe than I am. Yeah. I think but I think that's also because they're easier at being friends with people. I have a hard yeah, like, yeah. you know, like like I don't want to bother Joe sometimes. Like I like I asked him to be on my podcast once and he was like, I'm really busy. I was like, cool, I won't ever ask you again. Yeah. So I was like, I don't ever want to Yeah, because you like you form these relationships that are slightly conditioned. Not like not in a bad way necessarily, but yeah. they are a circumstance in comedy. Like your peers are not necessarily your equals. Yeah. Like, meaning, like, you know, Joe's massive. He's the biggest like, guy in the business right yeah, now. Yeah, it's like him and Kevin Hart. Yeah. yeah and, and so to, for me to go... Hey, can you Joe, carve out an hour and a half? Hey, Joe, can I? Can I, Can I? you help me boost myself to the next level? I would never do that. Yeah. I, I have a hard time doing that with Tom and Ari. When we were at the fucking national championship game, I had a podcast that needed to be released. I know that uh, if I do a podcast with Tom and Ari, and they both know this, there's a weird fucking currency going on. There's a that, spike. That it, yeah, if either of if any of us does a podcast about this moment, it's going to be big. So none of us ask to do it because that's not what our friendship's about. But I'm in a bind and I need to put out a podcast this week and I have to do one. And you're my friends. Go fuck yourself. You're doing it. Yeah. And help so, me. Yeah. But yeah. But, this but, is like it reaches a help me point. Yeah. yeah. And so there's it's like a weird like you don't ever want to leverage your friendship into business. I I very seldomly. I asked Tom to do things for me like twice. I've, I've made him do something as my friend three times where I go, I, I need you to You're do this. You're calling in a favor. I'm, yeah. I'm, I need you to do this to me right with me right now because I can't do this by myself. Yeah. No, I get like, you know, we all get it like I get it on a cosign. Like when I open for you because your fans are friends, like oh, Bert is bringing this guy. So or Bert is helping this guy. Yeah. So he likes him. So he must be good because I like Bert. You know, like I get that like immensely with Kanane when I like uh when I open for him like like Twitter followers shoot through the roof and that kind of that oh, kind dude, of shit the first time I did Rogan's podcast I remember I had 3,000 followers and I got off the podcast and I had 10,000 followers and I went what this is the very first time I did it That's what, fucking my buddy this weekend this is like a catching fire thing did you see that shrimp fried rice thing that was blew up on Twitter this yeah. is like he works in an office. Is a f- oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's my buddy, Zach Descani. He's a comic. I followed him. I just followed yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, e- Emmy Rossum from Shameless did a dramatic reading of his tweets on Instagram. Like, he was just like, it's crazy. You know? Uh, Lynn, and he was uh, like, Lynn oh. Emanuel Miranda. Yeah, like. Was like, I am riveted. And I watched this guy, the, your friend go, wow. Yeah. Like. It was, by the way, it was fucking hilarious. Yeah, he's a funny fucking dude, man. For like, those of you that don't know, for those of you that don't know, uh, I didn't even read it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. hold on, I, like, I, I got what? What's his name? Zach Toscani. I just fucking followed him on Twitter. Yeah, I bet he was I like, he was like, what should I do with this? And I was like, I don't tell your agent to get you on something. Profile, like, uh, yeah. followers. Wait, where's where do I have? Where do I find my fo- following? Following uh, but, Zach Toscani. Yeah. Zach Tuscani. Oh, I wish I could fucking. Oh, he followed me back. Hey, thanks, Zach. What when, what day was this? I think it was on Friday or Saturday because it was like an office. Th- it had to be Friday, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Or I'll Thursday. Tell you what, I just I liked every single one of them. Yeah. Um. So only to do this justice, follow Zach Tuscani. T o s c a n i z a k z a k t o s Sienna, C A, C A N I. You're fine. Yeah. yeah. Google shrimp fried rice, Zach, and it'll, it'll show up. Yeah. So this is. I'm gonna read. I'll just read up to a port so that you can then find the rest of them. And yeah. Read give them a little take. What they're after. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is the first tweet. Okay. Coworker got his lunch stolen 
and they've agreed to let him watch the security camera tape. This is the most excited I've ever been at my job ever, ever, right? That's the first (laughs) one. That's got 174,000 retweets. That's fucking insane. 174,000 retweets. (laughs) That's fucking insane. The lunch in question was shrimp fried rice, which means this escalates from a misdemeanor to a felony, no doubt. <laughs> then he wrote, case fact. Right? This is it's just a comic writer. He's a good writer. Yeah. Case yeah, fact. Yeah. Lunch lunch was in the fridge for less than an hour before it vanished. No shrimp smell remnants in the microwave or in kitchen area. This was a professional hit, no doubt. <laughs> this is so and then he goes, Holy shit, he's back. He watched the tape. He knows who did it. It is the funniest fucking rant. And all of these have hundreds of thousands of retweets. And it yeah. and it goes on. It's like fifteen more minutes more. Yeah, and it, it's it it is awesome. I fucking he's watched so that. Fu- he's so fucking funny. He was speaking about people getting hate though. Like he got somebody like from Vanity Fair or Variety, which is like this is fake bullshit. And I was like, oh, you know, like this is my thing with people just being negative. Like he's like the fuck. There's he, a part of it's me enjoyable. Where, the part of me that was like was like, and it's not I, fake. Immediately, yeah. I thought he showed me a picture of the woman who. <laughs> Oh, for real? It. And I was like, this looks like somebody would steal your fucking food out of a fridge. Like, 100%. Like, you know when someone, like, you look in their eyes and they're, like, looking past you, but you're, yeah. like, having a conversation? Yeah. It was that in a picture. Like, it, he, it was, as soon as it happened, I was in Hawaii. I was on the beach, and I'm flipping, and I see it, and I start reading it, and I'm laughing so hard, and I'm like... And, was this uh, so that four year old was like, yeah, that, yeah, you're looking at the shirt fried rice, thing. and and and, yeah, and then I read it to this kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, here you go, Jonah. It's just why it's funny because it's concise, but also they're abrupt. Yeah. Oh, and it was so funny, and I was like, oh my god, I went through, I favorited every one of them, I retweeted all of them, I retweeted the thread, and uh, but then immediately as a comic, I went, oh, I wonder if I could do one of those. And I was like, I wonder. That, I do that all the time, and I'm like, absolutely not. Yeah, and yeah. then I was like, no, that's that's not my. Even yesterday, I had uh, leaving Hawaii. A woman said, um, "The ma'am said, the lady at the gate agent said, man, we're gonna have to check your bag." And the woman, I had never seen this misunderstanding ever in my life. Dropped her knees, unzipped her bag, and showed it to her, and goes, "Go ahead." And she went, "No, we have to check it on the plane." She thought she meant, "What do you have in your bag? We have to check it." <laughs> and I, I was like, "That is a case of someone who's not flown a ton." Right. Yeah, and not understanding language. And, not, yeah, and the, just misheard something. But also being correct. like, Yeah. That would make sense in another situation. If she's just getting on a subway and a cop says, I need to check your bag. That's a per- that makes perfect sense. Yeah. And so, or walking into a movie theater even or something. You need shit. to check yeah, your bag. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, should I get it? Yeah, that, but it was a misunderstanding. It made me giggle so hard. And I tweeted it, and then I thought... I bet no one will believe that that actually happened. Like that, that could be just a comic's brain. The way yeah, yeah, yeah. that people would all, frame. Well, it. there was that one comic who made up the fucking chat thread that happened to him on a plane. Do you remember that guy? Vaguely, I think I remember hearing something about this. They were like, uh, they called him out and he got busted. But and but when I read that, I thought this could be fake. But then I thought I don't care. I just enjoyed it. Yeah, I just enjoyed so it. So you like you know fucking Breaking Bad's fake, and you watch it. Oh, I played this. I played this video. It's for, all entertainment. I played this video for Leanne. And but Leanne, I guess that goes into fake spontaneity too that we were talking about that we find like distasteful. There is there is something there. No, you know what? You're right. There is there's a little bit an element of trickery or falsity to it that it can is not. I'm gonna play this. I'm gonna find this video for you. I played this for Leanne, and she was. It was the funniest thing. That she had ever seen in her life. Hey, can I do a shout out to my buddy Blake? Real please, yeah, yeah, please. He's like, he listens to the podcast every fucking week or every time it comes out. He's a big fan here. So, hey, Blake. All right. It was my old guitar player. It's a buddy of mine. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah Thank you, Blake. Good guy. Blake Heath. Um, uh, sound engineer. So, yeah, somebody hire him for, for a podcast. I'm so fucking frustrated. I sent this video to uh, Segura, Tom, and Joe. I was like, have you guys ever seen this? This is the funniest thing I've ever seen. And uh, they were like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. One second. You got to I, you gotta, I gotta play this from the beginning. So Leanne didn't know that this is a guy. This is what he does. His name's Bob Mennery, right? Okay. And he, what he does is he commentates on sports videos, but in a very irreverent way. And Leanne thought this was really a commentator and we, was crying laughing that this was, that she thought this was real. And so she was crying laughing. And then when she found out it wasn't real, 
she just here, took her out this of it. Is it? You ready? You ready? Hold on. You ready? Wow. Look, watch this. Holy okay, hold on one sec. Hold on. I mean, Come on. Just get to the. Hang on one second. I gotta hang on. You gotta see the whole thing. So he's a. Does he? He does voiceover on pre-existing clips. Is what? Yeah. Here we go. You ready? Yeah, all right. You gotta. You you just oh, had your shit. signal go. <laughs> God damn it! This fucking I'm so bad at this. Hold on, hold on. Let's okay. Let's get to the beginning. Hang on, hang on. Fucking shit! Why the fuck? This is fucking <laughs> pissing me off. This is so fucking funny. Now I gotta wait a minute for this to fucking <laughs> come back up. Here, this will be it. I got it. I'm just basically all I'm doing this whole podcast is going through my Instagram. Okay, here we go. Let's get it from the beginning. Okay, hold on. Here we go. It's a boxing match. Okay. Garcia in the black, Sosa in the blue, exchanging punches early. Oh my goodness! He rips his fucking jaw right off. Sosa is no longer Sosa. His name's Gilbert Grape because he's retarded right now. Referee says, come here, son. What's my name? Sosa says, your name, referee. My name, Jeff. Ref says, fight on. As the That is fucking fun, right? That's really fun. Yeah, yeah. But Lou, yeah, just like the. And Leanne uh, thinks this is real, and she's like, "What?" Listen to what he says. Holy shit! <laughs> I mean, as Garcia is celebrating, we see Sosa in the fetal position right now, once again saying, "My name, Jeff. My name, Jeff," and he is licking the ring. We will follow. Well, <laughs> so, so Leanne <laughs> thought that was. Real, it's this guy. His name's Bob Mennery, and Leanne thought that. I wish was they could call games like that. Yeah, and she. Well, I don't know why they don't. And Al, yeah, like I don't really don't know why this guy doesn't have a job calling every fucking baseball yeah. game. He's got a great voice. Yeah, and, which is which is his downfall. Is that what that's what he really sounds like? So in seeing him in a video when he talks, you're like, oh, oh, no, nah. like, <laughs> and he's like a comedian, and part of you is like, oh, you couldn't do stand up with that voice. <laughs> like uh, I went to the <laughs> oh, yeah, store yeah, yeah. the other day. I was just doing a fucking podcast yesterday. Yesterday, uh, cowboy, uh, cocaine and rhinestones. Have you heard of this? No. It's a country music history podcast. They just ask these great stories, and it's pretty good. It was the first one I listened to. But the guy narrating it, like, clearly puts it a lot of work and stuff. But he sounded like Amy and I were driving back. Sounded just like Ron Howard at the beginning of Arrested Development. So it was kind of hard to get into. Like, oh really? Yeah, because he was like. But anyways, Buck Howard and Don Glean. Like, you know, like it was very like. It's like it's one of those things where you realize like reading off a prompter, or like public speaking, is a very valuable skill for people who do it well. Like, yeah, it, sh- it shines so badly. What like and oh, he's just yeah. his isn't bad, but it's just like a little like I was expecting it to feel more conversational, and it was very like I essay was, driven. I watched all of his videos; they're all sports. He commentates on sports, and they're so. It's so funny. They're really politically incorrect. Obviously, I know Clearly, we're making yeah, yeah. fun of you know mentally disabled people, but. Th- when Leanne thought that he was a real commentator, she was like, she was crying. We were laying in bed and she was crying, laughing. She's like, how is he allowed to do this? And then when I told her, I go, babe, he's doing this after like, I, I mean, not to say that my, my wife's a fucking idiot, but I go, he's commentating after things. And he's did you present in. it? And I didn't, I didn't yeah, fix okay. it. Cause I, she was laughing so hard and I was laughing too. And I wanted her to enjoy it. I wanted her to have that laugh. And then when I told her, no, he, it's after the fact. He goes in and he does voiceover after he's seen it. And she went, oh, oh, that's, well, that's totally different. And I was like, yeah, okay, yeah. kind of. But it's the same thing as, as Zach's thing is if he did make it up, yeah, I guess then it loses the fun to it. But it, it doesn't matter to me because I enjoyed it regardless. Yeah. Like it, I don't think he made it up. I know he didn't make it up because you're saying it. I, didn't I make believe it. him hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. But my point is, even if he did, I still enjoyed it as much. I enjoyed it more because it's real. Yeah. And it was because it's real is why it's so good. Does for that make sure, sense? Yeah, for sure. I, mean, I would say, but if it's fake and you put that in a sitcom, it would still be funny. Yeah. Yeah. You know, here's, like, the, here's the reason. Here's the thing I'm stuck with in comedy. And this is one of the, one of the, the only 
The only negative thing I'll ever you'll ever hear me say about Dave Chappelle ever. He's one of my favorite comics. I think he's great. When he tells a story that isn't real, I I lose. He you come out of it me. a bit. I come out of it. Yeah. And I go. I go. Eh. Like when he tells a story that's real, I'm invested. But when he when I hear him, like he did a joke about uh, being blackmailed for a sex tape. Yeah, I was so invested. I was oh, the so VHS. Invested. Who, who's still making tapes? Yeah, and yeah. it's a VHS. Who's still? And I'm laughing so hard. And then he goes, and the next day another tape came. I'm like, what? And he was like, it was a tape of me watching the other tape, and my wife was so upset by the second tape i went oh i'm i'm out of the story yeah I, yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah. is totally make believe but the, the reason this is good is that it's the small details i used to be obsessed with small details the small details of honesty of truth the things that happen in real life that you add into a story that makes it funny they make it pop and like yeah they, there's like a um it's the thread that is like relatable in it like and that makes you like like the fact that had he made this up he wouldn't have gone to where it was where the guy yeah. well I, yeah it, i just don't know why people are so ready to like like disregard stuff to, you know, like you know, that's it's, like a weird yeah. fucking thing they want to prove it they want yeah I, there's a, there's a v- it's like you made a million dollars like it's an ill-gotten gain it's not somebody else's work you know it's not like a content aggregator or what whatever yeah. it's not one of these guys who like takes other people's shit and tweets it out off, off their own profile or anything you know like it's which is which is, by the way is you know like my best friends do always we'll, we'll take a video that's going viral on the internet i mean I, and i say all my friends like all my friends will do this uh, they'll take a video that's going viral on the internet and put it on their Instagram feed and everyone will laugh hysterically like, you're fucking hilarious. But they didn't do anything. Yeah. They just saw a there's viral video. There's nothing wrong video. with it if you're there's crediting no, people. There's like, no, yeah. It was, it's what the fat Jew did. The yeah. Fat Jewish well, he was whatever. stealing. Was that what he was doing? Yeah. Like he was like taking people's ideas oh, really? and like passing them off. As I, this, I never. That's I, like, it's like, th- that was like thievery. That, like, I, that missed that, me entirely. Yeah. Like, I guess it affected probably comics more in my generation. Oh, really? Level. Yeah, like I think he was like he was stealing from people that like. How so? Like, what was he doing? Like he would like he took somebody's joke, like verbatim, and then put it in a tweet, and he would do this a bunch, like things oh, like really? that. Yeah, and then like people were talking, like would call him out on it, and he kind of never took responsibility for it, and I think that's where it blew up, and it, it lost uh, a lot of you know, like it lost him a lot of endorsements and shit that he was getting. Yeah, because he had like a seamless ad, I think, in a book, and but people were like, "Like this is like thievery," you know. Like, and the other thing is like, you get to that point, say you like steal enough stuff, you still have to at some point you're gonna have to become a person who creates their own act and proof is in the pudding. Like Ooh. every single fucking time, you know, like you you still paint yourself into a corner, but it's just shitty. Well, it's it's, a, it's yes, and it's like not getting. Uh, do you know who Jake Flores is? Mm-hmm. It's a comic from Austin. He lives in New York. He had this tweet about everything going on during the election. He had a tweet that was something like, um, I'm starting to feel like this is the last season of America and the writers are just going fucking nuts. <laughs> 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 and everybody started sharing it and retweeting it. Having my buddy John Ozele to this, he had a tweet that, and nobody was giving him credit. And, you know, it's like a thing that could help them is the thing. It's not like they're making a ton of money, but like if they get credit for it, like he did have that really funny tweet. And then the, I think the New York times did a story on Jake's tweet about it, or he wrote a piece. I think about I it. saw that yeah. story. Yeah. Cause it's like, so it's like a thing. It's like, that's why it's wrong. You know, like sharing it is not wrong, but like, that's like an original thought, you know, like the viral cat video. Right. Yeah, like somebody's like, yeah, that's my fucking cat. I yeah. can prove it. You know, like, Oh, I, 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 I had a, I don't even, I, you know, sadly I wish the, I wish the tweet, uh, I wish I cared, but like I wrote a tweet and uh, this hockey guy, if someone can find this tweet, send it to me. I wrote this tweet and this hockey guy uh, tweeted it. Like he, tw- he Somebody just, with like a, just a grip of followers or whatever. Yeah. And he had like, he had, I don't know. He had maybe 700,000 followers, he was a professional hockey player, but he was now a commentator for somewhere in Canada. And he just took my tweet and cut and pasted it and as if it was his own. It was verbatim. Yeah. And uh, someone 
sent it to me and they're like, yo, he just stole your tweet. I follow him and I follow you. He's tweeting the same thing you just tweeted. And then I called him out on it. I was like, yo, man, give credit to where credit's due. I wrote that tweet. Yeah. And he was like, his defense. I wish someone could find this tweet. I, I wish it was, if it was funny, I'd fucking say it. In a, I guess it was funny. I don't even remember. Or it resonated. Was. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, oh, sorry. Someone just said that at work. And I just thought it was funny. And I just put it in. And uh, So you still did that. Yeah. Yeah. You're still like, you know, like. Yeah. And that's like. There's a lot of that that goes on. Yeah. And it's flippant, but it's like, it's just like, it fucking sucks. As an honest comic, I would never. And some people pick years. things up and there's parallel thinking too, which yes. are two different things. Uh, like Dan St. Germain said last week, or was, last week he was on the podcast, I think. He said that. Fucking good dude. He day. said, you be, sh he goes, I believe in parallel thinking because I've been in a writer's room where people have pick, pitched the exact same joke verbatim that are amazing jokes and there's no fucking way they stole it and they're so bizarre but they're identical and i was like really he was like that he goes parallel thinking is fucking real and so of course it you know and it's like that is when i did the fury thing this kid he's a nice guy he was like and he was like he was like i have a joke that's like very similar you know like yeah. and he wasn't accusing me of stealing or anything he's a nice guy and but i was just like I don't know like what you want me to t you know, like because that helped me with a lot of stuff and I was like I'm sorry I'm not gonna f feel bad I'm sorry you, you have to let this go and it's the thing you were proud of but yeah. like it was a thing that's the thing I'm proud of and I like I got there for you know sadly I think that's part part of what the, a lot of people were like I'm doing an hour and it was almost like they were claiming territory on mediocre bits that's fucking crazy yeah and of course you it has to be there. You have to, for a joke to resonate. I think it requires like parallel thinking to a degree because you're trying to connect with an audience. Yeah. They, it makes maybe not parallel thinking, but um, I guess recognition is a is a form. Parallel thinking is a form of recognition and uh, and perceiving and taking things in the same way. You know, like yeah. Uh, so like the, the, a joke hits, it's because it's funny and they realize it and it strikes a chord in people. So they could have potentially working backwards got to where you got with your setup. Or you're just you know, like, yes, you know, if they're good at it and meaning, you know, like people just steal and are fucking lazy and don't realize how hard it is to create an act. I think some people think I think there are people who sit in a comedy club and hear someone's premise and come up with a different punchline and go, oh, I could do that. I got I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to take it that way. Yeah. And you go, no, 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 no. That's part of the reason I I stopped going into Hollywood and doing sets is that I would come in with unbaked material. Yeah. Yeah. My chicken is completely undercooked in my yeah, new act. I'd rather that. do it on the road where no one's going to be. And you can work and you don't feel like that's the nice thing about the road. I think is like you can go out there and do these new ideas and really work them out and feel like you're not bombing in front of. Um people who like are industry folks or your peer like yeah. comic you know like you get to like this is like you just explain like hey this is how we have to do this yeah, yeah. it's it stinks it stinks because like sometimes at the at the store i will see i will see really great comedians not trying new material just going into kill and that part of me goes i think you're missing the point of comedy clubs yeah i think it depends on where you're at too well i by the way by the way i'm guilty of that i go into the store and i follow fucking killers and i go well i'm not gonna bomb like i want to do well no it's fear like yeah. and it's like a good thing and you're like you know that makes sense i think to a degree like you can't like like i fucking i was in new york on a show and it's just this hot shit it's whiplash in new york have you ever you know it's fucking oh. kill it's so fucking great but like it's like a show people like try to get on and i got on and this was like my first six months of being in New York. And uh, he was like, do you want to come by and do whiplash? And I was like, absolutely, my buddy Jeremy. And so I go in. He goes, All right. he had me going first in the text he sent me. And then he was like, uh, so you're going to go second now? And I was like, okay. And I was like, who's going first? I was like, oh, Judd Apatow. And I was like, okay. Like, yeah. Yeah, like, and like, whatever, really. But like also, that's like the president of comedy, right? You, like, yes. And like, they've never fucking heard. I had no TV credits at this point. Nothing. Like, nobody's going to recognize me from shit. Now that I get recognized all the time now, but it was just like, one of these things is just like, well, now I have to like, go so hard. Like, maybe like, because it's a show like, you don't want to bomb on the good show the first time you do it because you're oh, not coming yeah. back. And, you know, it's fine. And I like, feel like it was not a, 
crazy difficult thing to follow him in some way you know like yeah. he's just the most famous person it's a very intimidating thing like and luckily i mean I he's a very funny person and this is when he was first getting back in into, right? into it so like my buddy sam said it best he was like it's like you can tell he's funny he just hasn't done stand-up in 10 years because he's been making million dollar movie like Ooh. you know i don't like, know if i get back into stand-up if i was him i think you kind of if i was if if i fucking stand-up is so special though. if i got to a place I was thinking this weekend, if I if I all of a sudden was like paralleled into like, hey man, we want you to create these uh, movies, and I, that was where my energy was going, and I got to a place where I was like, I would just, I don't know if I'd, I don't know if I'd get up, I don't know if I'd have the drive. We, were, my wife and I were talking this weekend about motivation. Does it seem like less necessary? Is that why? I don't know. Or- She's reading this book called Driven. And it's, uh, and she's talking about what motivates people and how to motivate people. She's, she's like, you're one of the most motivated people I know. And I was like, oh, thanks. And she goes, what motivates you? And I went, I don't know. She's like, well, what motivated you when you started doing comedy? And I was like, I don't know. She's like, well, what motivates you? I go, I have no fucking idea what motivates me. What motivates me right now, my motivation is other people's approval like it's a big one it's like i want people to think i'm funny i want my friends to think that i'm original and that your work is good that's a very yeah. which is ironic is a thing that does not pay you any money like, None. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, and 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 then i was like directly like, yeah yeah she goes is it money i said maybe and then i because i often think if i if I fucking hit the lottery, win two hundred million dollars, which is very possible. <laughs> I, I, I that's by what the way, funny thing this is very very possible. I buy, I have that gene. I have that that genetic makeup where I will be the person to win the lottery. Like I would be. Like if I won Do the you, lottery, does, does shit like that happen? Like little like oh yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm the luckiest guy in the fucking world. I'm There's the a, luckiest a, guy in the fucking world. Couple that with white privilege, dude. I am through the fucking roof. Yeah. Like I am the problem with this country. Like. I didn't study seven years in college, six and a half years in college, seven years in college, didn't take any of it seriously, had no plan in life, was not panicked by this fact, by the way, didn't, ha- wasn't like freaking out, what am I going to do after college? I, yeah, yeah, In my yeah. head, I was like, probably just go to Aspen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll bartend and like teach ski lessons or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wasn't panicked. That's rolling. what I was like. I was like, I'm just going to bartend and like, yeah. I'll meet a girl. Maybe I'll open my own bar. Maybe that'll be the thing I'd... Maybe well, I'll open a business that fails almost all the time. Yeah, maybe I'll like. I was like, maybe I'll. And then I said, comedy is a much better. Idea. I remember thinking. <laughs> I remember thinking, maybe I'll go down and I'll be a fishing guide. Maybe I'll. Uh, maybe I'll. I don't know what I'll do. And then Rolling Stone discovers me, calls me the number one party animal in the country. Uh, Oliver Stone opens the rights of my life. Everyone says you should try being a comedian. I was like, I could be a comedian. I'd, I've always wanted to be a comedian. Go to New York, start doing stand up. Six months later, Will Smith discovers me. Move out to L.A. Come back to come back to. New York, go to do a tour with in Scotland with uh, at Edinburgh with Patrice and Rich Voss. Uh, Fox offers me a fucking CBS offers me a sitcom. I get a TV show. Did and you then, come in with a lot of heat? Like, oh, like dude, that? I came in with like fucking magma heat. Really? Yeah, I, like- and and but but I got my first deal, and all I I only had seven minutes of material. That's fucking. Cra- there's some guy six who just figures. there's some guy who just bit down the tip of his tongue like six figures there's a fucking comic in in muskogee or some shit that's just so mad right now six <laughs> figure deal with will smith and i had seven minutes of material you want to talk about you want to talk do about, you find you navigated business well like no l- i am uh, the luckiest fucking but you're like you're world. a very charming person I think I'm a good person. I think it goes back to the Yeah, thing. I think people yeah. see that in you. And I think and I think I'm fun to be around and I I don't know. I'm the luckiest person you'll ever meet. I'm the I I say I've done this by the way. I've I've done this. I have an innate ability. If someone loses something, I have an uncanny, almost magical ability to find it. Almost, ma- and I don't even stress about it. So wait, this is one of my favorite stories uh, that you'll ever hear about me. Okay. So this if you're is- like, if you're at a party and somebody's like, I can't find my cell phone. No, 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 okay. no. It's it's bigger than that. Oh fuck that. I can, dude. It's bigger than that. I'm at a beach, 
I'm going to beat you. There's a motocross guy that's very famous. I don't know his name, but I know that I recognized him. He was like on all the motocross things on, on like MTV and stuff. Yeah. Him and his wife, him and his wife, are, his chick, are sitting next to us. Uh, I'm with Georgia and Isla. Uh, I have a igloo, blue igloo pitcher of margaritas for me and Leanne. Uh, we're at, we're at, uh, at, uh, Marina del Rey. We're at Marina del Rey Beach. Oh, yeah. uh, igloo cooler of margaritas for me and Leanne. We got the girls digging holes. And to the left Sounds is like a, a nice day. It's a beautiful day. It's a gorgeous fucking day. I've got a little bit of a buzz on. But and like, yeah, a like... black couple is next to us. And the black guy is, and we're all, and no, no one's talking. Well, we haven't met each other, but we're all sitting near each other. And the black guy uh, swings his arm up. And I watch this happen. And his wedding ring flies off his finger into the sand. Jesus. I, I don't see where it goes. I don't see it fly off his finger. And he goes, oh, my God. And we're like, he's like, we're like, what? And he goes, I just lost my wedding ring. I just lost my wedding ring. And his wife gets really upset. You what? He goes, I just lost my, lost my wedding ring. God damn it. I just lost my wedding ring. And, and everyone's like, oh, my God. Can we help you find it? And he goes, I, I, I don't know where it went. And, I, and then I stand up. I said, luckily, you're sitting next to the luckiest guy in the world. And I tell him, my name is Burt Kreischer. I have an amazing ability. You say to, your name. <laughs> and I'm a little buzzed. I'm a little buzzed. I'm a little buzzed. Okay. okay. Leanne's rolling her fucking okay. eyes because this is who she's Because this goes to. so bad if it doesn't. I said, yeah. I, said I promise you, I will find your wedding ring. I said, I have an innate, uncanny ability to find lost objects. I said, I'll find your wedding ring. I promise you that. And he goes, okay. I No, let's just be fair. I searched for about an hour. I wouldn't give up. I wouldn't give up because I'm also drinking and I get him to box off where he thinks it lands. I go, give me 10 by 10 foot where you think it went <laughs> an hour in. It's funny. This is, this is so fucking out. I like how the beach is getting smaller. And the- <laughs> I'm, I'm running my hands through the sand and I feel his ring slide onto my finger in the Shut sand. The fuck up. My hands are in the sand. I forget his name. Let's just call him Darren. I go, Darren, what did I tell you about myself earlier? And he stands up, and he I can get chill. Are they not? Is nobody else looking for the ring? He gave either? up. He gave up. He gave up. He's lost. The other guy gave up. It's lost. I wouldn't give up. I just kept fucking searching for this goddamn ring. I feel it slide onto my finger on my ring finger. I go, Darren, what did I tell you about my uncanny ability to find shit? He sits up. He goes, you kidding? I go, say my name, Darren. <laughs> he goes, Burt Kreischer. I go, tell me I'm the greatest man you've ever fucking met. And he goes, Burt Kreischer, you're the greatest man I've ever fucking met. And I go, what did I tell? And I start, pre- what did I tell everyone on this beach? I have an amazing ability to find shit. Did I not say that? Say my name. And the motocross guy goes, Burt Kreischer, you're a fucking amazing man i go darren is this your ring i put my hand up he goes that's my ring and he fucking <laughs> holds me fuck. i swear to god so wait so wait this the first time this happened i was in the beach at anna maria i mean chest high water i'm with benny lazara joyce lazara their two sons came and croy and me and Kay, and benny goes oh shit i just lost my ring and i said to him benny I can find shit really good. And he goes, it just flew off my finger. We're in chest deep water. We're in chest deep water. I am 16 years old. I go, Benny, I have a really, I have an ability to find stuff. And I go, I, I, for some reason, I'm the luckiest guy you'll ever meet. And he goes, it just flew, flung off my finger. It just, and by the way, this is in real time. And I move my foot and I feel it under my toes. And I grab it with my toes. I go, I'll be right back. I dive down and I grab his ring. I have it in my hand and I pop up. I go, tell me you love me more than your sons. And he goes, you don't have my ring. I said, tell me you love me more than your sons. He goes, if you have my ring, I love you more than my sons. I go, say you love me more than your sons. And Benny goes, I love you more than my sons. And I go, Benny, I got your ring. <laughs> what the? F- <laughs> Dude, it is such a great the feeling. Fuck for it's, it's the funnest part. His of kids any- are there. Oh, it's K- came in a groin. And they're, they're like, you have his ring? You have his ring? By the way, they're like my best friends in the world. Yeah, yeah, and, of course. Yeah, <laughs> It is, I I have said this. I've said this to everyone. I've said this to everyone. Like I have an amazing ability to find shit. Like when 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 you lose something. Is it? I wonder if like does one of your kids have that? One of your girls? Like, like I wonder if that's like a transferable thing. I don't like, know. 
Like it'd be, inter- way, it'd be inter- it's interesting to see like if it, or if it skips a generation and like one of their kids is like, oh yeah, she can find any. I'm just no, I think and I think I think it's less about. I think it has a more of a thing to do with luck. Like I am just very, I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, very I'm, lucky. I'm very I'm good luck. Oh, I, so this is in your general like. So so yeah, yeah yeah. So me, Butch Bradley, Steve Byrne, uh, Mike Young, uh, Brett Ernst, and I think that's it. Maybe Sebastian. We're in Atlantic City, and I tell them I'm the luckiest guy you'll ever meet, and they're like, "Well, we know that." And I go, "No, no, no. Just me being at your table. You're all gonna win a ton of money. I won't gamble because if I gamble, I think it changes it. But I go, I'm the luckiest guy it's you'll like ever less meet. Selfish. And yeah. they go, "Really?" And Butch goes, "I'll take you up on that." And he puts a hundred dollars down on a number, and the number hits. I watch the ball drop. I look down and I go, what did I tell you, Butch? He won like fucking 3,600. Like he won legit money. And he starts going, are you fucking kidding me? Are you like, it, dude, I am the luckiest guy. I, and I, I think that I, I bring luck to people, but I think I just have had these really insane, bizarre. Like I, I, I often go like, if someone's going to find time travel, it'll be me. Like, like, I, like I, I believe in that. Like I believe. It's, it's, Are you a person that wills things? Like, I don't know. My wife said, we, cause so, like, you know, you combing through the beach for an hour is lucky to a degree, but it's also, you were the one person who kept I, but I enjoyed, doing. I also yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah. Like I, there's part of me. You that, find some therapy in it. Kind I don't of know. I don't. I have a buddy like, I think. I, I, I don't, I'm not certain what it is, but I just know that my whole life I've been very lucky. I'm just fucking lucky. It's good that you recognize. It. I think a lot of oh, people, like a, a lot of people, like are it's, douchey with that kind of like. I think it's also glass half full. Like you look at the glass half full and you go, like there's a lot of times that, like by the way, I'm telling you a story about. I have an uncanny ability, but I can only think of two times that happened in my life. But those, those two times. Those are two times, big times. Yeah, those two times. Maybe you only have an uncanny ability to find wedding rings, too. <laughs> like, maybe it's just not. Like, you know, someone's like, a, yeah, you can't find, like. <laughs> that's, oh, that's probably it. Yeah. I, I was, I was. In, but, in like, yeah, in tropic settings. I, but yeah. I really believe, like, I just am really, really lucky. Like, I, like and, I, and I believe in luck. I believe in luck. Like, so I when, believe in luck. Like uh, I buy, I buy, I buy, I buy, I buy lottery, t- lottery tickets all the time, and mm. but the first time I ever bought a lottery ticket, the very first time I ever bought a lottery ticket, I was in Tallahassee, and I, I it was right when the lottery came out in Florida, and I bought a lottery ticket, and I hit, it was I, I'm, I'm I forget exactly, but I hit four numbers on the lottery ticket, like it was maybe six numbers okay. or five numbers, whatever it was, it was like it was like, fucking. It wasn't a ton of money, but it was $175 or something. It wasn't like thousands of dollars. Whatever I hit, it was like 275 bucks, 375 yeah, bucks. Yeah, so, so it was, money. It yeah. was money, a lot for, for a dollar purchase. Yeah. And I literally said to myself, this isn't a bad way to make money. I said, I think I'm going to start buying lottery tickets. And I was like, because, yeah, I, of course I'll win. Like, that's the way my brain that's works. That's fucking crazy. I'm the exact opposite of you. Are you serious? Oh, I'm like a bit of a fatalist. Oh, but, I'm not. But, like I go, I go. Yeah, like I'm like I'm definitely like yeah. This is gonna. There's no way this is fucking gonna. Like uh, I'm in the way of like the. But I think that leads me to being a like a person of practicality who's like, well, that means you have to take care of it, like because you can't leave it to chance. So you have to like shore what? up everything. So like, but I believe like I have a very not a hundred percent, but I lean more towards like if it can go wrong, it's gonna go wrong. Like I lean into the left of that a lot. Like not oh. like. And a part of it's probably an energy thing, you know, like like what I'm putting out there. Yeah. But then I also just I'm just like it's all fucked anyway. You know, like so I think like just in my general view, uh, I know like I don't want negativity, but I believe that it is like the world is just kind of negative in a lot of places in oh, a lot of ways. So I don't. I have. I believe I draw. I, th- I believe that I draw in. Uh, some positivity and I draw I draw like like this is a perfect example Georgia breaks all her four front teeth breaks her jaw this is when she was a baby 
We take her in. She fell or something? She fell. She was wearing Crocs. She tripped. She cracked her teeth, cracked her jaw. I have to fly home. It's really scary. It's touch and go. Because Fucking scary. It was really scary. I'm crying a lot because I'm, it's the first time I realized I really need these kids. I didn't, I don't think I had realized, she was really young. I don't think I had realized how badly I needed the, this family, how, how important this family was to me. And we go to the dentist's office the next day. They have to put her under, which is scary with kids sometimes. Oh, because um, she's just a child. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sobbing, crying, putting her under. They put her under. We go out into the lobby. I'm sobbing, crying in the lobby. It's like six in the morning, but there's a, a black woman there who's trying to connect with me, like, like trying to talk out loud to me, but I'm not having it. I'm crying so fucking hard. I'm just, I'm like, I'm, I give two fucks about you. Leanne's emotional crying too, but this black woman's trying to connect with me and, she, and I'm like, nah, we get done do, going to receive Georgia in the um, a receiving room. It's like a nice high end Beverly Hills uh, dentist. And curtain closes. We got Georgia. She's fine. There's gauze in her mouth. She's still asleep from the anesthesia. And uh, the curtain opens, and it's the black woman, Whitney Houston. See that shit happens to me all the fucking That's time. That's fucking Whitney Houston was a chick in the in the in the waiting room. Comes back, opens the curtain, gives me a hug, and goes, "It's hard being a daddy, isn't it?" And Leanne looks at that and goes, "I remember Leanne saying to me." Right after that, I'm. she goes, Leanne said, I'm bad luck. I'm bad luck. You're good luck. I don't understand how you're so lucky. She goes, you don't worry about money. I go, I don't worry about money. It'll just show up. She was like, I... That's fucking crazy. I don't worry about money. I've never worried about money. I mean, I, now, now get me, don't get me wrong. I've been broke. And you I, know it's important. Like, you're not... You're not yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're not. I'm not, I don't piss it away. Yeah. But I, I... Even when I got into stand-up, I was making $25 at the door, and I was through the roof. Like, yeah. And then... Right where you'd start going, what am I doing with this career? Six months in, they I get a six figure deal, and then I and I think I think Leanne said to me at one point, I want, I, and there was only a hint of this ever in my life, one subtle hint where she we were just struggling, struggling. It was right before I got Birth of the Conqueror, just struggling, and I kept going, don't worry, money shows up. I got a I did a Spike show, thirteen episodes, made a big chunk of change. I did a. Um, the Comedy Central show that I told you with Amy and them yeah. made a big chunk of change. Did an hour special, made a little chunk of change. Um, did the, Keep doing the road. Money's, don't worry. Money's going to show up. Get Birth Conqueror. And right before I got Birth Conqueror, she said to me, I feel like we're never going to get out of this apartment. I feel like, I feel like we're going to send the girls to prom from this apartment. I feel like I've jinxed you. I, f I remember her saying this. I feel like I've jinxed you. I've always been bad luck my whole life. Aww. And I feel like you were going in such a great place when I met you and I brought you down. And there was one night where I thought, and I was drunk, and I thought, could she have taken my luck? And I thought, am I cool with losing what's made me so lucky in life for this woman? And I was like, I was like, yeah, I'm really fucking happy. I'm really happy. And if all, all the luck I've gotten in my life got me to this point, and that's just to here, then I'm cool with having the same amount of luck as everybody else and just going forward. Uh, next day, Travel Channel calls up. Not next day, probably like next week, two weeks, a month later. Travel Channel calls up, and they want me to do Birth to Conquer. Change the direction of my life. Did Travel Channel for seven, eight years and got an, able to buy a house. I mean, just... Just luck, dude. It's fucking yeah. luck. I mean, but it's it is and it isn't. It's always I mean, a, it's like prepared. you also worked fucking hard. Yeah. Like there's, it all requires a bit of luck. But it's for, but it's but it's work. I would anyone would love to do. Yeah, but like, it's still it. It is not. It's a little bit of luck that you were the one chosen because there's just like that element of everything being not completely up to you. Yeah, but you shored up your bets with hard work. Like doing the road and and pre preparing your ass off and really wanting to get it. Like, like, you know, some people walk in and just get shit and then that like stops happening because they don't know how to work hard. You know, like, so, you, yeah, I, I think I definitely, okay, I definitely will say that I, so you worked am, hard. You, my dad always said it's uh, luck, equal, luck plus preparedness equals success. Yeah, my mom said like the people who work the hardest get the most breaks. I work pretty hard. Yeah. I, I love what I do, so it's I don't really consider it work. Um Yeah. I mean yeah, but But like what are the odds that what are the odds that what are the odds that I'd fucking rob a train in Ru in Russia, rob a train and not get in trouble? Like what are the like I mean, obviously now high, but like I yeah. remember 
I remember when I found out I wasn't getting in trouble, I remember going, of course. Like, I remember, like, I but just... before that, did you feel that? I, dude, I felt... Were you... Yeah, it must have had some anxiety about, like, how much trouble you were going to be in. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, I thought I was going to jail. I definitely thought I was going to jail. I definitely thought I was going to jail. When I walked up to the cop... Actually, I mean, in, in all honesty, if we're being very, very real about this. When I walked off the train, I thought I was going to jail. As I got closer to the cop, and I realized the cop was smiling... And I and he wasn't angry. And I punch it up for the story effect. Of course. But as yeah, I got yeah. closer to the cop, I was like, I don't think I'm in trouble. I don't think I'm in trouble. And then I got right up to the cl- cop. He just smiled at me very casually. And went, so I understand you're the machine. And I was like, I am. And he's like, Ah, tonight you party with us. I tell it differently in the story because I think the heightened. Yeah, point you got it. But you you move stuff around. Yeah, yeah. Everyone but does. I just I'm I, and I think also for me I go. I think part of me says I I understand the like Kevin Hart, not to shit on Kevin Hart, okay? At all. Yeah. By any which means. He says that he is where he is because of hard work. That's not accurate. Because there are guys that work twice as hard as Kevin and are failing. <laughs> There's that. It's not entirely encompassing. It's not yeah. entirely. Now, granted, he does. It work might be hard. the. It probably is the best contributor, though. It's a good contributor, but there are guys who are working twice as hard that are not getting any of the breaks he's gotten. There's a lot of things that play into it, and you can't. There deny are variables for that sure. One of them is just the luck that when yes. when when his special got bootlegged and spread on the internet. And it was right when people were finding YouTube. That just is, you can't deny. That's right place, right time. Like, it's right place, right time. Timing, it's, is, it's, the, it's, timing is the key to comedy in a lot yeah. of ways up besides the stage. And, like, yeah, and that that, uh, that that Soul Plane does horrible in the movie theater. But it gets bootlegged and shared with everyone. And everyone in the hood watches it. And they all fucking love it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that part of it is, like, you got to say part of it is luck. Like, I, I So would you say your, your pie graph... If it's hard work, luck, uh, you know, like networking, whatever, would you say your pie graph is like what percentage of it of your pie chart? Not graph, sorry. That's not pie graphs are not a thing. See, I, uh, I think so. I think that if you ignore that a big portion of the pie is luck, then you're ignoring what is this business. So, like, perfect example. We worked together uh, right after I shot in uh, in. In St. Louis, right after I shot my special, and I, I didn't sell, or, and for Showtime, I didn't sell any tickets. I didn't sell any tickets. By the way, uh, put the Showtime out special out. No one saw it. Whatever, right? I remember Ralphie telling me one time. Um, That's funny. I did a guest spot with him in St. Louis once when I was there, too. That's funny. Really? Like, yeah, yeah. He said to me one time, is, a spe- is your special good? And I was like, yeah. He goes, well, you better hope there's a snowstorm. I said, what? He goes, uh, I did a special that really changed everything for me. And the reason it did so well is there happened to be the, one of the biggest blizzards in the Northeast that what, the day it came out. So everyone was stuck in their house. And so everyone happened to watch TV. And so more people watched my special. He goes, if it hadn't been for that snowstorm, I don't know what I'd be doing. And I went, really? He goes, yeah. And I, I remember hearing that going, you better hope for a snowstorm. That's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah, and that's such a fucking... Praying for a snowstorm or something nobody wants. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pray for a snowstorm because yeah. no one's dying. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, a, it's just, just you just funny phrase. You're yeah. hold hold up in your house. So so then you should put that quote up. That's an interesting. Pray for a snowstorm. Yeah, that's really like that's it. It's cool. Uh, it's an interesting way to look at like at like good luck. And so I I shoot my. It's special. a little bit better than. Uh, what is it, Schadenfreude or Freud and Schadenfreude? Sh- Sh- yeah, like yeah. the joy and the misery and somebody uh, joy and somebody's misery. It's not quite that. Yeah, but it is like a little bit like, well, this inconvenience helped me out a bit. Yeah. yeah, and so so I put I put my special out. I then hire a marketing company, three thousand dollars a month for the months of. They're fucking so expensive. September uh, for months of October, November, and December, nine thousand dollars to help me get views on my video. Right, I. By the way, the special I shot, I worked super hard to make sure it was the greatest special I could perform. Um, I worked super hard on social media trying to promote it. I shot videos every day. I sh- every time I could think of something creative to do, I shot it, right? Where'd you shoot it? I then, uh, I sh- uh, the, the special? Yeah. At Irvine. 
I then clipped out four bits that were allowed by the network at the time, four bits. Uh, I clipped them out and I posted them online. None of them got any traction. I used the marketing company to help me get traction. None of them got any traction. I woke up one morning. My manager, Reg, texted me and said, did you post the machine story yet? And I said, I haven't. Shit, I got to do that. And in my head, I thought, I told Ron Rogan, three million people saw it. Some kid animated it. Three million people saw it there. I told it on... uh, on Did that help give it a second life? WDVE. Uh, three million people saw it there. I thought everyone's seen it. I'm only posting it to my Facebook. Who gives a fuck? I post it on Facebook, not thinking about anything. What had happened that year was Christmas fell on a Thursday. New Year's Eve fell on a Tuesday or on a, on a Monday. Like, so whatever it was, was so it'd be eight days or six six days after so yeah whatever it was christmas fell in the middle of the week so no one worked the day before christmas the day after christmas and then the next day was like a friday or a thursday and no one really went into work and then the next day was the weekend and then it turned into the new year's eve was the day that monday and then new year's day was Tuesday and no one's going to work third. So it was a long period. And it just happened that the day I posted it was on the, I think it was the 27th of December and no one had to work those next five days. So people so were pretty leisurely, like just lucky as fuck. People happened to be all had gotten new uh, phones and iPads and were looking for stuff to find online. And everyone happened to be on Facebook and this video lucky as fuck one of the girls from my Russian class happened to be one of those people, saw it and commented in the first few sections, I was on this trip, this story is 100% true, he fucking robbed us. She commented, everyone's online, everyone sees it, and then 30 million people happen to watch this video. Changes my life, changes my touring. I sell out every show from fucking that day, the 27th of December, Two a year and a half ago, two years ago to today, every show that was like right after it was. And by yeah. the way, just lucky as fuck. Like, what would I be doing had that video? Would I? Have, yeah, there are things that contributed to it clearly. But, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. on I, I just happened to. It was so fucking insane that the marketing company company called me and said, "How did you do this?" And I just said, "I'm very lucky. I just posted it. I, I, I had no insight. I'm just lucky. I happened to post it on a day that a lot of people were home." And then they were home the next three days, and then that's where that that's the thing they don't really calculate for, you know, like that. But it's a thing that they really think, contributed to your success. With and that. I think I think Kevin Hart would agree. No, no, no. The hard work is the marketing company. Let them do their hard work. No, no, no. It's not. It's the weird fucking luck. Like it's Kevin Hart's very talented, very very talented. Yeah, and he is a hard worker. I do think he works hard. But you can't say that that is why he is where he is today. He is because a few fucking lucky breaks. A few also, lucky breaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, also. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. also. Yeah. Um, how long have we been going? I feel like... Three hours. Okay, we, this is a beast of a podcast. But like, <laughs> by the way, I can how go for another fucking... How long are they usually? Not three. <laughs> <laughs> but like lately they've been shorter, but uh, but but I, this is... I could talk... I could literally could talk to you forever. But I always think that with Kevin, I go, you can't say that it's hard work Cause, cause it's, it's, it is hard work, but it's also a lot of luck. Like it's, there's like, yeah, like we discount luck. I was, yeah. you don't, I do I, not. I, I do. But like, so yeah, if my pie, my pie chart is like 95%, like it's, is work. And then I would be like, not to say that I'm not like, then 5% luck. If I'm just like boiling it down off the top of my head right now, like, because I just like, I don't feel like unlucky, yeah. But I'm not a guy who's found money in the street a bunch of times. You oh, know? oh, I have. Yeah. Oh, I remember. I've the had first time. a couple of times for sure, but like, that's just like a like a. I don't, and maybe I need to be more appreciative of that too when it does happen. You know. Yeah, and and like but sometimes I just like, ah, I found twenty bucks. Some dumb fuck dropped it. You know, like so funny. Some I, other fuck was gonna find it. You when know? I've lost iPads or iPhones and I've tracked them and seen them go to bad neighborhoods, I go. I always say. I just gave them a little luck. I gave them some of my luck. 
I let them I let them have some of my luck. They had a lucky day. <laughs> I said I've thought that. I've said, you know what? Like I remember I lost an iPad in Atlanta and I watched it. I watched it go into the hood. I watched it. I tracked it. And I thought, you know what? I remember thinking, I just gave that I don't know why I thought this, but I said I gave that father some luck. So today he goes into his son and says, I got you an iPad. And then the kid goes, Holy shit, I got an iPad. Today's my lucky day. I go, you're welcome. That's my luck. I'm giving you a little bit of my luck. I, 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 I'm, by the way, I know I sound like a fucking lunatic yeah, right yeah. now. You fucking sound crazy because some guy <laughs> just robbed you. you. And you think you're lucky. That's fucking nuts. I got all of my shit stolen out of a car after I did Sketch Fest three years ago. Yeah. And my, I felt so fucking unlucky. And I was like, I remember I had like two years worth of joke oh. notebooks in it and I was like I was like they're just gonna fucking take my fucking Chromebook and throw my joke book. they couldn't even leave me the shit I actually like yeah yeah. you think you're fucking you're not lucky that's fucking crazy. Oh. that's crazy that you think like that I thought I remember th- being in my room and going you know what that was j- I just gave them luck that's, I know I you're know lucky like fucking- that you think that way I, I think that you're wired that way is a good thing I but look to at, think that you were lucky because your shit got stolen. I look at like e- if you could. <laughs> I look at everything. That's so crazy. Though. I look at everything as going. Thank God for that. Like so, like bombed at the store the other night. Uh, recently, I bombed at the store, uh, getting ready for my special, and I think oh, what a lot of people would do would go fuck. But I looked at it and I went, "Thank you for that." Now I have to see. Now I have to apply that and go. Why did that happen? And then I looked at I it. I do do that with stand up. I, I do that with stand up. Yeah. I like. I look at everything negative that happens on stage. Anytime I have a bad interaction or a, a a joke bombs or it groans, I go, "Oh, that's that's what I need." That positive. That's I look at that as positive energy. Although people would see, "Oh, that might fuck your soul up." And and there are when you bomb, waking up the next day is really rough. Oh, and but I look is. at it and I go, I glass half full it and I go. What did I learn about that? Like, I that's very valuable that you get an ch- opportunity to learn. But yeah, man, I'm the fuck. If you can do that, yeah. So I will say, so wait. when my shit got stolen, I had to buy a new computer, and I didn't know what to get. And this girl I had just met, like, was in a social setting. She was like, I was like, what kind of computer should I get? She's like, you should get a MacBook. Definitely get a MacBook. When we looked at him, ended up dating her for six months. It was great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. dude. Yeah. So I guess, and she turned out to be fucking crazy. Uh, but she's a good person. But I'm going to show you this. this so a- yeah, I guess I would not have had a conversation with a stranger about what kind of computer to get if it hadn't gotten stolen, and then I wouldn't have dated her. So I had a period. I had a period where um, I was. Winning raffles all the time. Are you, okay. for, are you Forrest Gump? What is going on? I am. <laughs> I, was, is fucking I was calling so myself. Serious. I was calling myself the Raffle King. Like I would. By the way, I know I sound like a fucking lunatic, but understand that this is part of what makes me tick and part of what makes me enjoy life. So it started. It started. This is okay. It started at. Um, we did a raffle and uh, at the school it was a wine function. And uh, at the, our school, so I show up. It's a wine tasting, and there's and this there, is the girls' school. It's a girls' school. Oh, at, yeah. at, when they went to Colfax, we went and uh, there was a wine tasting with all the parents, and there's a raffle. I love raffles. I've always loved raffles. I love raffles. You do one at your shows, right? Sometimes. I do. I do white staff raffle. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. I'm, that's luck. I'm just giving luck to somebody. I'm the luckiest guy in the fucking world. So I go over to. Uh, the Darren Turbo's running the raffle. I said, uh, so what, what do we got? And he goes, oh, there's 12 prizes. I said, 12 prizes? Oh, I'm definitely in. And he goes, yeah. I said, how many people have bought in? And he's like, barely anybody. I was like, really? He goes, yeah, I've only sold 40 tickets. I went, okay. I will put me in for 160 tickets. And he was like, what? I said, here's 160 bucks. It's a bucket ticket. I want to, I want, I'm going to buy 160 tickets. And he goes, seriously? I said, yeah, I want to see if I can win all the prizes. You're such an ass. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, God. So, if you, oh. So, they, they go. That's math. That's not, <laughs> on, that's the me, least wait, lucky out. thing. Hear me out. That's hear me science. Out. That's literally out. science. Hear me out. So, I, what a prick. Like, so, I have a few glasses of wine. And, Shocker. And, really surprised. And I look at the first ticket I have and the last ticket I have. And I know that any number in between I have. And I say to everyone around me, 
<laughs> I'm one of the luckiest guys you'll ever meet. Pull off the first prize. They pull the number. I go, that's my number. And everyone goes, oh, my God. I can't believe you won. <laughs> so I go up. I get the first prize. I, go, I can't believe I won. I what did back. you win? A, a fucking Pilates class. A free Pilates class. <laughs> Next one is a massage. The number is that. And I go, I can't believe it. that's my number. And they're like, what? You won two of the prizes? Darren Turbo is dying laughing. And I and I come back from the land and I said, I bought $160 worth of tickets. And I show her the string of tickets. She goes, are you fucking kidding me? Also, like, just not a sound investment <laughs> to throw $160 down on a raffle. But it's Like, fun. that's a lot of money it's to so do much to, of to waste. fun. They call the next number. I go, that's my number. And they're like, how are you li- winning everything? <laughs> I won 11 of the 12 prizes. And Leanne, who had bought one ticket, won the other one. <laughs> and someone comes up to me and goes, you need to. At one point, they I, my shirt's off. I'm walking up going, I'm a winner. Everybody and hates everyone's, you. Everyone's, everyone, there are a lot of people that are hating me. But there's but some there's, people who are loving there it. Are, uh, there are 40 people who are having the greatest night they've ever had in their life. They're dying laughing because I'm winning and I'm going past everyone going, I'm the Yankees of raffles. I'm the Yankees <laughs> of raffles. And I'm pulling it. I don't even want this shit. I still want it. I'm, it is so fucking funny. So then after that happened, they changed the rule of raffles. And by the way, I wouldn't give the prizes back. I didn't use any of the prizes. I donated them back to the the school and said do whatever you want with them i don't really give a fuck but like people came up you kind of have to to not be a monster people (laughs) came up to me livid and they were like uh we we only had a budget for uh for five dollars to put into that raffle and you took all the prizes i said you should have put more money in i go you know there's the rules of a raffle if you want to buy more tickets you have more chance to win that that's the rules of a fucking raffle so they changed the rules of a raffle for the school right they changed the rules of a raffle and so they go all right I'm fuck. My chest is hot hearing this story. And so I, you, they go, you can only buy one ticket. So they're doing the big World Fair. We'll buy one ticket. Was it oh, a big prize? I think it was a fucking television, like a mm-hmm. fucking like a flat screen. Si- or yeah. And so they pull the one number, and I win the raffle. And people are fucking steaming, and they won't let me win. They make me give it back. They won't let me win. And by the way, I don't it? even give a fuck about the TV. I am enjoying watching people fucking lose their mind that I won. Lose their mind. This is I t- next year? Is this, this is a year. No, might be the same year. Might be the same year. And they're losing their fucking minds that I won. So then I go to the Special Olympics. I do a, a polar plunge for the Special Olympics. And I tell everyone, they go, there's a 50-50 raffle. And I said, just so you know, I fucking win raffles. That's what I do. Okay? I want you to... F- See this? And, uh, let's hear from yeah. Balls. Oh yeah, it's zooming in. Yep. What is the polar plunge? Yeah. <laughs> Me doing a little material. <laughs> okay, I'm why did I put my stand up in there? <laughs> this is that Showtime special nobody saw. <laughs> Why would I put all this in this show? Well, you got to kill. I get it. 50-50 raffle. I bought 100 tickets. What is a 50-50 raffle? It means you win half and the charity wins the other half. Oh, okay. That's. By the way, this is at the Special Olympics. Well, you look like you're about to summon some kind of K2 type mountain. <laughs> oh, This is fucking obscene. This is gross. <laughs> I love it. God. <laughs> 
<laughs> Dude, what is this for? This is a 50-50 raffle for the Special Olympics. Is the pot was I think the pot was like 600 bucks or it might have been 1200 bucks. So everyone six and six, yeah. And so I got to keep 600 and then the charity kept 600. And so Obviously, I just wanted to win. Yeah, and I gave the all the charity. You got to donate. I gave it, yeah, I gave it all the charity. I don't give a fuck. You know what's but, so funny? Somebody at that charity or that raffle where you won eleven of twelve prizes, and so I was like, anytime they go see a raffle now, they get mad because of you. Oh yeah, like like some some people get happy. Dude, like, there was a guy. They, 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 they there was a guy this to fuck. this point who still hates my guts. He still hates me because he's he went up and he said. um I, by the way, I, am, I have all the prizes in my hand. I have all the prizes. I have a necklace. I have uh, all, all the prizes. Gift bottle card, of wine, gift of cards. And I go up to uh, uh, whoever was I think Parisa Stepanek was running it at the time. And she, he was like, this is ridiculous. You need to make them give them back. You need to make him give them back. You need to make him give them to all of us. Which is not, which, which is, that it makes me more frustrated. No, yeah. Because I, I go, I go, listen, buddy, you could have put in 140 bucks too. By the way, that money is going to the children. But if I had done nothing, we would have raised 50, 60 bucks. That's it. 60 bucks for the kids. And this that, is a better story now. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. We would have, everybody has a better time for yeah, the most part. It's I a guess. better story. So it's a better, with more money to yeah, the kids. Yeah. And so I, I said to him, he, t- he turns to me and he's like, you don't understand. I have a budget. I can only put five dollars in, and I said, "Fuck your budget. You should have put more money in." And by the way, I'm like, and I'm and I go, I'm not giving these to you. I said, "By the way, this is all for fun. Like we're not. No one's gonna hear." If he had won five of them, he wouldn't. Have, yeah, he yeah. wouldn't have given them back. Yeah, off of five dollars, he'd be like, "I'm a genius." Yeah. Like, and I go, "It's all for fun. Like I'm giving them back to the fucking school. Like, who gives a fuck about a Pilates class? Like, are you being serious? Did you really want to win? Did you feel like today was your day to get back at the universe, <laughs> where your five dollars was gonna write the universe that has been fucking you in the ass the whole time? You look at the world as glass half empty. I look at the world as glass half full. I know that." Luck didn't have anything to do with it within this raffle, but you know what? It, you know what did the fun that we all just had. And so, like, I, there was a period where I was winning so many fucking raffles that I stopped playing raffles because it would just make people angry. Like the fucking fifty fifty one. People, I think it wouldn't make a bad angry if you just kept your trap shut and wouldn't talk about like who's coming in second. Oh, that's like when you walk dude, in. Oh, I, and I, like you tell you tell people that you're gonna win, and, and then, then you I, win. Oh, it's the I'm the luckiest guy in the world. You are lucky, but like I don't think it would make them mad if you were just like yeah, I'm probably. Gonna. That's part of the fun. That's oh, for sure. Part of the fun is going up and saying, "Just so you know, I'm gonna win this raffle," and then winning the raffle. It's and such an goes, obscene thing to say. <laughs> Like, what a ridiculous state. I'm going to win this ridic- raffle. What a ridiculous statement. And but then, then to the person who goes, who the fuck is this guy? And then I win it and they go, hey, he fucking called it. <laughs> you should put money down. What would be interesting, what do they call him? Like a, like a side bet? Like, I got $1,000 off that this of this guy side, will yeah. win this raffle. Dude, it was, I, but I think that also got me into doing the waitstaff raffle, which I think is spread. A lot of people, I have some friends at the Portland Club who are like, Really love at helium. Yeah, yeah, they were like super happy. They oh, the like, wait staff raffles changed people's. I mean, uh, we've given away, we've given away in Orlando one night. I think we gave away six thousand dollars because people kept going. Fuck it, pull another name. I'll match the pot. And so we just pulled. Jesus, we gave away six grand. Uh, you know, people. Yeah, like but I also cult. believe. I see. I believe like this past weekend there was a little girl in Sacramento, eighteen years old, who um, was with her parents. Uh, she's dating a guy that her parents aren't big fans of. This is the same night I got. You work at the club or what? At the, at the club. Okay. And it's just her and her parents. And I say to her something. I say, "How old are you? You don't." She looks young, and she said, 18. And I was like, "Wow." And I said, "You know, what are you doing here or whatever?" And her parents were like, uh, uh, "Set her straight, Bert." And I was like, "What?" I said, "Are you are you dating someone?" She goes, "Yeah, I'm dating a 27 year old." And I go, "Really?" I go. That's not. That doesn't. That math t- shouldn't work like that. Like you need to get away from that guy. That's like, different than twenty seven and thirty six or forty five. Yeah, it's different when you're eighteen and you're it's dating. predatorial. Yeah, it feels yeah. that way at least. Yeah. And I said, how long have you been dating him? Over a year? Because that's and her dad's like, oh. So clearly, the kid, the guy was twenty six, started dating a seventeen year old. Yeah. That fucks me up. It bothers me. 
I said to her, what do you want to be? And she goes, I don't know, just a teacher, I guess. And I was like, wait, you don't seem like there's any passion involved with that. I said, you're 18 years old. You should travel. She was like, uh, that'll never happen. Why so I was not? like, I go, how much is a ticket to, whatchamacallit? She's like, I said, where do you want to go? She goes, Greece. I go, what's a Google? Someone Google a ticket to Greece. Someone goes, 800 bucks. I go, all right. I go, here's 450 bucks. I said, that's half of your ticket. You can save up so you feel like you earned it. I don't want to gift this whole thing to you, yeah. but I want you to save up, feel like you earned it, and here's half of that ticket. And then someone else just gives her another 20, and people start giving her money. And when I go to Europe, and then she gets done, she texts <coughs> me. She's like, I have I have my money for my ticket. I have, I'm have i going to save up, and I'm going this summer. I'm going to Greece. Dad gave me the biggest hug. He's like, you just changed my daughter's life. It takes a bit, yeah. And part of me goes... Because she seems like... I guess like dating a 27 year old to an 18 year old girl is like, oh, this is cool. This is, I am a value. You know yeah. that? Yeah. Like, and this is a way she's finding it. Yeah. Without having like a lot of means. And seems. I'm like, bro, I'm like, young lady, take off to Europe and fucking live in Europe for a fucking a, three months. Get a job in Greece. Really live life. Like live do your something. life. Do something. Yeah. You and go it, find, you do have to go find something. It's fucking crazy how many people I know just like oh, never wanted to leave. Dude. And I, I think, you know, for me. 450 bucks isn't going to make it or break it. Like, like I can, I've definitely had nights where I've drank 450 bucks. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, fuck it. My wife's going to be a little, a little bit like, what the fuck? Like, but I just gave her the money and I feel like in a weird way, you're giving her luck. And that might just be her lucky break. That is luck. Her that life. is lucky. You know, that you, that you are being generous and, and it's fortunate, a, but like it, it is like luck for her for sure. You know, yeah. Like, and then but there's course, a motivator for you and that she does something well, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. I feel, I don't know. I could talk about luck forever. I, but right now, all, it's all anyone's going to be like, you're out of your fucking mind. Well, the fucking, the raffle thing is obscene. <laughs> and also the fact that you just like tilted the odds so heavily in your favor. <laughs> like that's like, that's, it's still lucky to a degree that you got, but like the percentages are fucking, everybody else had 40 tickets bought and you bought $160 worth. Of, you literally about Everyone four times. Only 40 people bought tickets. Yeah. So there were only 40 tickets bought. Yeah. And, and I you bought, bought 160. A, yeah. So you literally, with the rest of the field, you had four times the odds of winning of the rest of the field combined. And I So won. like that, what that means, <laughs> there was an 80% chance like on every draw that you, actually there's more than that because Leanne bought one ticket. Yeah. So you have slightly above an 80% chance and, and by the way, I am not a math person, so I could be doing this completely wrong. But this is what it said, which is just, it's still lucky to a degree, all right? It's but the, I, it's, there it's, is a fucking, <laughs> if, I don't know how high you can jump, but if I lower a, f, a basketball f, hoop to eight feet, there's, you're not lucky that you're dunking then, okay? Like, <laughs> it's, it's fucking crazy. That you, dude. It's also, I mean, it's part of your charm for sure. Oh, I what that night, uh, one of my buddies came up to me. He goes, "You are like living with Kenny Powers." He goes, "This is. I feel like <laughs> I'm hanging out with Kenny Powers right now." He goes, "This is. It's obnoxious, but it's fucking hilarious." When yeah, you're that's in the know. That, yeah, that's like a, when you're in the know on it. He's like, "It's obnoxious as shit, but it's so much fun to watch." My buddy is like, it, my buddy Shawnee is that way. Yeah. yeah, he's so fucking great. Well, like, oh God, I don't know even know how to explain. Sean Jordy's a great cog, but he fucking has this. Thing. We saw. Um, he's just kind of like obnoxious without meaning to be. And you know, yeah. obnoxious is not the right word, but like, you know, like everything a comic says to another comic is not is like. I think comics are good people, but they aren't decent people. Is yeah. the best way to put it. We walked, we saw Captain Phillips, and we walked out of the theater. And with that, he just goes, fuck it, Tom Hanks acting his dick off in that one. <laughs> and this family just like walked by us and looked at him. And to me, it's like, so he's not obnoxious, but it's like one of these things. Like, and it's the funniest thing in the world to me, but it's also horrifying that it. Oh, it's, yeah. the, it's the reason we became friends is my, my uh, obnoxiousness or whatever it is. When I bought oh, 200 the hamburgers. fucking cheeseburgers to Doug Benson's show. And I, that, whatever I that ate is. I those all weekend. Oh, dude, the, remember, you remember the last night, I think we were all eating cheeseburgers. We were getting faded. And, yeah. And and because Doug was still in town one of the nights. Oh, like, he stayed the whole weekend. Because you guys made nice and everybody yeah. was drinking. Yeah. And he was like, and I, but it was like after, it was like on Sunday or Saturday when Doug was like, okay, I do see the humor in that now. Like yeah. now I see the, but it was the obnoxiousness of like, it's like, you know, I heard one time I heard, uh, 
Tom tried to explain to Joe um, my personality in crowds. Like my personality in crowds could be considered obnoxious, but I'm not. It's not obnoxious. You have to be there. Like Tom said to me, we were in a we were in a really big crowd, and he said, "I just like he goes, I've known you for 15 years, and I just now realized who you are." He was like, he was he said to me, and he said it to Joe. He was like, Bert in a large group of people is when Bert is best at being Bert. Like when I'm in a large group of people and no one knows me, that's when I really shine. That's like my my personality. Like it's the same shit that I do where I fucking, the ring slides on my finger. I go, what's my name? Like my wife is a Yeah, because they want you to succeed at that point. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And so, but it is, is, like hearing it third hand is not as charming as when you're there and you're like, when, no, it's and, still charming. Yeah, but it is also just like you're fucking cr- like. Oh, I I, I did um, like I, I where was I? I was just in a large group the other day. Where the fuck was I? Fuck! I was just somewhere in a large group the other day, and I was, and I was like, oh, so girl would love this right now because he was giggling. It's we were, fun to get a laugh out of a big group of people without a microphone, like oh, without doing the stage. No. I did that at the Eclipse last summer. We oh, drove for- we drove out. Uh, I was in Denver, and we drove down to Nebraska and do the Eclipse. And then, like, right after it was over, I, I had maybe, like, the best line of my life. I was like, two for one on Eclipse glasses, everybody. I just yelled it really loud, and I got, like, a good pop. So I get the appeal in it. Oh, like, it's, the, it's the greatest. I'm trying to find out. Oh, uh, no. I'm trying to see. Oh, was that Laugh Fest? No. Nah. <clears throat> was, I was at Guild. No. I oh. don't. I don't know where I was, but I was, I was just being, I was being, I was like, I was like, oh, Seguro would love this right now. Like he would love, like when we were at that Atlanta game and it was me and Ari and Tom, I was making so many people around us laugh and I was making so many people angry. And so if you're close to me, you're loving it. Like I kept, I kept telling people like this woman goes, but like, what's the, what's the perimeter? Like. How far out, like feet wise, does it? Oh, it's. I'm. I'm making probably. Are you getting your whole seating section? No, no, you... no. We weren't. We weren't in a seating section. We were in. Uh, we were just in. We were trying to get in, in through security, and it was packed. It was. It was shoulder to shoulder packed, and Tom had paid this black guy to walk us to the front and pretend to be security, and so Jesus he gave him a hundred bucks. So this poor black kid is walking through. And he's like security, security, and everyone's like what? And this one was like you're not security, and was like disrespectful to him, like really disrespectful to him, like racially undertoned disrespectful to him. And I just said to her, I said, ma'am, I'm so sorry. We're extremely famous and we need to get in there. And Segura started laughing and she goes, you're not fucking famous. I go, no, my name's Tom Segura. Google me. And Tom starts laughing. And then, <laughs> and then, and then everyone around us starts, they're like, wait, hold on. You're not Tom Segura. And Segura is right there. And I yeah. go, no, I am. Google me. I'm very famous. And it was making Tom laugh so hard. And then someone goes, you're the fucking machine. And I was like, I am the machine. <laughs> and Tom was like. Tom was like, you need to be in those moments with Bert in a crowded place. But he goes, but it's, it's, but I think it's when I, I, I like being in a large group and being loud is when I'm at my, I you think. You play to the, you say kind of play to the moment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you play to, the, yeah. The, God, this has been a fucking beast of a podcast. That's fucking, That's fucking awesome. Fun. Well, what, do you have any tour dates to promote? Yeah. When does this come out? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, or at, Wednesday. Yeah. I'll be at Cap City starting the day this comes out through Saturday in Austin. Oh, nice. Um, Six shows. I'm in Pittsburgh at the Burning Bridges Comedy Festival. And then um, Shane is a comedian.com. And yeah, that's all. Oh, that's great. And then. Uh, Will you write down that he's in Cap City so I can say that at the beginning of the podcast? In the intro? Yeah. Will you remind me of that, Halston? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you're going to be. Where are you? You're in San Antonio? San Antonio, yeah. You got to give me, get me the name of that place. Yeah, for sure. I will. Yeah. I'll, I'll text the guy as soon as we're done. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. If you want to meet in Lockhart for barbecue, we could. Yeah, wait, how far is that? I think it's it's probably, f- it might be in between and it might be on one side of the other cities, but they're about an hour and 20 apart, I think. Okay. Well, yeah, let I'll me check, find I'll out check. who I'm yeah, working Yeah, because it's also like, yeah, it's still work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd go. love to do that. Well, dude, I love I'm you. You know, I think I, this you're It's a blast. Of, Thank you for having me. I'm going I wish you do. were less successful so we could work all the time. <laughs> Anytime I'm around. Anytime you Your want. Your guy sent me all those clubs. Yeah. 
Every one of those weekends I was working or it was a club I'd already headlined, so I felt bad. Oh, like, no, no, no. Well, Judy, yeah. Judy was in love with you. She, she she's like, very sweet. She's yeah. like, he is fucking amazing. And I was like, yeah. And then she, we were in a meeting. I have a phone call that starts in a few minutes. We were in a meeting like right after that, and she was like, she was like, that guy Shane should work with you everywhere. She was like, find out all his dates. And I was oh, like, sweet. yeah, everyone thinks. Oh, everyone thinks. Yeah. You're, that's the one well, thing we it, didn't ever got to talk about is what an amazingly talented uh, man you are. I'm, I'm, I'm trying hard. I'm getting there. I like it's great. You know, it's like it's like weird. Do you real quick before we go? Like, when you finally got like a career, like you're like I am now. Ma- I'm not making a lot of money, but I have. I can pay my rent yeah. as a comedian, um, as a headlining touring comic. What was like? What is the thing you shouldn't have done, and the thing you should have done? That's a great question. Because, like, I always, you know, like, everybody hears, like, you hear success stories a lot, but you never hear, like, I mean, you hear cautionary but, like, what somebody shouldn't do, I think, is as important as what they should do. I'll tell you, it's very, very, very simple. The key to my, whatever success I had, or, uh, or whatever, the reason I kept working, meaning, like, that, I'll say that success, my key to that success, was, number one, um, I was super approachable. I like to party with the staff. I like to hang out. And I feel like in a weird way, I I sold a lot of drinks. And so, and I, I had fun with everyone. I turned everything into a party. So people were buying cocktails and stuff. Yeah. I remember one time hearing someone say about me behind my back. I heard them say, why does Bert work all the clubs and I don't? I'm much more successful than he is. And this person was. They'd had two Comedy Central specials. They were like, they were very successful and very talented. And uh, we were all drunk, and I heard them say that to someone. And and they and the other person said it was a club owner. Um, it's not about comedy, man. It's about Bert. Like when he comes in, he sells drink. Everyone wants to party. It's a good time. People remember that more than they do your jokes. And I had I had a friend yesterday texted me, and they're like. We were talking about a comic, and they're like, tell me one of the, their jokes. And I couldn't tell you one of their jokes. He was like, remember that. Like, remember like remember that it's really hard to remember. If you could tell me one of their jokes, like a Mike Birbiglia or Dimitri Moore, I could, I could tell you one of their jokes. But for the most of us comics, they're not, you're not going to remember one of their jokes. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, so it's not about comedy. It's about he's a fun hang. He makes it a party. And Everyone, his person, he comes across. He comes across in the act. You don't. You just tell a lot of jokes, and then you go home. And no one really remembers that. And so I was like, wow, the one that's, I I would say my key to my success was go in, do stand up, hang out, party, have a good time, make everyone have a, make everyone have a great time. Still treating it like a job. Treat it like a job. Oh, when I was on stage, I was on stage. I was, I was working my ass off writing, trying to, but I, but I didn't look at it like as soon as I'm off stage, I'm done working. I looked at it like that's when the work starts sometimes and you go. It's, ne- it's networking and so like. Hanging and, out with the club owner. And, and you don't they, think of it as networking, but being like a social good person. Right. Yeah. And being like, uh, I remember going like, hey, if anyone wants a drink, I'm going to be out by the bar. And I remember Tony Baldino saying, you know, you made me 6000 extra dollars tonight. And I went, really? He goes, you made me 6000 extra dollars by coming out after the bar. I mean, I used to do this thing where I'd go. I like I, I think it's part of my personality still, but I would go out to the bar and I would hold contests with people, and I would say we're gonna we're gonna do this. Everyone, I did this the other day in in what you call it, uh, ten dollar buy ins, one dollar rebuys. First person to throw this ping pong off the second floor into that cup gets the pot. And and I I tell them after the show the party's not over. Let's go to the bar. We're gonna compete. One time I was with Steve Byrne and we had everyone. It was twenty dollars buy-ins and you had to hold two pints in like the Christ pose and like arms out like this. And the first person to drop them, the first the last person to drop them got the pot. And I had like thirty guys. Everyone sitting at the bar holding pints out like this. And at the end it's me and this kid and I'm talking shit to this kid and he's just. <laughs> Trembling, trembling, and it's me and this kid. What this kid doesn't know is I only did an exercise where I raised my arms up to the front. So I was like, I was dialed in to beat this kid. And I'm like, drop him. You ain't got the heart, kid. Then you can find this video online. And he drops him. I win it. But it was like that moment. I have people come to my shows going, I was at that night where we all partied. Do you get juiced in those situations? Like you feel like. It's the Mickey Mantle gene. Yeah. Yeah. Like where I go, where I go, oh, I got this. (coughs) I did a pint holding contest. Uh, in Austin 
at uh, or uh, at New Braunfels, Texas, where they, right town where they have the German festival. There was a pine holding contest, and I went in and I told them, "Be careful! I got this Mickey Mantle gene. You're going to see what a champion does." <laughs> I beat everyone in the field except for the world champion, who, by the way, could do it for five minutes. But I beat everyone in the fucking field. It was just me and him. And then finally, how long I was does like, it last? Like, how long was? Uh, in my mind, this is like hours. It's a big Stein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy could last. I think he could last for like twenty minutes. He's, okay, he's the yeah. world champion. So it's just like I lasted out, for like, like yeah two minutes, yeah. and everyone was. But I beat the, everyone in the field. It was just me and this guy, and and, uh, and then I. Uh, and I, I knew he could go for fucking 20 minutes. I was like, I definitely can't do this. Do you still do the shot thing? What was the shot? Like you like get a shot on stage and everybody wants to join you. Oh, I haven't done that in a while. I stopped doing shots this year. The thing I did, <laughs> the thing I did wrong in this business is everything Tom Segura has done right. You learned Spanish? <laughs> yeah, for one joke. No, but, <laughs> no, but he, what he's done right in this business is have a massive self-respect for himself like i never had that that's part of really dude he is so not an ego but like a healthy like a healthy like i'm worth more like no i'll pass i'm worth more that's tom and i wish i had that i would i would are you there you learn more of it as you go though well a lot of it i've learned to be better at that through my friendship with tom because i would call him and say hey man amazing what your peers will do for you like how they can inspire you to do better i remember saying i I remember everyone saying um or see more i guess you got to do theaters and i was like and that's like the biggest jump for us is like you got to do theaters and then all of us i think are like i don't know i don't know if i can sell theaters and they're like, no, you got to do th- Everyone does theaters. And I was like, I don't know about that. Everyone does theaters is a lot. They, but, yeah. but, they, but that's what agents will say to you. Everyone, you got to make the leap to theaters. You got to make the leap to theaters. When you, yeah, like, uh, and I remember, like, is that something you're doing with like in the past year or two? This, I'm doing a, th- I'm, I'm, I'm not certain what I'm doing this fall, but I think I'm doing a theater tour this fall. And, uh, and so they're like, you got to do theaters. You got to do theaters. And I called Tom because Tom is the first person I knew who just didn't question it. And he was like, yeah, I got to do theaters. And I was like, wait, how did you know you were ready to do theaters? And then Tom was like, Bert, it's all simple math. Like he's like, once you're selling out a club and they're adding shows, you could do a theater. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then I was like, wait, I'm selling out. I could add, I add shows every weekend. I was like, oh, but Tom, Tom has a, has a, a value for himself. Yeah. Do you... This will be my last question because yeah, yeah, yeah. now that you're doing that, like now that you're like adding shows and stuff, those clubs that like were, have been there for you as like a bloodline and mm-hmm. like a place, not all of them clearly because sometimes you just work for a fucking scumbag or yeah. whatever. Do you feel like I don't know, like guilt's not the right word, but like obligated to some degree? Yeah, I do. Like you know, like say you're like I don't know, like say Denver or something. You know, like you like yeah. sell out all. That's the great club. Yeah. You sell out eight shows, and you're like, "Yeah, I can do a theater now," and then I can go to like Fort Collins and do a. Sm- it's a smaller market, but I can do another theater up there and yeah. and make the same or more. What you know, like, and I don't like. I I think you know, like that's not a an issue for me yet. But I'm like, how would you handle that tactfully? Uh, there's a lot of clubs. So I, I came up through the Funny Bones. Yeah, and there's a and a lot of the Funny Bones were really really good to me. And then there gets to a point where you're like. We were like, oh, fuck, I might fart. Well, we... <laughs> oh, that was fucking bad. And then there's like... There's like... Uh, there's sometimes where you go and you get... Farts are always... Oh, funny. my God, that fart is so bad. Uh, oh, my God, that might be the worst fart I've ever done in my entire you better, life. We better wrap this up quick. Oh, I want you to smell it. I don't... I can bad. taste it. I can. <laughs> but like there's some... <laughs> Do you smell it? <laughs> oh, it's so bad. And so... I'm not getting it over here. There's yet. some clubs where you go, oh, I, I can't. Oh, <laughs> oh, <God>. oh, <laughs> oh, Albert. Is that bad? It's bad, right? Oh. It's bad. Oh, I, I have. Like, I'm so glad I'm clogged up on one side. Right oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. My, I'm sweating. Oh, oh, it's so bad. You smell it? I'm, I'm oh, God, God, it's so bad. Oh, keep going. I'm sorry. God, what did I eat? Farts. Oh, yeah, yeah, fart. <laughs> that's like an old Nick Swords joke. Oh, was it? Mike goes, uh, my cat has diarrhea. I took the doctor. The doctor goes, what are you feeding? He goes, diarrhea. Is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> 
I bleed in a bowl of diarrhea every night before it goes to bed. Oh, so gross. Oh. So juvenile. No, but the, the, I came up in all the funny bones. Yeah. There's a lot of funny bones where you go, oh, I still want to play that cup. And there's some where you're like, oh, I, I can't make. It's, a, it's a, a waste of the weekend because I can't make enough money. I can make more money in other places. Yeah, to provide. Yeah. It, it's just like it's just a seating wise. And then there's places where like. You know, you're like, I don't want to charge my fans 40 bucks so I can break even on what I, I know I could make. So, uh, but yeah, I feel there is a little bit of guilt of like places where, and then there's places where you're, they were always treated you like shit and you're ready to make the leap. Yeah. And then there, and, and you're like, get me the fuck out of here. I want to do a theater, one show. I don't care if it's half the fucking money. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you just, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. It'd be a problem you solve as you go along, I guess. I'm still figuring it out. We all are. Yeah. Uh, well, I had a great time. It's a time pleasure, man. Thank you, you so much, dude. I, you There's know a, I love you. Anytime, I had a blast. anytime you're you in too. LA, anytime you want to do my podcast, yeah. I'm telling you, I'll I can hit talk you up. To you. I can, you know I could talk to you for fucking what, ever. What would we do, like four hours or something? Almost, yeah. Jesus. 345. That might be a fucking record. I think I've done longer. I think I did one with John Reap that was five hours. He, that guy's great. Dude, he's What a great. peach. Yeah. All right, we got to stop talking. Yeah, we're done. Yeah. I got to go take a shit. <laughs> yeah, you do. I, <laughs> I got to wipe shame. your ass. I love you, too. <laughs>